Happy Thursday, DDL Nation. I am Jason Newtiel, and this, of course, is Tori Show. How could you not know me? How are you guys? I have six Instagram followers. No, I'm kidding. Please. How She's are you guys? Up. Yeah, blowing up, blowing up. Happy Thursday. We got a great show for you if you're just joining us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the state of the art new unique show called Daily Blast Live, where we let to tell you things that are happening actual time and have real time conversation. It's a choose your own adventure kind of a news and entertainment. Show. You know, you can watch other channels and what? get your news tomorrow or later tonight, but here we're going to give you the news first and we're going to spill a little coffee along the way. And we're not going to talk about it anymore. Um, Kelly, do you have a paper towel? So, uh, uh, so there's a couple topics that we really wanted to talk about today and I think they were up a second ago, but um, Calvin Harris, the DJ, uh, DJ? said in Complex.com that uh, he grew a beard in 2017 uh, to be taken more seriously for the Grammys. Now, he was nominated, um, he did not win, uh, and he has now gone clean shaven uh, the day after the Grammys, saying he's got a whole new start. But it led to this whole discussion we were having here at DBL, and we want your take on it. Um, where do we stand in this culture with beards? Do we take men with beards more seriously or less seriously? There was a time uh, in the 60s and 70s where the only people who had beards were long-haired hippies. Hi long-haired hippies, and that was an insult to people. And then in the 80s and 90s, we were very clean-cut, and then towards the end of the 90s and, and up to now, we've kind of gone back to a lot of different facial hair, but most, yeah. mostly beards. The 90s went grunge, and that's when you started realizing, Goatees. I don't care, and then we got that weird, weird, weird facial hair. But what's interesting is psychologically, people say that they trust men with beards more. Now, you all know Honest Abe, which is Abraham Lincoln. He had that famous... Did someone woo for Abraham Lincoln? Woo! Yeah, Abe! Go for Abe. What up, Remix? That's fans of Abe. <laughs> and uh, he had that beard. I also want to let you know that Robin Williams famously only wore a beard during serious movies. So anytime you saw him with a beard, he was never in a serious movie with almost without a beard. Almost so we're looking uh, right now, if you look at some of these celebrities, and we want to get your pick. Alex, if you can go back to George Clooney. Um, <laughs> I know mine is so too. So let's just start with, uh, <laughs> we can go back to George. Um, so George is up. So uh, what do you think, guys? Do you think uh, George Clooney looks more serious without a beard or with a beard? Uh, I think he looks better. I think George Clooney looks better and more serious with a beard. I kind of do. I kind of do, too. But here's what I think, too, is um, I don't like wimpy beards. No, they have to be a full... I can't do a little bit of... Did, did I forget? Did I not? Am I in the desert? Oh, I don't that's know. What I, that's what I refer, No. That's what I do. You have a clean-shaven, well, right fresh clean face. Shaven, yes. Um, but, and I don't mean a little so, stubble. I mean, like, when you're so, unclear. But that looks, that looks sophisticated. He that looks, looks more really movie... Well, yes. he looks a lot. Like, think of Sean Connery. He can do both, too. Yeah. Well, let's go to Jamie Foxx. See what we think of Jamie Foxx. Uh, look Ooh, at that. Yeah. So there's Jamie Foxx. Yeah. Jamie looks, let's see. Uh, Ooh, see, yeah. I think he looks, I don't know. See, I they like both Jamie they go look good shape. every way. I like it both. Me yeah. too. Um, there's a big delay. It's, uh, it's a long <laughs> delay. Like a big delay. I was like, and five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> but I think, yeah, I, I, I think uh, Jamie looks uh, better without a beard, but that's just me. I also think yeah. uh, David Beckham looks better without a beard. We can bring up David Beckham. Yes. Oh, he is. Yeah, I think David Beckham looks better without a beard. And then, lastly, of course, is David Letterman, who Let's I think all of America can agree. Get rid of that beard, Get rid buddy. of the beard. No! Get rid of the beard. Sorry, but get, get rid, rid of the, of the beard. beard. Now, there's a reason you don't see politicians with beards since, and I'm going to go back to, let's say, Calvin Coolidge. Um, it's going to go Hoover. And this is Hoover. the age old psychological thing Psychological about beards, thing. Right? And remember, if you're taller and you're clean shaven, you're more trusted in this century or this half of the century. So you had Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, Ford, Carter, Reagan, Bush, clean shaven, no one has a beard because there's something shady. What did someone say about a beard? It says you're... I know, it's a surprise no, no. maybe if Jordan, can, if Jordan can join us. It's a tough deal. She's got Lawson and it's... But we are hoping, hoping, hoping... We're praying for Jordan to come. Um, I've watched many, many TV shows with Jordan and she's flipping hysterical. Yeah, I just... Think look better looks better with a little beer, a little five o'clock shadow. Yeah, I think it's, it's so really like smiley. I want a little bit more like I'm also Wolverine. Uh, Sierra says I don't care if they have a beard, but I don't want the beard to be too much. AKA Duck, Duck Dynasty, Dynasty boys. boys. Yeah, the Duck Dynasty is a perfect example, or the David Letterman. I think they fall into the same. Thing. Yeah, and those are people that need like beard oil to like keep it and maintain it. If you have to maintain your beard, like Adam, seems like a long. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. Adam, Adam, can you come here for a second? Now, ladies. <laughs> Gentlemen of our DBL Nation, 
Do we consider this a, I think a Duck Dynasty beard I think or that is like rate, a cooler beard? I think that is right at the... I, gee, he's the at line. the cutoff. I yeah. just got a trim, too, the other day, yeah. so it's a little shorter than it was. And do you it's maintain more, it? It's so fluffy. Yeah, yeah. I try to. Yeah. Yeah. Beard, beard oil. oil. Yeah. Beard oil. Yeah. So, yeah. There you go. I would say that that is the length before you go Dave Letterman yeah. or Duck Dynasty. Before you give up. Before you give up on life, I think. Um, I couldn't do that. I don't have the patience. It rubs my face the wrong way. Like, yeah, now, Heather says they can seem a little more su- sincere looking with Sean Connor. <laughs> sincere is interesting because... That's funny because that was the old adage that it was... It sort of switched. Yeah, not sincere. But, century. you know, fashion is a fickle, fickle lady. Good one. Why is, he, is that sexist? Next subject. I really love this one. Why are memberships so hard to leave? We're talking about gym memberships. Yeah, this is a great story because this, uh, this Instagram post, I believe, uh, from this guy who uh, was trying to break up with Planet Fitness had to write a letter. So if we can bring that up, Alex, I don't know if it's up. It's up, yep. Uh, so I can't read it, but it says, it, says uh, like, uh, it is with deep regret and a heavy heart that I write this letter, but I must come forth with my intentions with sincerity and honesty. Certain events in my life have put me in a different place, uh, and while it was more taxing decisions I've made them... Uh, I've had to make of late. It is the, the right, right one. one. The purpose of this letter is to end my relationship with Planet Fitness. So he's breaking up as if it was a 20-year relationship with a uh, partner. Um, this is, I think, re- really where we are at this point. With I've, had this. I've had to do this. I've had to do it too. Had to, I've actually never joined a gym because I don't want to have to deal with all of this crap. Well, I just, I was paying my membership for my LA gym for the six months that I've been here. Oh and then God, in, in the new there. year, I was like, I'm going to send a, reg- they want you to send a registered letter to the gym, the specific gym that you belong to, and then say you are living somewhere else. Now, they don't have uh, Planet Fitness here, so I was I got out of that pretty easily. Well, Big Jeff has a big thing that happened here. Come here, let's tell you about your gym membership, What's Big Jeff. What's your gym breakup story? This is hilarious. Are you over it? Did oh, you have to write a dear John? Can I just cross over? Yeah. Come on in. We were just talking. I had to, I just broke up with my LA gym. Oh, six so of pain. listen to this story. Yeah, so I uh, when I moved here from Denver, I was working out at LA Fitness, and so I I went to the front desk and I said, Hey, listen, I go, I need to cancel my membership, and they said they looked at it and they go, didn't tell me anything else. They go, Okay, you're already three days into this new cycle, in which I was trying to avoid, and I go. Okay, I go, well, I want to cancel after that. I'm like, well, you have to tell us at the end of the month to cancel. It gets worse. So I go, okay, I'll do that. So then I leave. So I'm already leaving at that point. So I call You're in. going to Denver. You're moving to yeah, Denver. Yeah, I'm moving to Denver from L.A. So my membership's already done. I didn't even need the rest of that month. So I call in on that day. I go, hey, you guys told me to call in. I want to cancel my membership. They go, sorry, you can't do that. You have to come in in person. I go, well, I live in Denver. I go, I can't come in person. And they're like, well, maybe there's a gym out there. I'm like, there's not. I already checked. You know, they're searching. I go, listen, I just want to cancel my membership. Yeah, why I already is gave so you guys, I already, gave you, I already gave you a month of pay that I wasn't there. And they go, well, listen, you have to write in a letter. Register. But the letter doesn't, the letter doesn't, they might not get to it right away. I go, oh, conveniently, they might not get to it right <laughs> away. Another year. So I wrote in a letter, <coughs> and guess what? They didn't conveniently get to it because I waited till the last day. Right. They didn't get to it till the, the next, next month. seven business, five business days, and I had to pay another full month, and it was canceled. Everything. Criminal. So three months, they stole money out of my pocket. Yeah. Straight happen? stole money. Yeah, it's crazy. And I gotta say, I mean, they'll they'll offer to build a gym in your na- new neighborhood versus letting you cancel the membership. They're like, well, we'll just build one in Denver for you. And yeah. Then just keep the membership. They'll wait for everything. It's, like, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. it's crazy. And cable's kind of the same way. Cable's the same cable, way. What? Just so like, we want to know from you guys, like cable or the gym memberships, you. what what kind of lifetime deals have you gotten yourself into lately that you can't get out of? And ladies, ladies and gentlemen out there, it is similar, to be honest, with a hairdresser when you have to break oh, up God, with your worst. hairdresser, when you yeah. just don't think they've given you a good enough haircut. That's a guy, that is that's a the guy and girl thing. But why don't you just ghost on them? You well, can't. You can't if you want to go to someone else in, in the, the salon. Oh, you can't do oh, that. God. See, there's that's, a lot of protocol. You can't do that. You can't. No, no, no. But what that's if you hate then you then you have bad hair because you're sacrificing that, social yeah. norms? You do have I to can go hear you around someone else. It's yeah, crazy. that's it. That you can't I used it's to go to Shorty's in LA on Shorty's, that's where Brooks went. Yes, and there's, you know, 12, 13 chairs. And you know, people would come and go. But there was one, uh, you know, she was great. And then I just kind of ghosted because it wasn't working out. Uh, and then I started coming back. And then I ended up sitting in the chair beside Ew, her. Ew, it's so awkward. Time. I couldn't do it. But I just nipped it in the bud and just had a full-on conversation the first week and went, owned it and was like, hey, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, Good you're, for you. you're not He's available on right Sundays. Now, yeah, it's always like, wah, wah. I want to do it on Saturday at 4 a.m. Yeah. You gotta find a loophole. But then once they're like, hey, guess what? I switched my schedule around yeah. on my Sundays. I think it was, I think we were mutually not interested in each other. It was yeah, a it's mutual, like a back. See, I would just, I would never, I could never ever go back to that salon. Yeah. No, it's too awkward. Oh, yeah. Um, everyone really wants to talk more about the beard. 
how do you feel about a guy with a beard? And would you ever go five o'clock shadow or beard? I look, I look homeless when I grow a beard. I feel like. You know what when I mean? you grow a beard? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, maybe if it got to the point like this, I first of all, I can't take it. I don't yeah, like it. Is it like itchy? Nuts. Yeah, it drives me nuts. You have to get to a certain stage. Or let it go. I have you ever been there? No. No. It's I'll mess around with like a, I call it my Johnny right. Depp. I won't shave right like now. here and here. And I'll keep it for like a little pirates? bit. Yeah, so pirates? Yeah. And I call it, like Jordan knows, I call it my Johnny Depp. But then when it's time to come to work, I keep sounds it like clean. Sounds like a weird role play. Yeah, it sounds like a weird, do you guys play pirates? Like I have a lot alone? of weird names for everything I do. Well, Phil Cohen says, I have a beard I enjoy. It makes me feel distinguished. Indeed, well, we've seen your beard, and it is distinguished. And yeah. beards are really the fad right now, especially like in LA, especially here. You know what I mean? Very like hipster cool. Oh my God. I said like, in Denver, everyone's working out, drinking a beer, climbing a mountain with a heavy beard. You know what you yeah, can and tell? It looks, it looks cool. I just can't do it. I can't that it's hit in this culture. Commercials feature so many actors with beards. And for 20, yes. 30 years, you would never, you would never see you someone go to with, an audition hair with a beard in commercials because there was a very clean cut. That's right. Everybody, all those, yeah. all the products wanted very clean everybody. cut people. And now it is oh, so sorry. normal. Like back in the 70s, Actors and commercials, you see all kinds of beards. It's the absolute mainstream thing to do. I'm right gonna now. skip. I'm skipping the beard phase. I'm waiting for the pork chops to come back. Well, I the Wolverines. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna I, come back. I successfully <laughs> skipped the piercings, the tattoos. And I got. I'm gonna ride I got a belly button piercing. I'm gonna ride through the beard. I don't have any of those things. Do you have a tattoo? Yeah, I got a couple. I got the belly button ring. I have two. And it was like everyone was doing it, and I was in studying in Oxford, and they were like, "Are you 18?" And I go, "Yeah." And it was a man with a stick through his nose. And he goes, what year were you born? And I was like, I don't know. And he goes, Pfft. And Wait, goes, you're already pierced. Before pierced you before I knew it. Pierced before I knew it. So, well, good that's story, a little, guys. Little piece of information you didn't know about Tori Shulman. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Ellis, I was a little rebel, by the way. That was yeah. I was 15. Yeah. Ellis Walker, I've not, I've not liked my beard, but pretty soon I will shave it off. When do you guys, if you do have a beard, when is the final straw? Like, when do you like, I gotta shave it? Do you know See, what I'm I don't, saying? I don't know because I never had. Like, I can only a full go. It's beard. three day growth. Anything beyond that, I don't know. Agitates me. So it bothers. No, yeah, John. Like if I was sick for like five days and I didn't shave, you know, and then finally I like, you know, that when you get to that point, like I gotta get in the shower, just clean up, and then I shave, I feel like refreshed and clean. And so, oh. You know what I mean? That's yeah, just yeah. me. It sort That's of stresses. It's str you should have Stu come in and ask. Well, let's question. ask about this. Stu sure. is our. You guys know Stu Magoo movie. Right, right, I gotta go anyway. But Stu's Stu, our um, stick up for the bearded people. Stage out there. manager, sure. and he has a really healthy. Tori's beard. gonna grow a beard. Hi there. <laughs> Did we have to add that before you left? We're talking beard. My favorite. So, do you maintain a beer with beard oil? Yeah. I still, we put this on and when when do you know it's time to shave? Uh, so we've seen just, him shaved it's and unshaved. Personal. Yeah, it's really it's a matter of like personal taste. I think so on a day to day, you don't have to do much. A little beard oil. I personally condition the beard every day, or else it starts itching, and that's too bad. Uh, and that's now, do you too just bad. use yeah. standard? Hair conditioner? Yeah, you can just use standard hair conditioner, and then, but then it, afterwards, if you really want to go crazy with it, there's you know actual like rub-in conditioner or beard oil. There's a thousand products now. now. Has a Saturday night ever come around where someone um, called you up, a lady friend, and said, "Would you like to get dinner?" And you said, "I'm sorry, I'm, I'm washing, washing my, my beard." beard. Like, no, it doesn't take that long. Yeah, I can't. John <laughs> Venturini. In, in, my, in my circumstance, no, that won't take that long. Okay. John Venturini <laughs> says, "I've had a goatee for nine years with a five o'clock shadow from time to time, and when you know on shaving when you." see yourself in the mirror and you say what that poor guy oh is that That's I mean true. is it a comfort thing because for me it was like one day it just starts getting uncomfortable uh it's, it's a mix a there's does it feel distinguished? Uh, it's distinguished, yeah. yeah. But if it's tight, if it gets a little too crazy, that's when I keep it tight. All right, that's fascinating. I'll be right back. All right, Brett Forrest. Brett right Forrest, could you come here for a second? We know Brett Forrest very well, guys. You remember him. He is always at this moment, and they're hilarious. Now, this beard, tell me we're just talking beards. There's a study that says beards make you seem more honest, more distinguished. How do you feel about this beard? Is this a full-on beard? Have you gone heavier? I fluctuate every week. It's just depends this is on. short for you. Yeah, this, it depends on how I want it to look. And every week I decide, oh, I'll up, grow it out or, oh, time to shave it. Nice. Now, do you use beard oil or anything? I don't. No, I, I'm, I'm pretty low key about it. And do you think women are more attracted to you with the beard or without the beard? I used to never have a beard till a few, few years ago, and I noticed a big change in the way I was treated once I grew it out. In a good way? In a good way. So this is Denver, remember. It, it depends yeah. on your region, but yeah. might, might have made you look more distinguished, a little older, a little more rough around the edges. Yeah, like a mountain man. Like a mountain man, yeah. that's right, that's right. So guys, we're talking about beards, taking more seriously, do you grow one or do you shave one? And also, gym memberships or any memberships, is it hard to leave? Are you at a gym? 
Uh, me? Sorry. Nice to I, I thought we were off. I thought we were off. We're about to start the show. I am. I am a gym member. Are we off? Yeah. Oh. Are we back? Wait, that was messy then. Oh. Yeah. Well, what time is it? It's 11:59. Uh oh. So we are about to go live on air, and I thought we were just live. So that was my fault for confusing everyone. <laughs> no one likes that. Yeah. All right, guys, so let us know if the beard, we have BH Brady talking about the gym membership. I had a membership at Bally's in Tampa, wanted to cancel, but they said you could only do that if there wasn't a Bally's in a 50 mile radius. I had to change my address. Wow. Too much. I, I you know yeah. in trending news and entertainment, and it's all live right now. Happening right now, an Oprah book emergency. Why she's deleting parts of her new self help book. Plus, Sarah Jessica Parker talks the next Sex in the City movie minus Kim Cattrall. DBL Nation, how would you like to her character? And we're counting down to those Super Bowl parties. You may regret reaching for that last handful of chips. And I'm not talking about the calories. It's Daily Blast Live. We're the only live show in daytime talking breaking news, entertainment, and trending topics that you're talking about right now, no matter where you're watching. Let's get this thing kicked off with the top five trending topics you need to know with our girl, Sam Shocker. Take it away, girlfriend. Thank you so much, Erica Cobb. We are live. I'm here with media maven Ebony Steele, everyone's favorite big brother, Jeff Schroeder, comedian Al Jackson looking sharp. Yeah, what? buddy. Open casket shot. That's that's Hannah Moon. Thank you, Hannah Moon. <laughs> that's funny. Okay, and I'm Sam Shocker. We're a trending news and entertainment show that is live and covers what is happening right now. Our entire DBL team, check them out. They're in our studio, ready to cover news the moment it breaks. And of course, what are we doing here at DBL? We are counting down to Super Bowl 52. Yeah. And we've got breaking news. Digital producer Raquel Vinueva has the details. That's right, Sam. Just moments ago, Justin Timberlake ended his live press conference answering all the Super Bowl halftime questions we've been dying to know. Here's what he had to say about some special guests. From NSYNC to, to Jay to uh, Chris Stapleton to Janet. And, um, but this year, I'm just excited. My band is uh, the Tennessee Kids. The, I feel like those they're my special guests. So he's really coy about that answer, and he's also coy about what songs he'll perform, but he says there's a good chance we'll hear Can't Stop the Feeling and hinted at a Prince tribute. But we'll have to wait till Sunday to find out. Back to you. All right, thank you so much, Raquel. And more on the Super Bowl. It's only three days until kickoff at U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, where they're expecting more than a million visitors, including our very own Al Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get right to reporter Pat Evans from our sister station. Uh, he joins us from their very <laughs> snowy backyard. Pat, we're hearing this could be the coldest Super Bowl ever. And first of all, thank you for joining us, Pat. Well, uh, happy to be here, if only for a few minutes out here. We're doing our very best right now to uh, try to reenact a scene from Fargo minus the wood chipper. <laughs> It's, it's a cold day here. Even for us, this is a cold one. The thing we uh, like to accentuate on days like this is if the sun's shining, then you're in pretty decent shape if you're out of the wind. Uh, the Super Bowl looking like it will be the coldest on record. You have to go back to 1982, 16 degrees. Uh, that was outside the stadium in Pontiac, Michigan back in 1982. And then New Orleans, it was in the 40s for an actual game being played. Uh, so we're looking at zero zero during game time on Sunday. Oh, wow, Pat. And uh, it's obvious this year's flu has been pretty bad and people have been concerned, yeah. but what are officials doing to try to keep everybody healthy? Well, they're super mindful of it. Of course, you know, we have the NFL experience, you know, with thousands of people filter through. I just dropped some family off for visiting from California. Uh, they are wiping things down very often. Uh, in fact, uh, throughout that area there. So anything anyone handles, uh, they are really trying to do their level best to clean up. And we're on Lake Nicollet Mall. We have our uh, satellite, our remote studio. They will be talking to you folks a little bit later on. Everything wiped down there. They're doing that about every 15 minutes. So we're doing our best. But, you know, flu uh, very rampant around here as well our newsroom has been hit hard by it so we're, we're doing our best to stay well got to keep it clean pat pat there's a ton of buzz about justin timberlake's big halftime show we just saw justin but any other sightings like janet jackson janet jackson britney or the nsync boys Ooh. i'm sorry i don't have any audio now 
Oh, that's okay, Pat. We'll give you a, a couple more seconds to see if you can regain audio. Do you I think her? that was a cover-up answer. He saw somebody, <laughs> and he doesn't want to tell us, Pat. He's, Pat he's is, keeping a surprise. We really don't have yeah. him. But the, and, I would have respected that. Yeah. 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 I you really, never know. Pat's I a good know. one. Pat's well, thank good. you, Pat. I know you can't hear us, but thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Pat. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Janet Jackson Woo. or NSYNC or Brit Brit all make an appearance. That, Maybe. Oh, that, that would be a lot. I think one of those would I be. I said any of them. Oh, you yeah. said any. I thought yeah. you said all. That was all. <laughs> all right. Settle That'd down, Janet Jackson. Settle down. <laughs> Millions of Americans will be going to Super Bowl parties where a lot of super snacking will be taking place, but not so fast. Turns out those snacks can spread the flu. Double dipping? I don't think so. That's a personal foul. <laughs> Bowls of candies? You better think twice. There's a flag on that plate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's the candies, you guys. Think about it. Everybody dipping into the candies, eating them, but I would think chips is the same way. Yeah, I think anything people are reaching their hand in is going to be bad. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just think you just get your own plate, stick with that. But see, I'm a wings guy. So you just get in there, just get your bowl of wings, and Walk away. And yeah, but eat, eat in shame. When I think of the Super Bowl, I think of food, I think of dips, you know, and then I saw this and I was like, oh man. Who's a double dipper favorite? here? I'm definitely not. I'm not. I'm not a double dipper. Double I'm, dipper a clean, I'm a clean Well, I don't guy. really double dip, okay? So, like, if I stick a wing in there and I bite it, I, I'm, sometimes I may twist it to the other side. Oh, honey, you're uh, a double dipper. That's a double dipper. Don't invite Ebony to your Super Bowl party. Well, she I'm, is I'm a double dipper. <laughs> okay, all right. Super Bowl fashion is coming in hot. Tori Shulman is showing us adorable and affordable looks to rock for the big game. Yeah, guys, want to dress like a supermodel for the Super Bowl? Me neither. But here are some looks that supermodels have worn to support their teams and how you can get the look for Sunday. So get creative with your team colors. Number one Patriots fan Giselle ditches the traditional jersey in sports. The Patriots red and blue in plaid. Looks like Sam. You can get the look at H&M for $7 to $20. Giselle also posted this snap on Instagram showing off her Patriot leggings. Get the look at NFLshop.com for $35. And if you order online today, you will have them by Saturday. And finally, pair your outfit with spirited socks like Olivia Colpo. Find both Patriot and Eagles designs at JCPenney's today for $17.95. Because come on, what's the Super Bowl about? Fashion, not football. Back to you guys. Woo! Wait a second. Where's the fashion for like guys that really watch football? Like big fat guys with cigars and like, <laughs> <laughs> like they eat wings and drink beer? Like they can't get a sweatshirt or something? No, no, all models watch this football game. Yeah. You're telling me, Al Fashion Jackson, that you didn't arm up ready to go to the Super Bowl this weekend. You know you got some I know new you do. hot gear ready no to show No one's going to be able to see it. It's too cold. I'm just going to get another coat. Yeah, but inside it's going to be nice. The inside it'll be nice. So I'm we'll expecting see. some good uh, fashion this weekend. Lots now. of I got you. You know I'm going to let you down. Okay. <laughs> all right. And uh, switching gears, new accusations of sexual misconduct today. Let's get right to digital producer Kelly Schuber. She has news at this moment. Yeah, that's right. Supermodel Kate Upton is slamming the co-founder of Fashion Line Guess with sexual harassment allegations. She writes that Paul Marciano, quote, shouldn't be allowed to use his power in the industry to sexually and emotionally harass women with the hashtag MeToo. Now, it's unclear if she was personally a victim. She was saying she was personally a victim when she was the face of the brand. But listen to what she told TMZ. I'm excited to tell my whole story, but a walk to the car is not going to cover it. Marciano tells TMZ he's done nothing wrong and that Upton can take him to court. Back to you. Oof, and we were talking about this earlier and it got heated because, you know, in this day and age, the positive of the Me Too movement is that finally you can have the courage to speak out about right. these injustices. But then at the same token, by just tweeting that Jeff or Al did such and such, how do you take that away? How do, how do you get to respond? Exactly. Like he just responded. I don't know. The one thing that kind of brought to my mind that's a different take on all. Dexter played a little pinball. He's a gamer. And finally, Dexter stopped in the city of Miami, Oklahoma, where he visited the Coleman Theater because he's also a huge theater goer. He lives a more exciting life than me. <laughs> but does Dexter know what's going on? Yes. Like, it's just, he's just trying to eat. He's just being dragged from city to city. Is there not, like, Leave this bird alone and let him just eat. He doesn't know what's happening. And is he tw is he on duty 24 hours? Like, does he get a break at any time? He's or got an Instagram following, Ebony. I, sorry, he's got to keep up with all them followers. I'm one of them. Okay, okay, Sam. Daily Blast Live covers <laughs> trending topics and entertainment live. Erica Cobb, please tell us what's coming up. Well, Sarah Jessica Parker dishes on the future of Sex in the City. It seems a third movie might happen, but how will they get rid of Kim Cattrall's character, Samantha? We'll chat about that. And a Netflix account 
know some or do you have a Netflix account? Do you know someone who does? What well, you need to know about an email scam going around right now. And you, the viewer, are our fifth host. Next, we share your comments live on air about a story getting a lot of buzz online. I will talk about it. It's just the gang. Hey guys, what's going on? I do want to share a little science news, if that's okay. Okay guys, I got really nerdy, but at the New York Times today, a man was going to his lunch with his wife, and in the net, his wife works at NASA in Maryland at the Goddard Center. And as he was leaving, he happens to be a dinosaur tracker. Jason's so not interested in this. No, I'm kidding. And we're up on Facebook. What's up guys? Yay, we're back on Facebook. Welcome, we had a glitch, glitchy glitch boo. Um, that sounded really technical. Yeah, so uh, real quick, this guy went to visit his wife who was working. He had lunch with her at the NASA Center in Maryland. And as he was leaving, he's also an amateur dinosaur tracker. He found a slab um, of concrete in the parking lot. He picked it up. It's pretty big. 8.5. Started looking at it, and there's seven different dinosaurs including mammals that have crossed over with footprints and now they know they were all alive at the same time you can see them the little baby one next to a mommy next to a beak and it's amazing so it's in Maryland so Maryland and DC if you guys didn't know was actually formed on a swamp so this was a perfect rock to keep it so they were saying what do we do they're about to bulldoze NASA's parking lot and he was like don't do it he said I know you look up there for signs of life but there's signs of life right in your parking lot they say it, they found more tracking, but this was the biggest by far. We're going to throw up a picture I have later on in the show. Um, it's in the New York Times, and you can see the baby little pod, beaks. You can see another little walking one. And what's interesting is that mammals and dinosaurs were walking sort of at the same time. This is about 100 million years ago. So this dinosaur expert happened to be walking by, seeing this lab. It's now hailed as one of the most important fossils that we've ever found. So we're going to show it to you guys, um, and you're going to be able to point out little baby feet and all that stuff. So NASA might be good in the air, but they're also good on the ground. See you soon. Welcome back to Daily Blast Live, the only live show that covers trending stories live, no matter where you're watching. And we are listening to you, so it's time for Fifth Host, where your comments are part of the discussion. Take it away, Sam Shocker. Thank you so much, Erica. We'll get to Fifth Host in a minute, but first, digital producer Raquel Vinueva, she has news at this moment. What's going on, Raquel? Well, police across the country are warning Netflix users not to open a fake email. We first told you about this scam right here on DBL. Now a new email has hackers trying to get to your credit card info by saying there's a problem with your Netflix membership. But the warning is still the same. Do not open or click on the email and report it to Netflix right away. Back to you. Who has time yeah. for that? Nobody got time for don't that. Don't open random emails. <sighs> don't. I know it's just don't. It okay. looked like Netflix was almost misspelled PSA anyway. from Al Jackson. Just don't yep. open random emails. I agree. Oh, I really. agree. All right, do you guys all want to have a successful year? Yeah, Who absolutely. here wants a successful year? We all want a successful year. Then according to Calvin Harris, grow a beard. The DJ posted this on Instagram, quote, I grew a big old beard in order to be taken seriously by the Grammys as a producer. It worked to an extent, and I was happy the beard was performing as well as I had hoped. So are men with beards taken more seriously? That's the question. Here's what you, our fifth host, had to say. Let's start with Heather Hassenstab Heights. She says, yes, men can seem a little more sincere. Here. Ooh, what do you think, Al? I think it's just medium stub. I have I, this is a shadow, I guess. Yeah. A little stubble. Yeah. A little stubble. Yeah, what I, are you doing know. to yourself, may, man? May, you looking cuter and cuter. Thank every you. Day. I appreciate that. No, I think I, I think a beard shows you can commit to something. You know, because a beard Ooh. like that takes at least a year and a half, two years to grow to get it down. I, uh, one of our uh, uh, PAs, Adam, has a nice. Uh, uh, he's a cameraman now. Adam, how long did it take you to grow that beard? Uh, Years yeah, years. it's about three years. So it's, it shows you can commit. So maybe that's what women are looking Not for. Not good in a fight, though. I could, someone could grab. Well, we don't, know, grab, we'd, we'd always saying. go to bar fighting with I'm our fashion, Sam. I'm just saying someone <laughs> could grab the beard. It's just not 
Is that against strategy. the rules, though, okay. if men were Just fighting? Just Okay. Let's, sorry about that, folks. <laughs> Tammy Gibson writes, I take George Clooney either way. Ha, for me, it doesn't matter if they have beard or not. Well, uh, just to bounce off what Al said, it's commitment to grow a beard. It's a commitment to shave every single day. That's, That's a, a commitment. No. You know what I mean? Are you so fighting for yourself? I'm fighting for myself <laughs> because I look terrible in a beard. <laughs> I don't know about that. Let's take a look over here at Stu Magoo and Brett Forrest. Uh, we've got a little stubble <laughs> on Brett. <laughs> They're not posing Brett's got beard. more than stubble. That's more than stubble. So how many days for you, Brett? Uh, this is probably about a week right here. And what about you, Stu? How long for that? Uh, a month and a half to two. All right. Do you That's find that people take you guys more seriously when you have a beard? I will say before the beard to now, I get a lot more attention from girls. Not even joking. <gasps> they love the beard. Whoa. What about you, Stu? Uh, I haven't noticed a huge difference, but everybody here doesn't take me seriously generally. So. <laughs> You know, yes, so, we do, yeah. Stu. We really do. We love Stu. <laughs> they kind of look so like brothers. Hats. They, they do. look like yeah. brothers. Uh, oh, we got to go. I was going to read Phil Cohen's, but you know what? We could keep talking about it. So we'll talk about it more in the Facebook Live. Stay Let's tuned do for that. that. And we want to thank you, the viewer, for being our fifth host. Be sure to join us before and during the show on Facebook and YouTube Live to share your comments. We love hearing what you have to say. All right. And Daily Blast Live is all about news right when it's happening. That's what we're about. Erica Cobb, tell us what's coming up, boo. Well, comedian Amy Schumer's known for her opinion, and she's giving it on the Aziz Ansari scandal. Plus, who doesn't love puppies? It's the annual the Puppy Bowl, and you know, comedian Al Jackson will sound off on this next. And it's National Texas Day, and we're testing your Lone Star knowledge in our trivia showdown. Get your DBL app ready and play along with us to win a cool prize. Do you know what an isthmus is? I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Stay tuned, because we're going to take a third grade quiz that apparently is stumping everyone. studies and there are more studies that I can even cite that have looked at the difference between having a beard being somewhat shaven clean shaven goatees and they all contradict one another so one study will say that if a man has a beard that they are taken more seriously that they are uh, women will think that they're more uh, commitment like a, as Al said then other studies will say that a beard means that they're apparently sexist. Other studies will say that women want clean shaven. So I was telling, uh, Ebony's behind the camera, that's why I keep referring to Ebony. I was, okay, I was telling the viewer that I was looking at all these different studies of what does a beard mean, and they all contradict one another. So I think the, the, uh, one second. I think the verdict is still out. I'm listening to Rosh. I think the verdict is still out because we don't know, considering that all these studies contradict one another. So let us know, DBL, DBL right. Nation, if you ever had a beard, do, were you taken more seriously? Were you not? What about you? What are you attracted to? I like men. I like hairy men, period. Like so you, some women want them to shave their chest, whatever. But I love a beard. I love a mustache. Why is that? Do you I think, think it's though? a little edgy and it's very manly to me. And sometimes, like like the Jeff was saying, that when you shave, it shows commitment. But I think when it's kind of just out there, you're free, and it's just manly. So you know what to I mean? you, it's a little bit free too. It's, it's free. That's interesting because I like scruff too. I'm not a I'm not full beard, but I love scruff. Is to me, both that like seventies. Well, I don't like. Yeah. Yeah, that Actually, makes sense. Yes, yeah, I do. I like a man that look like he's been working on the railroad. A little on, dirt on. under the nails. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah I you agree. I mean? And I, I'm not into like a six pack. I'd rather have a little bit of like a... Sh shut up, Sam. Did you, you hear me say that no, before? Swear, no, I'm, no, I'm with you. No, because to me, if you shave too much and you're too pretty, you're spending too much time. And if you have um, like a, a six pack and you're like, I mean, somebody that I would date, you know what I mean? That means you spend all the time in the gym and you're not handling... I like a, It just shows a little wisdom and a little character. And almost like, like a little, I don't give an F. And I like a man with one little flaw, like a, a, oh, yeah. high, a hijacked tooth or a little scar oh, on his face. We, like, we like the same man, apparently. Yes. Watch out. Yes. Let us know what you think. Yes. Welcome back to Daily Blast Live, the only live daytime show that covers trending stories live as they happen. It's time for Al Sounds Off when comedian Al Jackson goes off on the wildest stories he can find with a little help from Jeff Schroeder. Take it away, guys. 
Thank you, Erica Cobb. It's time for everyone's favorite segment. Al sounds off with everyone's yes. favorite comedian, uh, Mr. Al Jackson. Okay. How are you? Feeling good, buddy. Feeling good. Oh, yeah. Let's get into it. All right, Al, with the big game around the corner, there's so much to look forward to. The yeah. commercials, the food, and of course, the puppy bowl. Ugh. Now, Jeff, I just love this. It's so cute. This is the puppy bow, or as Sam calls it, the Super Bowl. Uh, and she still doesn't know what teams are playing. Uh, I like this. You know, everybody's like, this game's going to be off the hook. This game's going to be off the leash. Now, Jeff, I'll tell you this. You know, I'm a gambling man. Uh, there's a lot of props being uh, laid out. What's your favorite bet this year? Oh, the coin toss, man. Uh, well, I would bet that there's going to be a flea flicker. Uh, <laughs> And the saddest thing about both these teams, they both won as many games as the Browns did this year. Let's go to the next one. All right, Al, this week, Sophia, a humanoid robot, spoke about the future of artificial intelligence in South Korea. You got to watch. I am always working to improve myself and learn about different culture, right? That's why I'm in first class. Now, Jeff, she's just sitting there. I mean, she's in Korea. You would think she'd have more soul. <laughs> If I want a woman to stare blankly and blink at me, I'll just go on a Tinder date. This is <laughs> very rare, but... Uh, uh, and bad news, fellas, she doesn't have a clear history button. Uh, <laughs> Think about it. Uh, let's go. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> All right, Al, these headphones are guaranteed to keep your music lit. Watch this, Al. All right, let's check it out. Now, Jeff, I just love these headphones. I think they're so cool. You know, it's just like, it, it, dude, and here's my joke for you that I thought was so funny. It's like, you can listen to Queen while looking like a princess. You, the, you get, Jeff, you could, the, the, the group Queen. What do you mean? Do you, you don't get my joke? The, Queen is a group and then you can look like a. What? Jeff, are you not listening? I was listening to your half hour special on Comedy Central, Al. Oh! Check it out. Jen Weeders from has a new trending story coming in hot. How am I supposed to follow that man? <laughs> so listen guys, BuzzFeed posted a third grade social studies quiz and it's trending way hot right now. Seems pretty easy. Check it out. Click on the largest ocean. Pacific. Correct. Mm. It's the Pacific. The Atlantic. Does that red circle mean it's wrong? Who wrote the Bill of Rights? Thomas Jefferson. Oh, Tori's gonna be so mad. Madison, correct. Which arrow is pointing to an isthmus? I don't even know what an isthmus is. It must be on here somewhere. Isthmus. I got that wrong. Riverbank. Yeah, what's up? What kind of map is this? Political. See? I don't see anything that makes this political. Political? What in this picture is a capital resource? The road. <laughs> yeah. Roads. Cow. I got three out of seven. I got six out of seven. I'm a star student. There's no way that I got a two out of seven. This must have been uh, harder than you guys thought it was going to be. <laughs> I'm very disappointed in all of you. Maureen, can we ground them or something? Wait, I got a six out of seven. <laughs> and good job, Sam. <laughs> A plus for Sam. Back to you. It was harder than it looks. All right, guys. They'll put flaming hot Cheetos on top of anything. We'll show you the latest funky food fad. Plus, Sex in the City 3 without Samantha. Sarah Jessica Parker hints at the future's franchise. Or the franchise of the future, I should say. You're watching Daily Blast Live. It's National Texas Day. So to celebrate, we're testing your knowledge. Promotional consideration is brought to you by... Attention homeowners, Quicken Loans has some very We've got awesome news for those joining us on Facebook who are waiting. Hello! <coughs> Sorry we Hello, were Hello guys. Sorry we had some technical difficulties, but, and for some of you who have been really waiting like a long time, like 40 years, there's some breaking news that is going to shock 1974 Hollywood. Ready? Yes. Kelly, what's the breaking news of 2018? Robert Wagner is now officially a person of interest in Natalie Wood's death. You are lying. Now, he has been a person of interest Since for 40 years, 40 years. But he has now been looked at a little closer. If you guys don't know, Natalie Wood was an actress, a fan favorite, afraid of water, married to Robert Wagner, and Christopher Walken was on the boat. They got drunk one night, and Natalie Woods drowned off the boat. I won't this was right off uh, uh, 
Catalina, yeah, Catalina, Catalina Island, Island. so right, California. California. Christopher Walken has said no. nothing. No. Robert Wagner has always been a person of interest, so uh, now I guess he's more he so. Had, he has been so a person is, of interest, so he's never been actually called so by what, police. Do we know what they think advanced the uh, investigation? What they're saying now is that they can confirm that he was the last person to see her. But again, we already knew that. We already knew all of this. So the investigation reopened six years ago, and they changed her cause of death from accidental drowning to drowning and other undetermined factors. And the autopsy shows she had bruises on her body. She did or she did not? She did. She did. It was always questionable. They had been all rowdy partying, Christopher Walken, Robert Wagner yep. herself on the boat off Catalina. And it's important to note that since they reopened in the investigation six years ago, Robert Wagner refuses to talk to them. Sorry. Christopher Walken has talked to them. Everyone Shame. else has talked to them. We're Wagner gonna reopen Elvis's death next. Stay tuned on DBL. <laughs> Tall. You're watching Daily Boss Live. It's National Texas Day! So to celebrate, we're testing your knowledge of the Lone Star State. It's our DBL Trivia Showdown. Ow, ow! Okay, she's ready. Today's showdown is between Tori and Jen and all of you viewers. Oh my goodness. The wheels have fallen off. Go to dailybuslive.com and tap vote now. Questions will appear on your device. Howdy. 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 And the winning viewer will win a DBL Hashtag Genius t hey. Hey. Okay, question number one. Finish the Dallas, oh boy, okay. Finish the Dallas Cowboy cheerleader slogan. Often imitated, never equaled, always fails, but we're the original. Yes, oh, careful never, there. Never equaled. Boom. Whoa, Boom. I, didn't, I didn't get the question. All oh. right. Which show does great. not take place in Texas? Friday Night Lights, Lonesome Dove, Bonanza. Tori. Lonesome Dove? Oh, do I get a chance? Sure. Bonanza. Yep. We're, oh, okay. Uh, last question. Keep what dancing. college did Janice Joplin attend? Oh. The University of Texas, Texas Tech, or Baylor? We can't get this wrong. Sorry. Baylor. Oh my gosh. Wow. I'm just going Texas. They got a huge Which undergrad one? program. One? Texas Tech or UT? Texas, UT. She's right. <laughs> Program. Okay, so that means the winner is. Bum, 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 we can't even. We don't even need to. Okay. It's, it's all right. obviously okay. 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 Let's lasso it around. Take you it are, off. The winning viewer is Dr. Pepper. Wait, excuse me. Hold on. Three, oh. two, one. one. Viewer number five one one eight. How'd you know that? Wow. Five one one eight. Please write in and let us know your name. Can we get one more? Yeehaw. Yeah. Oh. And I'll be teaching people how to line dance on commercial break. She went to one rodeo and all of a sudden she's <laughs> a cowgirl. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> I do feel like I You need to have a trivia to save my life. You need to play the third grade game. This is about barbecue. Oh, but they already know. You already know the answers. I know what it is. You already know the answers. I know what it is. This is. Yeah, but I bet you wouldn't know. Wait, what is it? I heard all of them. I think Texas barbecue. I heard all of them. Oh. Yes, honey. Did you tell everyone? Texas, Memphis, South Carolina. What, sweetie? Yes. I did okay, Dallas got it. once. I know the Alamo yep, City. Okay. I heard Dallas was a Dallas was a party town. Yeah, it was a good time. Good, good food. I was there. Well, there. Was it nice. was a good time. Dallas is a fun place. Yeah. I've never been to Dallas. Yeah, Dallas is fun. I'd love to go to Austin. I've yet to go to Austin. Yeah, I went to Austin. Been that was Austin. Fun. No, but I heard that. I it's love a Austin. Place. Yeah, it's a cool yeah, town. So that's where te uh, University of Texas is. So, you know, it's sixty thousand. Uh, you know, uh, st college students. Eighty thousand, I think. In one it's very huge. small city. I think city. Uh, University of Texas is third biggest college. I think uh, uh, Michigan's the biggest. Uh, Texas and then Ohio State are three biggest. The stadiums? Or the no, no, no. Uh, Austin, awesome. you're watching. Give us a shout out because we love you. We I want to know love, if you love us. So I, I almost hear, went to UT. I love Austin. You, yeah, it's, a, yep. it's a fun, liberal city. Lots Listen, of great live weird. music. You're weird. It's the perfect you fit. Yeah. If you're watching us from I Austin, I want some yeah. shout outs. Westwood, right shout out. Yep, Westwood. What's up, dude? So, how would you have done on the Texas? I don't know. I don't. Let me think. I okay. would have gotten Janice Joplin because I was a huge Janice fan right. growing up and I knew she went to UT. Oh, I would back. never have guessed the answer to that song that Jen knew. Mm -hmm. Never, ever, ever. Nia Wesley on Facebook wants to be very clear that we don't all wear cowboy hats in Texas. 
Fair enough. Well, yeah, we do want to wear cowboy hats when we want to believe you guys. Yeah, it's duly noted. Me and Sam are doing it next hour, I think. Uh, I think everybody uh, a lot of you, nice uh, 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 yeah. SM on YouTube, secretly cheating on the BuzzFeed quiz. Thanks, DBL, giving me some of the answers. Cool. Three, two. Some breaking news in middle school. It's Daily Blast Live, the only live show that covers breaking news and top trending stories that are happening right now. We are live in the DBL studios where our team is busy tracking trending topics and breaking news. Let's go to Ebony Steele, Jeff Schroeder, Al Jackson, and Sam Shocker for all the top trending stories. Thank you so much, Erica. Also trending right now, Megan Kelly, according to Radar Online, Megan has been banned from covering the royal wedding. Sources say they only want their best correspondence. Ooh. Ooh. Reporting on Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's big day. And so what, what it is here is they worry that Meghan Kelly might say something inappropriate or create controversy. So they are sending Savannah Guthrie and Hoda Kotb. They will be there to helm NBC's wedding coverage. Nice. All this money they're paying her and they're not, it, I mean, how are, is she being not utilized for this. She's definitely created a lot of controversy. Right. Um, and I think that has worked for her in, to some degree. But then again, look at her ratings. Yeah. Yeah. Her ratings are bad. And also, I don't see why this is such a big deal. We all have family members that are banned from weddings. You know, like, <laughs> let's keep it real. Like, hey, you can't. No, that, that toast you gave last year, you can't. So I think, you know, they. And it's a joke, but it's serious. I think that they're worried that she's going to say something that can really offend, offend people or turn off their viewers and she's the ratings are already not good and they're so and they're sending a message to her you know what i mean they're like i think they're slowly cutting ties with her is what i think mm -hmm. to not to take her away from something like this because of what she might say it doesn't, the doesn't look good for her the monarchy is very conservative mm -hmm. and i think that speaks volumes is they just want to make sure that no feathers are ruffled so to speak New fallout today for music mogul Russell Simmons. Oprah is removing parts of her book, The Wisdom of Sundays, that include him after, of course, the sexual assault allegations against him have surfaced. Shark Tank star Damon John also scrubbed Simmons from his advice book, Rise and Grind. That's the ultimate, right? When mm -hmm. you're, when Oprah Winfrey, who had a book club, who everybody listens to, whatever she says is gospel, when she scrubs you from her books, that's the end all be all. Yeah, I mean, if Oprah but these doesn't. These are just accusations. I know, and if, but if Oprah, if in the court of Oprah, if you're guilty, you're guilty in America. You know what I mean? So, that's a good point. yeah, that's Oprah holds her own court. So, yeah. not good for, not good for a couple people. Ed, these what do last you think? couple of subjects. I'm just thinking about the process. Like, um, you know, did Russell Simmons call them and ask them, like, hey, you know, or did he try not to? let this happen but it's just looking so bad because he's like supposed to be well this was meditations on meditation that he was doing in Oprah's book and he's being motivational so to pull that and um, I, I think it's just a bad look for him and he's an expert on on meditations that's why she had exactly. him in there he's been practicing Buddhism and meditation and yoga for almost two decades now so Sam, sad. we're getting to wrap up but I need to hear this from you I know that you you respect Russell because you know he he was a wild kid and, and then he found Buddhism and changed his life. Do you think that you should always be held accountable for things that you did no matter how much time has passed? Yes, if you admit to it. Mm. I think there's always repentance, but he would have to admit to it. And I'm not saying that this is what I, if he didn't remember it, and I'm not saying this is what happened. I 100% support all the victims out there of that course, have come forward. Course, but yes. he claims in his books, I read both of his books, that he was high on angel dust for a good decade. Mm -hmm. He was on the street, he was dealing drugs, and he wasn't coherent most of the time, and he was a very bad, bad man. Party and kicking it. But then he did have this whole change of character. So I don't know. We don't know. Um, and I don't want to dismiss it's a, it's a or one. minimize anything that the victims have gone through. We are live. Let's go right to digital producer Raquel Villanueva with news at this moment. Comedian Amy Schumer is weighing in on the sexual misconduct allegations against her friend, comedian Aziz Ansari, talking today to Katie Couric in a podcast. I, I identify with, with all the women in these situations. I kind of, my mind doesn't go right, to, even if it's my friend, I don't go, oh, but he's a good guy. I, I think, what would it feel like to have been her, you know? Schumer says she's also a survivor of sexual assault, and she believes this moment, this movement will change a generation. Back to you. But many people are also saying that uh, the woman accusing Aziz Asari, was, it was just a bad date. 
and that she's almost been a disservice to the whole Me Too movement. Right. Movement. And I think we discussed yesterday that that was the first case where we kind of looked like with an eyebrow, like, wait a minute, you know, are some people just, um, like you said, a bad day, throwing their stories in there amongst people that have really, really um, been assaulted, or, assaulted or victimized. You know, you don't want to lessen anybody's experience, but I mean, I guess we're trying to de uh, define these blurry lines as to what's really a sexual assault. There's a lot of blurry lines. You know what I was thinking about? This is this is kind of weird, but just to show how we how we've come in two years. Like uh, Robin Thicke released a song called Blurred Lines. Right. That was about not knowing the, se the sexual distinction about whether, and everybody danced to it and thought he was hot and kicked it. Yeah. Models were all over him and everybody was dancing in the club and now all of a sudden we use the word blurred lines and now it's a pin on your shirt and everybody's like, oh, this disease needs to go away. I don't know, I think everybody's a huge hypocrite and you guys need to check yourselves. Nice. Al Jackson, everybody, thank you, Al. Moving on, all right, and clearly switching gears, can you have a big wedding for a second marriage? <laughs> well, Goop Queen Gwyneth Paltrow says, Yes, she's planning her second walk down the aisle with Brad Falchuk and is looking at dresses, but her first marriage to Coldplay singer Chris Martin was not a big event with flowers and fanfare, and she even told People Magazine, quote, I've never had a wedding before. Mm. You got married in a courthouse. I did. And uh, you know, I j this is people aren't gonna like this because I know women want to have their wedding day. But I mean, I think weddings are stupid. I do. I think they're ridiculous. How I think they cost not like that. Yeah, thing? people aren't gonna like it. They <laughs> cost way too much money. You spend a lot of money. I'd rather have that money for life. I think engagement rings are stupid. I think it's totally <laughs> dumb. The total, the market's all fake. It's monopolized by diamond companies. You could just put a rock on your finger. Nobody would know the difference. Save money for your kids. Save money for your future. Save money for education. No, Don't you, waste it, it on flowers and, and a ring. And Jeff, let me say this. First of all, our camera. Man, Rob is on your side. Thanks, you Rob. That, you know what? If he took the word wedding away from it, and Jeff and Jordan said, you know what? We're going to have a party right before we're starting our life, and it's going to be $80,000. You'd be like, Jeff, you're out of your mind. Right. But you throw the word wedding on top of it, and now all of a sudden, first of all, if you call a venue and say, we want to have a party, it, uh, it, it'll it be a certain price. When you say we're having a wedding in the same hall, it goes up three times the price. Right. And it's, it, let me it, correct it myself. Racket. No, you're right. No, no, no let me correct. By wedding, I mean wedding parties. I don't wedding mean weddings. Yeah, it's not, I don't yes. mean weddings in general. Right. You're not I believe people. I believe people. Should get married. I would disagree with you. I uh, I was working as a waitress, so I needed all the money in the world. But I look back at my and we paid for our own wedding. I look back at my wedding day as one of the best days of my life, and no cost. No value. I can't place a value on would it. Would have been different at the courthouse, though. Before you yes. clap, before you clap, let yes. me hear. Wait, it would have been different if you guys were at the courthouse it saying, I don't care. We, we don't need any it, fanfare. It would have. We love each other. It I don't care if we get have. married in a phone booth. It would have because my grandma and grandpa were there. I guess my grandma and grandma could have attended the courthouse. But I, I the details mm. of planning the wedding with my husband, that whole nine months of planning, I know it's stressful for a lot of people. I found it very therapeutic. I found it very exciting. And, I loved every moment of it. And it's a, every little girl's dream. We think about getting married from the time we're a you little girl. You got married girl. twice. I did get married twice. I had a wedding, and then the second time we went to the courthouse, it was the same dude. Shut up over there, whoever's <laughs> laughing. Um, but I will say that if I got married again, if I was marrying a man that had never been married before, I wouldn't. I don't care about a wedding now. But if he had never been married and he wanted a wedding, I would do it. Mm. All right. Yeah. There you go, Ebony Steele. Yeah. Third time's a charm. <laughs> I just want to get. I just want to see your TikTok face. Wait, Sam, what's That's that? A, little shots fired. I just want to see your TikTok face. Don't get money with your buddy, Sam. I love her. Sarah Jessica Parker says we're moving on. <laughs> that producers are trying to write another Sex in the City movie without Samantha, either killing her off or recasting her. Now that actress Kim Cattrall wants out. So last night, Bravo's Andy Cohen decided to throw his wig in the ring for the role. Check out his audition. This is about the. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> what, 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 why? Why? One little <laughs> and I'm a hooker with no taste. We can't get away with the same stuff we used to get away with. Uh huh. <laughs> Meaning. <laughs> oh, Jesus, again with the. <laughs> Did we really say <laughs> that many yes, times? Yes. <laughs> I love it. Now, if they are going to recast Samantha, we do have one suggestion that we'd like to throw in the ring in the mix. Are we ready for this? You look good. You look good. That's yeah. you, Jeff Schroeder. Oh, man. Jeff Schroeder didn't even recognize himself. That's I you. I didn't. Well, I look fabulous. Do you want to play Sam? <laughs> sure. Why don't you play Sam? I can't play you Sam. Be, I don't what? got a sexy bone in my body. There's no way I could play Sam. That's what she wants everybody to say. Yes, you are sexy, Sam. No, I, I, I could not play Sam. I you wish are. I was Sam. You think oh. I could be a better Sam than you? I do. No way. Dude, show me a little, like, boop, boop. Do it. 
<laughs> you can never, you can never ask Jeff Schroeder to do anything. He's very rebellious. I almost have to like switch it and say, Re don't do it. Yes. Don't put your leg. Reverse psychology sexy. works a lot better with me. All right. Is there anything that doesn't go with flaming hot Cheetos? Well, pop culture guru Tori Showman has a new Cheeto mashup coming in hot. I'm a Miranda. <laughs> Drilled ice cream in Fountain Valley, California, just started selling flaming hot Cheeto ice cream, and it's already an internet sensation. Now, the spicy snack is blended with vanilla ice cream, served in a waffle cone, and garnished with, what do you think, more flaming Cheetos. So, DBL Nation, would you try it? Lucky for you, they always give me this stuff to try. So, let's take a look. It looks like this. <laughs> Oh, ha -ha. it's good. It's good. <laughs> Let's Frito lay this one down. Let's see what they think. Yeah, Tori. You want to try it? Not with, it? Not with the flu epidemic going around. Yeah, like no that. thanks. We've got kids. I, all right, I'll just stand here weirdly. I, I, I will cream. tell you guys, when I taught middle good? school, yeah. my, that's all my sixth and seventh graders ate. They ate. Flaming. Hot, flaming hot Cheetos every second of the day. They'd be all over my classroom. They didn't eat chips. They didn't it was eat popcorn. All over their hands too. Flaming hot Cheetos. That's so you're how saying that I'm cool? Yeah, there all you right. go. Ready okay. for seventh grade? Right on. You seem to like it. I don't. I like food. Erica Cobb, what do you have coming up next? <laughs> A lot. Well, Helen Mirren back on air with us to talk her new movie Winchester. It's out tomorrow. And coming up and chatting with the stars, the Oscar winner reveals why she loves playing real life roles. Need some advice on what you should never say to your spouse? That's coming up. Oh, Hi, hey guys. we're back. It's we're one back. One of those yeah. days. One, one of those days. We're glitchy, glitchy, Mick. Glitcherstein. Hey. Is it Monday? No, it's Thursday. Weird Almost day. Almost Friday. Yes. Um, and you know, listen, we had a breaking story that uh, we wanted to talk to Raquel about uh, that's happening right now. Raquel, what's going on with the Amazon headquarters? Right now, gay advocates are trying to oppose nine cities on their list. So if you remember, we told you earlier about how there's a big, like, kind of hoopla to get 20 cities for their second headquarters. Right. Well, now nine of these cities do not have laws that protect oh. gay rights or against discrimination. Wow. So some of the cities include Indianapolis, where okay. uh, Mike Pence is from, and there have been some anti-hate laws that have not gone wow. through. So oh, they're wow. trying to avoid those cities. Well, now, if you were Bezos, just let me ask you both. You would not be in one of these cities. Well, you, you will would, not uh, put yourself in this position to lose some of your audience. Am I right? Or your, or your, of your consumers? Or you're going to put your. I mean, let's talk plain business, okay? If you have employees that are not protected in their workplace. Um, you're going to lose a large section of people in that area that are probably very well suited for your business and valuable and valuable out of that area. So why would you not choose to go someplace where everybody in, in that state is protected? So you're guaranteed to get the most valuable employees and also um, if, in that state. And if you're part really of quickly, yeah, go I was going to name the list too so that you have it. It's Indianapolis, Austin, Dallas, Nashville, Atlanta, Columbus, Ohio, Miami. Raleigh, North Carolina, well, D.C., uh, suburbs in D.C. of North Three, Virginia. Two. Interesting. Well, you you're watching Daily Blast Live, your unique mix of live news, trending topics, and entertainment. It's time for Chatting with the Stars. Take it away, Sam Shocker. Thank you so much, Erica. Earlier this week, we got to speak with Dame Helen Mirren, yes, and Jason Clark, and you might remember what they had to say. Hello, babies. <laughs> now let me. Ah, this is the two blondes. Yeah, these are the two crazy blondes. <laughs> two crazy. Yes, we've yeah. heard about you. They've heard about us. Tori and I have been texting <laughs> about that moment since it happened. We also got to talk to them about their new movie, Winchester. Take a look. I feel their presence. Do you believe in ghosts, Dr. Price? 
we lock them away. The trailer for this movie gave us the creeps in the best way. Dame Helen, how is Sarah Winchester different from all the other characters you played? Well, I have played quite a few characters who were, did exist in history, and I love that because I always say truth is stranger than fiction. You know, whenever you play a real character, a you've got really interesting research to, to you know, to look look up. It's, it's just wonderful. You you become like a sort of a, de a detective, and and often read through the lines if you like. You know, think well. That person says that, that person says that. What I wonder is the truth about that. And certainly Sarah Winchester is one of those characters because she absolutely lived. There are photographs of her. We know she built the house. And yet this person is shrouded in mystery. Jason, what's the most challenging thing about wrapping your head around this doctor's motives? Making the addiction real. Making, <laughs> making the, the, you know, because you, you follow my character as he goes through his understanding of the spirit world and ghosts. And his relationship to Sarah, so you know, with the addiction, with, with with the you know, with the laudanum, and what I was seeing, and and progressing that journey there, so it was real, but discovered, you know, intelligent, and also not in absolute denial, or you know, it was it was, it was a complicated mix to find that, you know, <clears> and then eventually I find my way to Helen and to a belief in the fact that that these things exist. We've run out of time. Oh, I'm, I'm so, so mad. mad. <laughs> Thank you so much to Dame Helen Mirren and Jason Clark. <laughs> Winchester opens in theaters everywhere this Friday, February 2nd. Thank Fantastic you so much. talking Thank to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We love them. We are live. Digital producer Raquel Vinueva with news at this moment. Well, right now, the Mars rover is really proving it's a millennial. Snapping so many selfies last month, NASA stitched together this newly released self-portrait. Earthlings, pay attention. This rover called Curiosity knows how to show off its best angles while capturing some stunning Martian scenery in the background. Curiosity has been roaming around the red planet since 2012, sending back scientific images and always keeping it hashtag no filter. Back to you. Ah. <laughs> Do we need multiple pictures of Mars? It seems like this. It's the same one picture. <laughs> <laughs> just, we got it. There's nothing up there. Yeah. All right, Daily Blast Live covers <laughs> stories, and we love doing it too, about people doing great things in their communities. Erica, tell them what's ahead on DBL. Well, next, we're all about girl power. Cops rewriting the rules about what it means to be a woman on the police force. It's our extra shot interview. And we want to give a DBL shout out to Milwaukee transit bus driver Michelle Mixon. Michelle came to the rescue of a little girl whose mother had a seizure. Michelle called for help and comforted the scared little girl. Her kindness made a world of difference. Way to go, Michelle. Gang, um, so listen, we're always trying to keep you guys updated right, on breaking guys, news minutes, that's happening. It's what digital breaks are for, and uh, there's a lot of parents out there who've heard about the school shooting in LA, so we just wanted to turn to Kelly and get the latest on that shooting. Kelly, what's going on? Yeah, so we do know that two people were shot, and there is a student that is in custody, a 15-year-old student. Two 15-year-old students were shot, a boy and a girl. Um, the boy was shot in the head, and he is in critical condition. Oh it sounds like the girl, it sounds like she was just shot in the wrist, and so it does sound like she's going to be, yeah. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like in LA they usually have weapons checks every day at a lot of these schools. And you guys might know yeah. about that. Yeah. I actually didn't. So it's unclear right now if they did do a weapons check this missed. morning. Um, it's unclear well, if a like fight led to this. On it, it does seem like student on student, some kind of altercation. Um, now it says here Cell Castro Middle School. Was this high school or middle school? It looks like uh, seven, eight, nine. Sorry. What, I'm yeah. thinking. Oh, what are you saying? So, Rita? listen. Sorry, we're uh, getting more information as tragic, it's coming. Uh, in. We'll, we'll let you guys know. And of course, any shooting in a school is a tragedy. It was student on student. It was not a mass shooting that. situation. Okay. So. Uh, we just want to keep you up informed okay. on all the latest Thank you, on there. Rocco. So, uh, getting back to uh, all of your comments. Uh, and by the way, someone asked, did Tori eat the Cheetos? Oh, she ate the Cheetos. I, I'm some... I can tell you, standing this <laughs> close to so Tori, she ate the Cheetos. I was, and now I'm taking I'm so it all in. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm like in the Sahara in my mouth. No, it must be burning still. But then mixed with the ice cream, we're at lactose intolerant. Oh, it's going to be a good day. day. Yeah, we're, we're, right. We're, we're awesome. Yes. Um, uh, oh, Katrina would buy Tori's album. Well, at least one of you would. That's good. <laughs> Can't laugh because it's the good. breath. That's good. No, don't be self-conscious about that. Okay, good. Uh, Stephen Ostro, Al, 100%. Keep the money and screw the wedding day. And sorry, don't, but don't say for education, real estate, or Bitcoin, something that will increase in value. Most people spend more time planning a birthday party for nine months on a wedding than planning a life. Well, that 
I don't disagree with you there. And listen, that's Is a, there no romance left in this no, world, people? There is not. I would like to say something. I sold what bridal gowns back? for discounts, and it was they were ripped and they were stained, and I did a great job selling them for two years trying to be an actress or a host. And a lot of women, it was one of the most important shopping days of their life. I gave them self-esteem, vindication. Yeah, because guess what? Every tradition and religion has rites of passages. Mm -hmm. The bat mitzvah, the christening, the um, literally, but in, we in the wedding is another one. Young women, that it is an exciting day, but not everything about your life is on that day. So. No, it's the most important day. <laughs> I'm sorry, my friend. Welcome back to Daily Blast Live, daytime's only live show with the top trending and breaking news happening now. Time for the extra shot. It's the story that made you say, give me another round, since it was so uplifting. And today, it's the women of Austin, Texas Police Department. These badass officers are redefining what it means to be a woman in blue. When you think of calendars, this comes to mind. Move over, boys. Meet the warrior women of the Austin Police Department. Strong and feminine, they want to change the way people think of female cops by breaking stereotypes of women officers on the job, true warriors in an active shooting or fighting for someone's life. Nationwide, women make up only about 12% of the police force. The cops in Austin, Texas want you to know they are brave, beautiful, real life superheroes. How about it? We have Detective Angel Polanski joining us now, and you are featured in the calendar for the month of March. Now I have to ask you, Detective, why was it so important for you to take part in this calendar? You know, believe it or not, there's still females in this world who do not think they can do the job. Hmm. So that was my main goal was so we can reach women so they'll, you know, want to do the job and, and think that they can physically do it as well. Wow, you're definitely teaching and showing us. So tell us about the Wonder Woman inspiration behind this entire project. So Susanna Sanchez was the creator, if you'll say, and she liked the Wonder Woman film and said that, you know, she was a superhero who broke boundaries and had the ideal uh, courage, amount of strength and compassion. And that's what she compares female police officers to. You talk about the strength and compassion, and I have to tell you on a personal note, I had a situation where a female officer responded to help me, and her level of empathy is something that I'll never forget. But you say that a lot mm -hmm. of people are surprised when they encounter female police officers. How do you hope the calendar will change that? You know, people have a stereotype still, men, women, everybody, about what female police officers look like or what they should act like. And, you know, we're a very diverse, department or, or world mm. and you know our calendar is indicative of that just by the diversity that we show but women have a lot of compassion well i have to tell you you have inspired a little badassery in me <laughs> thank you detective for your service sincerely we appreciate you and to purchase the calendar go to the austin police association's website or facebook page and the proceeds go to austin cops for charities thank you we are live. Digital producer Kelly Schubert with news at this moment. Hey guys, I've got news just in. E has just announced that it's finished investigating Ryan Seacrest over those allegations of misconduct. The network says it found insufficient evidence to support the claims a former stylist made against Ryan back in November. E says it's committed to providing a safe work environment where everyone is treated with respect and dignity. Back to you. Hmm. Hey, that's nice follow up and follow through on well, E. I was going to say good for them because there's a lot of men right now whose names are, 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 are out there. Yeah, in the media. Right. And they have done their investigation and they came up with an answer. And hey, there you have it. Yep. Yep. Excellent. I think that's fair. Hey guys, guess what? Whoa. Pop culture guru Tori Shulman, she's got a new trending story coming in hot. I sure do, Jen. Coming in hot is the Cheetos still in my mouth. Things you should also never ask your significant other. Now, podcast Open Mic Rejects started the trending hashtag stupid questions for your spouse. And the responses were hilarious with questions like, when is our anniversary? And wouldn't it be great if my mother moved in with us? Here are some questions we think you should never ask your spouse. Take a look. How many partners did you have in college? Because trust me, you don't want to know. The number's already too high if it's more than you. How much they weigh? Because no one has a really good answer. What's wrong with you? Oh, is it that time of the month? 
I would kill you. <laughs> DBL Nation, what questions do you think we shouldn't ask our better halves? Back to you guys. Mm. I ask everything personally. I was going to say, do you if hold If I back? can't know, we shouldn't be married. I, I feel you on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just say. I have no comment. I literally have no life experience to offer. <laughs> Jen, that is so not true. But Guess what? We do have, uh, we love your viral videos. <laughs> Thanks, son. Watch Bradley, the baby kangaroo's first hug. Bradley was ordinated and now carried around in a pillowcase. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that substitutes as a pouch. We're right back. We're back after this. I Look can't even little. talk anymore. He's oh, so cute. my God. Um, the spouses thing or the Joey? Whatever, yes. So, <laughs> um, I also had in that package, never ask, how many times has your spouse gone to McDonald's? Because you don't want to know the answer, and it makes you crave McDonald's. Well, that's so true. So, it's a, it's a lose-lose. Uh, uh, yeah. That's interesting. Well, I, no, I he's was, just recently engaged, if you guys are just tuning and in. And I was saying that there's nothing I wouldn't want to ask my partner, that's because I would want to know everything. But one thing is, do you want to order Grubhub at 11 o'clock? That's one thing I should not Because you'll get ask, a yes? Because then I'll get a yes, and then I'll eat Grubhub <laughs> at 11 o'clock at night. So that is one question you should never ask your partner. That is funny. Wanna... Again, if I say also, what I meant is if I say, how much do you weigh? A girl doesn't necessarily want to answer. A man also either wants to weigh more or less. Yeah. It just doesn't go well. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not, where is that going to go? A happy no. occasion? Never. Let's... But um, have you ever killed a man? I, that's a question I think you should ask your partner. Are you an axe murderer? Right. Question mark. Right. Do you have other families in other parts of the country? Are you a agent or spy of some kind? That's is important. The, are you on the FBI's most wanted list? And what's funny is I watch a lot of Dateline. People don't ask that, and they are. People We've are like, seen that Dateline. We've all seen that Dateline. We've all seen that Dateline. Now, just a little follow-up I did on the Natalie Wood story, guys. Yes. Um, Robert Wagner is now being investigated as a more serious person of interest in the Natalie Wood death in 1981. Guys, there will be a 48 hours coming on February 3rd about it all. On TV land, because that's how right, old this I'll case is. Yes. See you soon, guys. That's cool. And then after that, we're going to dig up Rona Barrett and cover all the other mysteries of the late 70s and early 80s, just for you at DBL. Uh, some of you are all, uh, all right, guys, 10 seconds. Here we go. Uh, commenting a lot. Uh, uh, John Venturini or Uber Eats because they deliver McDonald's. Yeah, Uber Eats is just as bad. Welcome back to DBL. <laughs> now some funny moments from the show. <laughs> You're telling me, Al Fashion Jackson, that you didn't arm up, ready to go to the Super Bowl this weekend. You know you got some no new do. hot gear. <laughs> The arms are really long on that last one. Okay. Yeah, I'll put it back that one more. One more. <laughs> it's National Texas. Oh no, Tori. I have a bad feeling. Yep. <laughs> Jen. Oh, oh God. Mm, oh, no. My God. I was on a horse. Hey, everybody should know how to line dance. I'm just saying. There we you go. Know. I'm dancing in front of the camera right now as we go out. Here we the go. The stories never stop, and we know neither. We're live on oh, YouTube and Facebook. <laughs> Keep the conversation going. Let's hear everybody. Nice job, Jen. Now that's yeah. how you line dance. I joked, I joked about uh, crimes, but this Natalie Wood case is blowing my mind. What evidence could they have found 40 years later to nab? I will tell you. I, you have it? I have the evidence! Rona Barrett. I know, we're sort of joking about it, but again, this, well, this was a, a tragic death. Tragic, and she was found in her nightgown in the water, Very and if you young. didn't know, Natalie Wood was deathly afraid of water. Why she, she was on a boat in Catalina Island? It was her family's boat and she was always, always wearing either a life vest, she was always very scared and remember she did a movie in the water and she almost didn't because she was so afraid of water. Now, the evidence they have is um, testimony from one Christopher Walken who's never spoken publicly about it and sounds that the captain heard that night and also fibers that they weren't advanced enough to use back in, the day. Back in 1981. Back then you didn't have those types of things. So right. 
obviously something has come forward. They were all raucously drunk that night. Um, the There's captain said he heard point. a scream and she had bruises well, all, yeah, all over her body. Say, the autopsy, the bruises. The bruises like, so said that they quote looked no. like someone was assaulting her. Yeah. So it's hard to imagine she fell off a boat and abused herself no. while being in the water. Now, if you guys are so young and you don't know Robert Wagner, he's a famous actor. He was also in um, Austin Powers. If you guys don't know, is right. number one. Number two. He was on number a two. Show number two. Called, uh, uh, what was the show? Alex. What the was Wagner the show? show? No, it was uh, the two spouses, so and so. Um, oh gosh. A long time ago, he long was on a television show. With He's a big 70s icon. Yeah, and kind of a um, hottie. Like had a, a famous wife. Married to a famous wife yeah. uh, in the later and she, years. Natalie Wood heart to heart. Thank there you. There you go. A thank you. Heart oh, to heart. we're back. It was heart, heart to heart. heart. There you go. Yeah. Cool. And he was now number two in Wayne's World, which, I mean, sorry, Austin Powers, which brought him back. Right. And um, if he's, you know, it's interesting. There's no statute of limitations yeah. on murder. Oh, interesting. Good to know. Welcome to Daily Blast Live. It's Thursday, February 1st, and we've got everything you need to know in trending news and entertainment, and it's all live right now. Plus, Sarah Jessica Parker talks the next Sex in the City movie minus Kim Cattrall. DBL Nation, how would you like to her character? And we're counting down to the Super Bowl parties. You may regret reaching for that extra handful of chips. And I'm not talking about the calories. Happening right now, an Oprah book emergency. Why she's deleting parts of her new self-help book. It's Daily Blast Live. We're the only live show in daytime talking breaking news, entertainment, and trending topics that you're talking about right now, no matter where you're watching. Let's get this kicked off with the top five trending topics you need to know with our girl, Sam Shocker. Take it away, girlfriend. Thank you so much, Erica Cobb. We are live. I'm here with Media Maven, Ebony Steele, everyone's favorite big brother, Jeff Schroeder. Comedian Al Jackson, clearly Woo! dressed as Al Fashion Jackson oh, today. Yes. Oh, yeah. Make me feel good. Oh, yeah. And I'm Sam Shocker. <laughs> What's up, Sam? Hey, we are a trending news and entertainment show that is live and covers what is happening right now. Take a look at our entire DBL team. That's to our stage manager, also known as Stu Magoo, movie reviews, waving to you. <laughs> and they are very busy covering news the moment it breaks. We are counting down. Are we ready, DBL? Yes. I'm How ready. many days to Super Bowl 52? Um, three. Uh, three <laughs> weeks. Maybe we that should have rehearsed well. this. Yeah. Three. I got it. I got it. Right. We are live. Sunday. Clearly. When is Sunday, guys? This is going to Wow. Okay. Canada and world. we got breaking news. Digital producer Raquel Villanueva has all the details. Thank God. Save us, girl. <laughs> Counting is really our specialty over here. So Justin Timberlake just held his live press conference answering all of the Super, half Super Bowl halftime questions we've been dying to know. And here's what he had to say about some special musical guests. To be honest, I had a ton of grand ideas about special guests, you know, from NSYNC to, to Jay, to uh, Chris Stapleton, to Janet. And, um, but this year, I'm just excited. My band is uh, Tennessee Kids. The, I feel like those, they're my special guests. He didn't exactly shut down those other ideas, and he's coy about what songs he'll perform, but says there's a good chance we'll hear Can't Stop the Feeling and hinted at a Prince tribute. But we'll have to wait till Sunday to find out. Back to you. Ooh. Thank you, Raquel. Any, any Justin songs that you guys, he, he feel like he has to do? I want to hear Suit and Tie. I, like I was about to say, I love when Suit and yeah. Tie slows down. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm I want to hear Cry Me a River and Brit Brit to come out. Isn't that a little sad and in Super Bowl? And Brit Brit to come out. Would that not be amazing? Britney Spears to show up. Do you know up? Cry yeah. Me a River was supposed to be about her and their breakup, and I think that would be really juicy. Uh, I know that you're a huge Justin Timberlake fan. What are you <laughs> hoping to see? You I, are. I am. I, I'm, I would hope to see in sync out there, but I think the, the more important, I think the bigger choice is you got to bring back Jan yeah, I agree. Jeff. Got to yes, bring her back. Jeff. I agree. Make it right. Make I it right. Love yep. It. Uh, more on the Super Bowl. It's only three days until kickoff at U.S. Bank we Stadium that in Minneapolis, <laughs> where they're expecting expecting more than a million vis visitors, including our very own Al Jackson. Woo! Yeah. Reporter Carla Holt. Hey, Carla, from our sister station, joins us from their very chilly, snowy backyard. Carla, hi. Hi there. Well, hey. hello there, everyone. Yeah, it's about five degrees here right now, wow. and that's actually warmer than what it will be on Sunday. If you can imagine, it's going to be a whopping three degrees mm. on Sunday at kickoff. So it's believed to be the coldest Super Bowl ever in the history of the Super Bowl. So we're pretty proud of that here in the bold north, as you can imagine, right? You that's know, right. three degrees. There you Fortunately, go. it's an indoor stadium. <laughs> We yeah. just saw Justin Timberlake right now heating things up. Did you see anybody around town for the halftime yes. show? You see Janet Jackson or any of the NSYNC boys? 
men camping out. We are hoping to see them. I know boys, men, whatever they are at this <laughs> point. But at any rate, we would love to see them. There are a lot of people searching for that. I think they're camping out wherever they can spot them. I was just at the Mall of America earlier today, and certainly there are tons of people. I did not see a notable celebrity, but we are hearing Justin Timberlake did hit a really fancy steak restaurant over the weekend. It's called Manny's. Mm -hmm. It's the best restaurant in Minneapolis, we believe. I often go there with my husband for my anniversary dinner, so it's really good. And then we're also hearing that J-Lo, Jennifer Lopez, who will be performing for a concert on Saturday night, mm -hmm. that she's staying in a cute little boutique hotel in a suburb of Minneapolis, mm -hmm. kind of the hip up and coming hotel. So yeah, there are some celebrity sightings that have started and we expect more and more, which is unique here, right? We don't get a lot of people who want to come here in the winter, but they are mistaken. I mean, Prince loved this state for a reason. Yeah. He thought it was great. <laughs> and so the, they'll want to stay too. And Carla, we got our very own Al Jackson coming there too. So watch out, oh. Minneapolis. Okay. Carla, <laughs> we will watch out. Put we'll some gloves on. Down. Put some gloves on. For I know, us. I know. I do have to recommend to Al and other visitors wear lots of layers. Do not forget your gloves, but I'm a hardy native Minnesotan, so I can handle this. Right. But visitors, you shouldn't be doing this. You should have the gloves on. Right, thank, <laughs> you. thank you, Carla. Notice. Al, you're going to need some gloves. All right. Two pairs. Like dumb what and you, dumber. What is yeah. the worst part of when you're cold? I think it's when you start talking and your mouth kind of goes like this. Yeah. You saw that during um, New Year's Eve. Everybody at uh, Times Square, they could barely talk right, on right, air. Their mouth was so, yeah. Oh, gosh, Are you excited crazy. or what? I can can't you believe? Leave, I feel like going? it's not real yet. Have so you ever when been I to the up. Super Bowl? Uh, never been. So I was I was in a city when the Super Bowl was happening, but I didn't go to the game. My first game. So wow. I'm excited. What are you most looking forward to? Uh, honestly, man, my uh, my buddy Mark that I'm going with, uh, you know, it's he's a high school football coach. He was a high school football and college star, uh, and uh, he works with. Uh, uh, disabled children now Ooh. and so this is like we've been waiting for this for 40 years so this is like the you know from high school to here it's going to be like a coming of age thing so Ow. Well, we're going to live the experience through you yes. oh yeah can't wait. everybody stay tuned because al will be yeah, he'll be doing instagram stories about it of course on monday he will give us all the juicy feedback that's we have. right yes. shots on deck mark <laughs> oh, Super Bowl fashion is coming in hot. Tori Shulman is showing us adorable and also affordable looks to rock for the big game. Yeah, want to dress like a supermodel for the Super Bowl? Me neither. But here are some looks that supermodels have worn to support their teams and how you can look that good for Sunday. First up, get creative with your team colors. Number one, Patriots fan Giselle. She ditches the traditional jersey and sports the Patriots red and blue in plaid. Looks like Sam. You can get the look at H&M for $7 to 20 bucks. Now Giselle also posted this snap on Instagram showing off her Patriot leggings. Get that cute look at NFLshop.com for $35. And guys, if you order online today, you will have them by Saturday. Finally, pair your outfit with spirited socks like Olivia Colpo. Find both Patriot and Eagles designs at JCPenney today for $17.95. I will be sporting my famous elastic sweatpants and a loss of dignity for how much I'm eating. Back to you guys. <laughs> yep. Oh, no, you don't know. That's a good thing. She should eat. You should overeat on the Super Bowl. Absolutely. Thanksgiving and Christmas Day. All right. Done and yeah, done. I'm with you. Get I'll in wear there, them Tori. too with you, Tori. Yes, yes. I will. Uh, Switching gears here, new accusations of sexual misconduct today. Digital producer Kelly Schubert has the news at this moment. Yeah, that's right. Supermodel Kate Upton is slamming the co-founder of Fashion Line Guests with sexual harassment allegations. She writes that Paul Marciano, quote, shouldn't be allowed to use his power in the industry to sexually and emotionally harass women, including the hashtag MeToo. It's unclear if she's saying she was personally a victim when she was the face of Guests, but listen to what she told TMZ. I'm excited to tell my whole story, but a walk to the car is not going to cover it. What do you think should be done to keep people in positions of power from abusing that power? I think a lot of people around them know about it and need to speak out. Marciano tells TMZ he's done nothing wrong and Upton can take him to court. Back to you. Wow. wow. That's I'm just saying, I was looking at that. There's a way quicker way to get out of LAX. <laughs> is that what you got out of that whole, that that out of that whole story? Yeah. Yeah. She out. So she didn't say anything personally happened to her, but she knows of stories. We don't that know. Happened we're going to learn it was just so details. so ambiguous. I wonder if we should be reporting on it because she didn't even say it was me. She didn't say who it was. She did hashtag I don't know if me here. too. And you but know what? can put a hashtag on a, the Marciano a brothers have discovered her and also uh, Anna Nicole, Nicole Smith yeah. and yeah. Claudia Schiffer. So perhaps even Gigi Hadid. Perhaps we're going to hear more from other people. Perhaps we're putting somebody's reputation on the word on the line for somebody. The word perhaps and maybe and maybe we'll find out. 
now, like, I don't know if somebody's name should be out there until we have, at, like, at least allegations down on paper and, like, criminal. And at least he can respond. Right. right. Okay, and it'll hurt, it'll hurt guests as well. Right. People yeah, won't buy like, guests anymore. People will buy the line. This is somebody's, this is somebody's name because and their of reputation. That. We already did the story with Ryan Seacrest, and it turned out they, at least he investigated, said they found nothing, but we already put his name out there. What would, what would Kate Upton have to, and this is just me being polemic, what would she have to gain by tweeting this? I don't know. People have grudges. I don't know. I'm not saying she's right, incorrect. I'm just saying Let's we don't process. know. So why are we putting this guy's name out on national mm, TV? Yeah, and it's like sometimes when people get the last word, that's what people remember and what right. sticks. Right. Yeah. That's a good point. Daily Blast Live covers trending topics and entertainment live like that. That just happened. Mm -hmm. Erica, what's coming up? Well, Sarah Jessica Parker dishes on the future of Sex in the City. It seems a third movie might happen, but how will they get rid of Kim Cattrall's character, Samantha? We'll check about that and got a Netflix account or know someone who does what you need to know about an email scam going around right now and you the viewer are our fifth host next we share your comments live on air about a story getting a lot of buzz online a man sends an epic breakup letter to his gym Hope you guys weren't dizzy just then. Well, that's a, that's a lot of shit around. So uh, we're here with uh, Bertie's going to give us a little Olympic mini pod here. Ooh. What's trending with the Olympics? What's going on, Bertie? Yeah, two stories coming out for the Olympics. The first is something that happens every Olympic Games, and I just want to talk about it. Is it the Olympic Village hookups? It is. I'm sure it is. What happens when you bring thousands of people together in peak physical shape? <laughs> yeah, that are good looking. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, wow. they're, they're going to hook up. So every Olympics. Terrible. Tons of condoms are delivered to the Olympic Village just to practice safe sex for the athletes. And this year, for the Winter Games, it is a record number of condoms delivered. Oh. 110,000. Wow! Which is 10,000 more than the last Winter Olympics. 10,000 more? Wow. Yeah, and, and they say there's only a little over 2,000 athletes. So they say they don't expect all of them to be used. I'd hope not, because that yeah. would be, I think that's exhausting. It, it came they out have to, to compete. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're gonna tire themselves out. I'm just saying. Um, oh god, we need the luge, people. We need the right. luge. Save your energy. Yeah. Comes out to about 27 condoms and athletes, so that, that's a lot. It's a two-week event. That's Come a lot. Right. Yeah. You know they're good looking. Yeah. Hey, listen. But but let's let's also remember the <laughs> Summer Olympic Games have way more athletes, and so that still holds a record. Right. I think 400. And way more shorts. 450,000 condoms. There for is more shorts, and there's more shorts. More shorts, more. more tans. Yeah, the, yeah, that's the true. volleyball yes. players. Sand, a lot of sand. Yeah, a lot of sand. Yeah. Volleyball. Yeah. A lot of sand. Mm -hmm. So, so then another story uh, trending from CNN. From sexy to sick. Ooh. Yeah, sexy to sick. No. Related, possibly. Um, so there is a concern for the flu outbreaks in North and South Korea right now. It's a worldwide thing. We've been reporting it here at Daily Best Live forever. And it's just, uh, there is concern because North Korea is having a severe number of cases. And then there's also the avian flu, which they're oh, worried sure. about, bird, bird, bird flu. flu. And that's coming That's coming from North Korea. And the Olympic Games are about 50 miles south of the border. Are so. you saying North Korea is delivering the bird flu? I've, no, not but, say, but I've but never will, said that. But I will all. say this, North Korea doesn't have a lot of infrastructure and ways to placate a huge uh, right. uprising. Just they don't have the them. internet. They don't have. They they basically are growing in farmers. So not a good spot to have 50 miles from where the entire Olympics is. They don't have the infrastructure to take it down. But, to be honest, they don't have the hospitals. Yeah. They just don't. They so look like they do. So my question is: Will the flu affect the condom use? Bye. Welcome back to Daily Blast Live, the only live show that covers trending stories live, no matter where you're watching. And we are listening to you, so it's time for Fifth Host, where your comments are part of the discussion. Take it away, Sam Shocker. Thank you so much, Erica. We'll get to Fifth Host in a minute, but first, digital producer Raquel Vinueva with news at this moment. Raquel. That's right, Sam. Police across the country are warning Netflix users not to open a fake email. We first told you about this scam right here on DBL. Now a new email has hackers trying to get to your credit card info by saying there's a problem with your Netflix membership. But the warning is the same. Do not open or click on the email and report it back to Netflix. Back to you. Thank you so much, Raquel. One Reddit user, we're going to move right on to fifth host. One Reddit user tried to cancel his Planet Fitness membership mm. over the phone, but to no avail, as we all know. So he wrote the most epic breakup letter ever. It starts with, it is with deep regret, regret and a heavy heart that I write this letter. I still love you, but more like a friend at this point. You just keep being you. And while we will both grow, it will be into our own new lives without 
each other. <laughs> that was deep. That was pretty that deep. Was pretty deep. That we asked you, our fifth host, why it is it, why is it so hard to cancel gym memberships? I can't wait to hear what Jeff has to say. It's yeah. a good story. First, let's start with you have to say. YouTube user Beach Brady One writes, "I had a membership at Bally's in Tampa and wanted to cancel, but the contract said you could only cancel if there wasn't a Bally's in a 50 mile radius. What? I had to change my address to a family member's in Michigan." <laughs> That's amazing. I'm that's sorry you went through that, but that's amazing. Ridiculous. That's ridiculous. I went through a similar problem with LA Fitness. I'll put them out there. I was moving to Denver for this job. So I went to the gym and I go, hey, listen, I'm going to, I got to cancel my membership. I'm leaving. And they go, well, you just started your new cycle two days in. I'm like, all right, so I guess I'll keep it. When do I have to cancel? And they're like, on the 25th. I moved, I called them on the 25th. I'm like, hey, I gotta cancel my membership. They're like, sorry, you could only do that in person. I go, what no do you way. mean? They're like, yeah, you can only do that in person. I go, I go, I live in Denver, I'm not flying in. They're like, well, maybe there's a gym around you. I'm like, there's no LA Fitness in, in Denver. Anyways, how do I get rid of this membership? Write an email, so I write an email, so I write it in. This will be processed in five to seven days. Past my next start date, and they got three months out of me from, I just wanted to cancel the day I was there. Shame on you. Shame on you, LA Fitness. Shame. You stole money from my Shame. child. <laughs> Janet Vernon says, shame. Janet Vernon says, it took me six months to cancel my late husband's gym membership. We had to send him his death certificate twice. Uh, that is sad that and is not okay. That is unacceptable. I'm so sorry, Janet, you went through that. No, I totally agree with you. Like, seriously, I don't know why they put uh, those clauses like that in there. It happened to me one time in college, and they were drafted out, and I'm thinking, okay, it was 12 months I signed up for, and it's the automatic renewal thing, and, like, I was overdrawn for, like, eight years. Yeah. I think I still have a gym membership somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy Given says, sometimes you just got to threaten them with a lawsuit. That'll get you out of the contract. I like that. Yeah. I like that Hit a lot. In the pocket. That's, that's the only yep. thing that works. Get a letter with some legal jargon on top. Yeah, you can find one online. Send it away. Or find right. somebody that can do it. You oh. know, like uh... Tori Zapp. <coughs> <laughs> we want to thank you, the viewer, for being our fifth host. Be sure to join us uh, before and during the show on Facebook and YouTube Live to share your comments. We love hearing what you have to say. Absolutely, we do all day. Daily Blast Live is all about news as it's happening. Erica, tell us what's next. Well, you know, comedian Amy Schumer is known for her opinions, and she's giving it on the Aziz Ansari scandal. Plus, who doesn't love puppies? It's the annual Puppy Bowl, and you know comedian Al Jackson will sound off on this. And it's National Texas Day, and we're testing your Lone Star knowledge in our trivia showdown. Get your DBL app ready and play along with us to win a cool prize. Do you know what an isthmus is? I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Stay tuned, because we're going to take a third grade quiz that apparently is stumping everyone. Hey, guys, we're back. And uh, boy, you started a whole uh, LA Fitness backlash. Katrina says, oh, hell no, LA Fitness. And Eric Yance on Facebook says, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Jordan Pete says, boo, LA Fitness. I mean, so it's, it's they're, really they're straight stealing money from you. Yeah. And, it, and it's legal. It's I mean, don't get me started because I get off on a rant, but it's like the airlines, hey, we're just going to charge you $35 for this. Why doesn't somebody stop this? This is three, they stole money from me. The airlines steal money well, from me. Nobody, also, yeah, yeah nobody cares. Yeah. Well, like they just keep, people just keep raking one in cash. The, one of the news magazines interviewed the Planet Fitness owner and they make the majority of their profit from the people who are, have wow. memberships but don't work out. Shame right. on they, they basically make money off of the people and then I you just can't don't cancel. Go. I mean, that's, it's then. it's completely idiotic and ridiculous. Hey, is this the? I called the main office. Can I cancel my membership? Yeah. No, you're gonna have to go in person. Yeah. You know they have a computer that can just go yeah, delete. Yeah, easily, yeah. easily. You know, and they know they're gonna steal money from. It's not. It's not anything else but stealing for the next two months. And then my letter won't be processed for five to seven days. After which your is billing stealing. cycle. They after, have it. Yeah. Right, they have it. And they well, know it's bad bad it. service. I mean, would you ever consider going back to LA Fitness now? No, no. So that, but I know. think a lot of gyms are like that. No, they are. Oh, yeah. Especially the ones that are the big chains. Like, I'm moving to another city. You can't, I don't want to be with your gym anymore. Yeah. Well, there was, yeah. I want to I wanna do yep. somebody, somebody else. I yeah. left LA, called Planet Fitness, called my oh, gym. Oh, you were with Planet Fitness. Yep, and I said, uh, I, I'd like to quit. I live in Denver. And they said, well, you have to send us a registered letter. I'm like, I can give you my membership number on the phone right now. We need a registered letter. Okay. As I got to like look at that. A letter that right, is go. uh, certified. Uh, certified. A certified letter to ensure that it made it to them. Okay. Um, and then just simply say what I said over the phone, which is I moved to Denver. And I still don't know if the charge has been taken off yet. Well, they, they make you jump through hoops on yeah. purpose. Yeah, on purpose. So, you so you don't get follow up yeah, with hoping it. That and, then, it just... and then it recycles itself. But I did it, LA Fitness. I got that letter certified, so. 
Watch out. Or Watch someone, out. Told me, Watch also, someone told me. I can't me run very fast. When I said that, stop going. Uh, I told someone else that story, like when I was leaving, they said, cancel your credit card that you have under oh, them. No. Which is a big problem, which is a big problem because you might have other things on that. Yeah. But cancel your that's credit card. And that's you have that. They can't get any more money from you. Your credit no, that's if you. You just get a different card. Yeah, you, you don't close the card. That affects, affects right. you. No, right. close so your that's an answer, right. too. But you have to even. You have to go through all those problems just for that. That's crazy. Let us know what Welcome back to Daily Blast Live, the only live daytime show that covers trending stories live as they happen. It's time for Al Sounds Off when comedian Al Jackson goes off on the wildest stories he can find with a little help from Jeff Schroeder. Take it away, guys. Thank you, Erica Cobb. It's time for everyone's favorite segment, Al Sounds Off, with everyone's yes. favorite comedian, uh, Mr. Al Jackson. Okay. How are you? Feeling good, buddy. Feeling good. Let's get into it. All right, Al, with the big game around the corner, there's so much to look forward to. The yep. commercials, the food, and of course, the puppy bowl. Ugh. Now, Jeff, I just love this. It's so yeah, cute. Knows, this yeah. is the puppy bowl, or as Sam calls it, the Super Bowl. Uh, <laughs> and she still doesn't know what teams are playing. Uh, <laughs> I like this. You know, everybody's like, this game's going to be off the hook. This game's going to be off the leash. Now, <laughs> Jeff, I'll tell you this. You know, I'm a gambling man. Uh, there's a lot of props being uh, laid out. What's your favorite bet this year? Oh, the coin toss, man. Uh, well, I would bet that there's going to be a flea flicker. Uh, <laughs> And the saddest thing about both these teams, they both won as many games as the Browns did this year. Let's go to the next one. All right, Al, this week, Sophia, a humanoid robot, spoke about the future of artificial intelligence in South Korea. You got to watch. I am always working to improve myself and learn about different culture, right? That's why I'm first class. Now, Jeff, she's just sitting there. I mean, she's in Korea. You would think she'd have more soul. <laughs> If I, want one, if I want a woman to stare blankly and blink at me, I'll just go on a Tinder date. This is <laughs> very rare, but... Uh, uh, and bad news, fellas, she doesn't have a clear history button. Uh, <laughs> Think about it. Uh, let's go let's move next. on, let's move on. <laughs> All right, Al, these headphones are guaranteed to keep your music lit. Watch this, Al. All right, let's check it out. Now, Jeff, I just love these headphones. I think they're so cool. You know, it's just like, it, it, dude, and here's my joke for you that I thought was so funny. It's like, you can listen to Queen while looking like a princess. You, the, you get, Jeff, you the, the, the group Queen. What do you mean? Do you, you don't get my joke? The, Queen is a group and then you can look like a. What? Jeff, are you not listening? I was listening to your half hour special on Comedy Central, Al. Oh! Check it out. Pop culture guru Tori Shulman has a new Cheeto mashup coming in hot. Yeah, drilled ice cream in Fountain Valley, California just started selling flaming hot Cheeto ice cream and it's already an internet sensation. The spicy snack is blended with vanilla ice cream, served in a waffle cone, and of course, what else, garnished with more flaming Cheetos. So DBL Nation, would you try it? Lucky for you, they always have Tori try it. So let's take a look. I have two here. Would anyone want to try it with me? Maybe me. Leo! Here we go. Oh. On one, two, three. Oh. She, she told no. It's terrible. Back to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Sex in the City 3 without Samantha. Coming up in top trending news, Sarah, Sarah Jessica Parker hints at the future of the franchise. And open your DBL app or go to dailyblastlive.com right now because we're testing your Texas trivia. You could win a cool prize. Our DBL trivia showdown is right after the break. Promotional consideration is brought to you. Leo said, and then we gave it to Raquel Villanueva, and she said, quote, I'm confused. By the taste? By the whole thing. I don't know. I can see how the milk it's and the not, Cheetos would be a not bad thing. Yeah, it's, it's not too said. bad. It's a balance of salty, sweet, and heat. It's a great trifecta. You are, that's right. Balance. It's a nice balance. You're yeah. You guys should try it at home. Maybe just take you some vanilla ice cream okay, and then you. crumple up a bag of Cheetos and you're good to go. Yeah. Um, you want to try it, Jeff? You know, RMP uh, no, is Daily Glass Live located in Denver. Yeah. I hear them talking about Denver a lot, so I was curious since I live there. Yes, RMP, we are here in Denver, blasting out to the world from Denver, Colorado. So, yeah, we're here. We're here with you, buddy. And it's cold today, so we're feeling that as well. Uh, let's go over here and see what else is going on. What's your thought on it? I don't mind it. Yeah, it's, but salty and sweet is always a good combo, right? Are you feeling any heat? No. 
Really? But the ice cream cools it down. And it was all over my lips, too. Even, even after that? Now, even now, there's no burn? We've been eating habaneros every day yeah, that's in true. here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my, my taste buds are burnt off. It's true. And Actually, that, I kind of like it. You all need to stop sharing food. That's no, what I'm going to say. That's why I didn't eat it there. They gave me one that was fresh. That's why I ate it. I can't be getting sick. No. No, it's not fun. And, it, and you know what? It's not like... I don't mean to get too much inside information here, but the thing that's running... The train that's running through DBL... It's taking people out for like the week. Yeah, it's and they said it's down. like it's not just a normal flu. It's like heavy duty business. And I mean, people are passing away. And I mean, that's, I know it's it's not crazy. It's that crazy. We're it's just crazy from a flu. Are, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's yeah, sad. Very sad. But listen, uh, we want you to stay safe. So don't eat ice cream off of someone else's cone until this get a, whole get a fresh one. Flu thing is is gone by, guys. But uh, let me see if you guys have any more comments here. Oh, 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 mm. oh. Bob Tavares on YouTube, Cheeto ice cream, yuck. Well, I don't disagree. Don't mock it till you try it. You're watching Daily Blast Live. Guys, it's National Texas Day. So to celebrate, we're testing your knowledge of the Lone Star State. Why are you talking like that? Because it's National Texas Day. All right, here we go with our DBL trivia showdown. Today's showdown is between Ebony and Sam. Little and lady. Little lady. Thank you, Howdy. And all of you, the viewers. So guys, go to dailyblastlive.com and tap vote now. Questions will appear on your device. Ladies, are you ready? Yes. Make sure you wait till the very end, okay? Here we go. Little the lady. Little lady. The winning viewer will win a DBL hashtag genius t-shirt. Question number one. Jerry Jones is the owner of what sports team? Dallas Cowboys, Texas Rangers, Dallas Mavericks. Sam. Cowboys. Oh, little lady. That's correct. Dallas Cowboys. Next, question number two. This Texas town is home to Chip and Joanna Gaines. San Antonio, Waco, or Fort Worth? Sam. Waco. Okay, she's taking it real seriously. She's really here. I love Chippy Joanna. I, <laughs> I love Chippy Joanna. That's right. All right, now question number three. Coach Taylor leads the Dillon Panthers in this high school drama. Is it Friday Night Lights, Varsity Blues, or Necessary Necessary oh, Roughness? That's, That's okay. okay. Necessary Roughness. Eh. Varsity Blues. Eh. Oh. Friday <laughs> Night Lights. Guys, come on. Oh. Kyle Chandler? Okay, Never right. seen it. Question number four. Which celebrity is not, remember I'm saying not from Texas, Beyonce, Matthew McConaughey, or Miley Cyrus? Sam? Miley Cyrus, she's from Nashville. That's it, correct. That is correct. All right, now let's find out which uh, viewer one. Vanna okay. White, could you help us out here? Uh-huh. In three, two, viewer? 6029. Yay! And get it right, this is Vanna Black. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we want to let you guys know, did you, you're from Texas? I lived in Texas for a while. My hand's just not as long as Sam. Oh, that makes that's, sense. That's, yeah. <laughs> she was giving I me every time. I do a very lanky arm. And I was scared true. too, girl. That was true. Now, is there a, is there a favorite Texas movie or uh, genre, anything you guys love? I love visiting Austin, Texas. Oh. Austin. So our DBL Nation, let us know where in Texas you guys are from. We want to love that Lone Star State. And who won, Tori? All right, what's that? Who won? You know you won. Okay. The answer is Little Lady. Little Lady. Congratulations. So little let's all lady. line dance our way out of here. Here we go. We're gonna step in front of the podium. Oh, we are. Okay. Oh, Come on, Sam. Be part to. of the You're team. You're the winner. You should want to. You ready? Right, yeah. And. <laughs> Oh gosh. This is going great. This is nothing like okay. the electric slide or what we do. Doing it. <laughs> Can we wobble with it? I don't know what this is. <laughs> I'm terrible. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. More trending stories in our next half hour of Daily Blast Live. <laughs> Will the behind the scenes drama ever stop at NBC News? The latest on Megyn Kelly and what she is and isn't covering. And Oprah's bold statement in the Me Too movement, who she just erased from her self-help book. Stay with us. Uh, we'd like to make a disclaimer on digital that we are well aware that not all Texans are cowboys. <laughs> Actually, it's quite and also a that they're not living in the 1880s. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So that is our formal I, I retraction yes. for what you just witnessed. We yes. are fully aware that it is a very cosmopolitan state and not everybody wears cowboy, wears cowboy hats. hats and does line dancing. Right. <laughs> so, anyway, yes. so Al, uh, you're packed up. You, you're taking off Friday night for the Super Bowl. I am. Um, what is the, uh, now you're going with a buddy, what is the one thing you're looking forward to the most about being in Minnesota for the Super Bowl? You know what? The, I'm looking forward to kickoff. Yeah? That's going to be, you know, because kickoff, all the cameras are going to be going off. Right. And it's a once-in-a-lifetime moment kind of thing. You know, if you go to Super Bowl once, you're lucky. Right. So I just think 
Uh, the the halftime show? The halftime show is going to be yeah. good. I'm a, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm a 5. five with JT? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would five. say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, But the songs that he, um, that he's, uh, that he's, that I really like, I really like, which yeah. most of them I can kind of take yeah. and, But the surprise aspect of it, right. there's it, always some surprise. you got to be there cool. for it. So, it's kind of cool. You know, just have, having fun with my, my buddy, my other friend, uh, Greg Coleman, uh, who's a comedian. His father uh, was the first black punter in the NFL, and he's now the... Uh, special teams coach for the Vikings. Oh, right on. So hang out with my buddy Greg. That's he just cool. shot hard in the cities. Uh, well done uh, for you on uh, you, Greg Coleman. So Great, Greg um, Coleman. yeah. Well, oh, that's cool. Now, are there any comedy yeah, events yeah. happening in there surrounding the Super Bowl? That you I'm know? sure they are. I'm not going to get on stage. Right. It's my weekend to not do anything. Well, but, uh, consume it. food. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah oh, I, I've always, uh, you know, I've been to Minnesota a bunch of times, uh, and I'm excited to go back. So it'll be fun. Well, good. Lots man. of pictures. Just Lots of pictures. Minnesota should watch out for this one. Al Jackson. Yeah, it's gonna be a problem. Anything can happen. Let's do it for real. <laughs> Bye, guys. Can I come? It's Daily Blast Live, the only live show that covers breaking news and top trending stories that are happening right now. We are live in the DBL studios where our team is busy tracking trending topics and breaking news. Let's go to digital producer Kelly Schubert with news at this moment. Yeah, Erica, I've got news just in. E! has just announced that it has finished investigating Ryan Seacrest over those allegations of misconduct. The network says it found insufficient evidence to support the claims a former stylist made against Ryan back in November. E! says it's committed to providing a safe work environment where everyone is treated with respect and dignity. Erica, back to you. Thank you, Kelly. Let's go to Ebony Steele, Jeff Schroeder, Al Jackson, and Sam Shocker for all the top trending stories. Thank you so much, Erica. Also trending right now, Megan Kelly. According to Raider Online, Megan has been banned from covering the royal wedding. Sources say they only want their best correspondence reporting on Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's big day. They worry Ouch. that Meghan Kelly yeah. might say something controversial and inappropriate. So. If they're going like, to send Savannah Guthrie and Hoda Copy. They will be there to helm NBC's wedding coverage. Yeah, I just, you know, I don't think it's a big deal. I think we all have family members that have been banned from weddings. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just like, I think she's one of, and, and for the same reason, might say something inappropriate. So I think NBC's kind of covering their, you know, covering their bases before something goes down. And they know how conservative the, the monarchy is. They know how, sure. how much they value these royal weddings, everyone in England. So they don't want to And create, a lot of people here too as well. Yeah, they yeah. don't want to ruffle any feathers. Well, I just look at how much they're paying Megyn Kelly and it's like, wow, are they really getting their money's worth when they can't use her for some of these huge events like they're that? point you're wondering I, if they have regret exactly I almost feel like you got to cut your losses at some point you know what I mean if she's not representing your network well you got to cut her off and she's not doing her right. job and she, they don't have trust in her Jeff let me ask you this if you hired somebody for 26 million dollars and you sent them somewhere and you felt like they couldn't cover a wedding without doing something to embarrass your network I mean have you just made a huge error in terms of where you spent your money you I just lost my job yeah <laughs> <laughs> and let us know DBL Nation weigh in and uh, moving on new fallout today for music mogul Russell Simmons Simmons. Oprah is removing parts of her book, The Wisdom of Sundays, that include him after sexual assault allegations against him have surfaced. Shark Tank star Damon John also scrubbed Simmons from his advice book, Rise and Grind. What a waste. And when I say what a waste, like if you just look at the empire and everything is still alleged as far as Rus Russell Simmons is concerned, but just all that work and time and effort he's been pu uh, he's put in all these years to be recognized by the Oprah's, by other people, and then for it just to be erased and scratched away, you know, for some th some indiscretion allegedly that could have happened. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, if you're sexually harassing people, it doesn't matter how much work you put in for the good. You're also doing. Bad. I agree and, with and this you. What, no, yeah, I Beyond what harassment, waste. though, these are these, these are, are these are stronger claims. These, are, these aren't improprieties. These are, these are rape accusations. These are rape allegations. Rape yes. accusations, uh, sexual misconduct allegations, and you know Russell Simmons has been very open that he had a very checkered past. Although he is denying all of these allegations, mm -hmm. his uh, ex Kamarly Simmons is 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 defending him. But would you? I think guys, she did that for their daughters. Okay. I, would maybe. you guys ever consider removing someone? Do you think this is specifically a, a business decision, or do you think that because Oprah is really behind this Me Too? movement do you think she's looking at Russell in a whole different way well I think to maintain credibility she has to because if she, even leaves if she him, believes him even if she believes him because if, if he's in her book 
Anything that's in that book, she's going to get a literally half a million emails saying, well, how can I believe what you're saying when I just read a chapter uh, by somebody that's been accused of rape? Especially so, when it's a self-help book. And evidently he doesn't believe it, well in himself because he dropped down from his company himself, you know, he I did. guess to try to save the assets, so hey. But he also has a board of directors, and I'm sure they voted him out. Yeah. So uh, moving on to Sarah Jessica Parker. She says that the producers are trying to write another Sex in the City movie, but you guys, without Samantha, they're going to either kill her off or recast her. Now the actress Kim Cattrall wants out. So last night, Bravo's Andy Cohen decided to throw his wig in the ring for the role. Check out this audition. This is about the <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> what, 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 why? Why? One little <laughs> and I'm a hooker with no taste. We can't get away with the same stuff we used to get away with. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Meaning <laughs> Oh, Jesus, again with the <laughs> Did we really say that many yes, times? Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, Andy Cohen, we have somebody that's going to give you a run for your money to play Samantha. Are you ready for our casting choice for Samantha? Let's see. Let go. <laughs> do you recognize, do you recognize that beautiful broad? That's Jeff Schroeder. Ooh. Listen, I, I love being the butt of everyone's joke, but <laughs> why would you cast me in this role? You know what I mean? It doesn't even make sense. At least have a guy in there and let me do it. You know what I mean? Well, Sam has the same name. Yeah, I mean, that, that, right, makes, can, that I, makes way more sense. Maybe me. Oh, Sex that's in the city, city, maybe right me. I, think okay. I, don't want you to I, I, still, I still think I could pull it off, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Let's not get ridiculous. Oh, look it. If I were her, maybe I mean, me. Yeah. Okay. I can't do wow. Wow, that was pretty good. <laughs> is that embarrassing? Yeah, I feel like my face is bright red, is it? No. Okay, look good. good. Okay. Look a little, right. little blush. Mm -hmm. uh, and now an update to a story we brought you yesterday. This is quite possibly my favorite story of the day. A woman denied from flying out of Newark, New Jersey, because she had her emotional support peacock. That peacock's name is Dexter. Now Dexter is on a cross-country road trip to L.A. Go, Dexter! Starting from Dexter's home in Brooklyn, New York, he traveled to Pennsylvania, where he stopped at Trainer's Midway Diner. Why not? He was hungry. He had a little bite. <laughs> he had a little bite to eat. <laughs> then Dexter visited grandparents' house in Indianapolis. Yeah, grandmama. Mm -hmm. And then in St. Louis, Dexter played pinball. Yep, he's a gamer. And finally, Dexter stopped in the city of Miami. Oklahoma, where he visited the Coleman Theater because word on the street is he loves him a good little afternoon matinee. I love your little ad libs in there. Thank you really you. you love this story. I love this peacock. I how, do feel bad for the peacock. How do you transport a peacock? I don't apparently, know. Just in the back apparently seat. you drive. I know, but, but what? Like in an SUV? Like oh, like is he in a cage or something? How like do you let the That's a back? long trip. Perhaps, though, this, right this is her, uh, you know, the peacock's owner this is her best friend but I just don't think that peacocks understand you know as much as like a dog would mm -hmm. or a cat I don't think you know I took my four cats and a dog all the way to Denver from LA it was hell how was it how was it even <laughs> legal to, to to have an ostrich as a or an it's ostrich. not an ostrich it's, it's a, uh, peacock. a peacock whatever you might as well throw an ostrich in there too I mean it's ridiculous either way you support you know ostrich saying? yeah get real it does it does have an Instagram following so perhaps you know would you, do that? you want me to follow it is that why you put your hand like that up to me. Yeah, I follow Dexter. You want to follow Dexter? <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> As if flying didn't violate our personal space enough already, Virgin Atlantic now has a love suite, folks, on some of its flights. That's right. It's a love seat so you can cuddle, watch movies, or catch up on work with a colleague, I guess. Is anybody here into this? Absolutely I not. I am. You are? This yes. is gross to me. Is it gross to you? I hate it. Go Why ahead, it though. Tell me why you like it. I, well, first of all, I like to cuddle, and if I'm going on a long, nice flight, then why not sit? You're going to lift the armrest up anyway sometimes, and if you can just have it. Have you seen what it looks like? No. Yeah, that's what I want to sit next to. First, no, the peacock on my left, and then you cuddling with someone on your right well, while well, I'm trying to, to sit well, there. Well, I'm not cuddling with you. I'm just saying. And that's what, what I said. I, like. I said, on my right, you're cuddling, why and on my left on, is peacock. Is that getting on your nerves if someone has peacock? Yes, everything gets on my nerves. PDA I don't want to see anything. Just Atlantic. face forward and don't talk. Well, you yeah. have nothing to do what's going yeah. on, on on row 7 A and B. Well, oh, set first class, honey. Okay. Okay. Just made it. Just made it. Yeah. All right. This project we just wrote has a new turning story coming in hot. Can we just put Jeff on? Under the plane. <laughs> no one's gonna bother I'm a support there. person. <laughs> BuzzFeed just posted a third grade social studies quiz and it's trending way hot right now. I don't know, it seems kind of easy. What do you think? Check it out. Click on the largest ocean. Pacific. Correct. Mm. It's the Pacific. The Atlantic. Mm. 
Does that red circle mean it's wrong? Who wrote the Bill of Rights? Thomas Jefferson. Oh! Tori's gonna be so mad. Madison, correct. Which arrow is pointing to an isthmus? I don't even know what an isthmus is. Isthmus be on here somewhere. Isthmus. I got that wrong. Riverbank. Yeah, what's up? What kind of map is this? Political. See? I don't see anything that makes this political. Political? What in this picture is a capital resource? The road. <laughs> yeah. Roads. Cow. I got three out of seven, but still got it. I got six out of seven. I'm a star student. See, it says it right there. There's no way that I got a two out of seven. It says I'm a sleepyhead. Is there any way we can print out Sam so she can uh, post it all over the studio and make sure we all know she got a six out of seven? I got a six out of seven, Jen. Six out of seven. Star so did student. Leo behind you. Star student, star host, star Leo. Yeah, yeah. Leo. Thank you, guys. Those, that last question's total BS. What do you mean there's a difference between a physical map and a political a map? A political map would be red, red and, and blue. blue. It's that's all gray. It, it can be, but no, that's the that way you got that wrong. Out. That that's wrong. I if you play at home, right. give that's yourself a. Called. When you're in I'm, social studies, you go through all the different maps, and that one was called the political why, map. How is it political? So because why don't you see that during the election? They, they just put up I, a big gray map. I was, and then they light up the red and blue. Don't get me fired up first with peacock stories, then airplane stories. Now this BS question, I'm out. Now it's time for our top video. <laughs> Erica Cobb, you've got all the videos making DBL Nation smile. And thank goodness for that, because y'all need a timeout, okay? <laughs> the Royals are walking in a winter wonderland. Check out Will and Kate in Norway today, giving us major frozen vibes. Prince William even got a little workout in while wearing a suit. John Bon Jovi is giving back. This week in Philadelphia, he flew a new or opened a new facility to help the homeless get back on their feet with counseling, coffee, and a place to do laundry and take showers. And this Philadelphia area school bus driver got the surprise of his life. Gary. Wow, that is quite a gift. Coming up on Daily Blast Live, Helen Mirren back on air with us to help talk about her new movie, Winchester. It's out tomorrow. And coming up and chatting with the stars, the Oscar winner reveals why she loves playing real life roles. Need some advice on what you should never say to your spouse? That's coming up. Hey guys. hey guys, Tori and Jason here with our own Raquel, who's got some breaking, breaking news. Breaking news, guys, very excited right now. Yeah, this tweet just came in from Mitt Romney himself. He has an announcement to say he's going to make an announcement about <laughs> running for Utah Senate race. February 15th, and if you read between the lines, this pretty much Read says, the tweet. Read the read tweet. The tweet. Read the tweet. Read the tweet. It says, looking forward to <laughs> making an announcement on February 15th about the Utah Senate race. Great job, Mitt Romney. Com. Good job, wow. Raquel! Mitt sounded so enthused in this tweet <laughs> about running for the Senate. That's so right. So this is exciting. So what do you guys think? Are you happy to see him kind of back in the in the politics game or what? I mean, let's, uh, this could be telling. I will say this, in a very polarizing world, climate and political wise, he is for some reason an in the middle kind of guy. And we haven't now. seen one now. He used to be pretty right wing, but now that we've seen really right wing, Mitt Romney is somewhat of, he's a Mormon from Utah that has gone against Trump in many ways because of family values. He is really right in the middle. He is very much against Trump, but he's also against Democrats. So he might pull a lot of people yeah, he pull because he's people. pulling people who don't want to be polarized like Jeff who's like let's find a medium ground medium ground could not be more Mitt Romney I'm just saying if you guys are interested in knowing where he falls on the spectrum he is dead set in the middle and he could be great for this right now and we're talking about the through the looking glass 2018 spectrum he's someone the what am I doing what am I doing running. I'm running for Senate President. he good. hasn't <laughs> officially said it yet Though, so but he said he's going to say. And I just want to say, we are committed to giving you the latest breaking news because we had a really good story about Olive Garden <laughs> announcing pasta nachos for the Super Bowl, and it got dumped <laughs> for the Mitt Romney he's announcement. He's so upset. I'm not I'm upset. I'm just up. hungry. Do you feel betrayed? I'm, I'm hungry. He's hungry. All right, so Olive Garden, Yay! guys, is unveiling <laughs> lasagna nachos for the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. That just is nachos. Time but made out of Olive Garden pasta, which to me is a... It's a win. It's a win-win. It's a win-win. You know, I'm not cheering felt... for the Patriots or the Vikings. I'm cheering for the Olive Garden nachos I felt like now. I never had enough calories for right. the Super in one, in, one right. thing. in one thing. And also, I'd like to say, because in Olive Garden, what are you? Your family. family. <laughs> Your family. And I would feed my family this. I would, but this then I... This is like hot carb-on-carb carb action, oh my God. and I'm all about it. Is it? 
<laughs> Did you just sign Signing off, off. with a salute? <laughs> Back to you, Tori. <laughs> well, I'll sign off as well. Good updates on Mitt Romney and the pasta nachos. <laughs> I hope you try it tomorrow. <laughs> You're watching Daily Blast Live, your unique mix of live news, trending topics, and entertainment. It's time for Chatting with the Stars. Take it away, Sam Shocker. Thank you so much, Erica. Earlier this week, we got to speak with Dame Helen Mirren, yes, and Jason Clark, and you might remember what they had to say. Hello, Cuba. babies. <laughs> now, let me... Ah, this is the two blondes. Yeah, these are the two crazy blondes. <laughs> two crazy. Yes, we've yeah. heard about you. They've heard about us. Tori and I have been texting about that moment since it happened. We also got to talk to them about their new movie, Winchester. Take a look. I feel their presence. Do you believe in ghosts, Dr. Price? We lock them away. The trailer for this movie gave us the creeps in the best way. Dame Helen, how is Sarah Winchester different from all the other characters you played? Well, I have played quite a few characters who were, did exist in history, and I love that because I always say truth is stranger than fiction. You know, whenever you play a real character, a you've got really interesting research to, to you know, to look look up. It's, it's just wonderful. You you become like a sort of a, de a detective, and and often read through the lines if you like. You know, think well. That person says that, that person says that. What I wonder is the truth about that. And certainly Sarah Winchester is one of those characters because she absolutely lived. There are photographs of her. That we know she built the house. Beyond. And yet this person is shrouded in mystery. Jason, what's the most challenging thing about wrapping your head around this doctor's motives? Making the addiction real. Making, <laughs> making the, the, you know, because you, you follow my character as he goes through his understanding of the spirit world and ghosts. And his relationship to Sarah, so you know, with the addiction, with, with with the you know, the laudanum, and what I was seeing, and and progressing that journey there, so it was real, but discovered, you know, intelligent, and also not in absolute denial, or you know, it was, mm. it was, it was a complicated mix to find that, you know, mm. and then eventually I find my way to Helen and to a belief in the fact that that these things exist. We've run out of time. Oh, I'm, I'm so, so mad. mad. <laughs> Thank you so much to Dame Helen Mirren and Jason Clark. <laughs> Winchester opens in theaters everywhere this Friday, February 2nd. Thank Fantastic you so much. talking Thank to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are live. Let's get right to digital producer Raquel Vinueva with news at this moment. Raquel. Well, well, right now, the Mars rover is really proving it's a millennial. Snapping so many selfies last month, NASA stitched together this newly released self-portrait. Now, Earthlings, pay attention. This rover, called the Curiosity, knows how to show off its best angles while capturing some stunning Martian scenery in the background. Curiosity has been roaming around the red planet since 2012, sending back scientific images and always keeping it hashtag no filter. Back to you. Thank you, Raquel. Uh -huh. It's like a BMX track. Cool. It, it, it does. It's like, it's, yeah, it's a millennial. That means the first rover did all the work and it's reaping the benefits. <laughs> wow. Daily Blast Live covers. Sorry, uh, millennials. Look at that. Would you let me do this? Sorry. We love covering stories about people doing great things in their communities. And Erica Cobb has all the details. Tell us what's ahead, lady. Al, you got to be careful. They outnumber us in this room, OK? Yeah. Uh, next, we're all about girl power. Cops rewriting the rules about what it means to be a woman on the police force. It's our extra shot interview. And we want to give DBL shout out to Milwaukee transit bus driver Michelle Mixon. Michelle came to the rescue of a little girl whose mother had a seizure. Michelle called for help and comforted the scared little girl. Her kindness made a world of difference. Way to go, Michelle. Guys. Hey guys, so we just let's we just finished eating the pasta nachos. No, I I'm wish. I wish. <laughs> I wish we had. Someone send him some food. No, no, no. I'm He's fine. Angry. I'm fine, really. Uh, uh, but we have it's a big day for breaking news, and uh, this is a story that's kind of been trending a lot today. Raquel with Amy Schumer. Why don't you tell us a little bit about? So yeah, we've been hearing kind of a lot of sound bites from this podcast this morning. She spoke to Katie Couric, revealing a lot of things. One that she was raped when she revealed this in her book, but now she said it in person. And she talked about sexual assault, including her friend, comedian Aziz Ansari, saying she kind of felt in the middle about what happened and saying that it's up to women to teach men 
what's appropriate because we've kind of been in a complicit culture where we haven't spoken out and said anything, but it's time to let men know what's right, what's wrong, what they're comfortable with. Here's the problem with that, and I love Amy Schumer. I love her as a stand-up. I followed in her footsteps. Um, I will say this. Amy Schumer's stand-up is vulgar as all heck. I love that it is. I think it's fantastic. But that's where it gets what Raquel was saying a little messy because you're confused as to where the boundary is when someone's that comfortable talking like that would it be the same in the bedroom? I'm not saying it has to be. I'm just saying no, see, it's confusing. Okay, tell me. Well, I only disagree with that because I feel like what she was saying here was uh, she's friends with Aziz, but she's not going to take the stance of, oh, he's a good guy. She feels for the women and understands what it must, and puts herself in the shoes of what it must have been like to be in her position. I think what she was saying, my opinion was, you know, we're all kind of victims of this lax culture. Like, the men are victims of it and the women are victims of it. And until it's both... It's our responsibility. It's your responsibility. I think she was saying, if you need to leave, you should leave. Right. So in that sense, she's saying, we all have to communicate better. You have to teach the men in the sense of, you have to say, I'm not comfortable. Yeah, you need it's, to draw boundaries, is what she said. And saying. I don't care if you're as vulgar as Amy Schumer right. in one hour, that and might then be a two different hours boundary. later into the date... You say enough is enough. It's true. You should be comfortable enough to say it, and he should respect that, and that's that's where all of this ends, is clear, open communication. It's a good point, because what she's saying is advocating for women and standing up for Aziz. If you give clear boundaries, you've respected yourself as a woman, but you've respected the man, too, because yeah, you've given him enough dignity him exactly. to say, hey, I stop here. Now, if he crosses that line, you're in a whole and, other topic. Yeah, and that's really, and that's how you sort that's out the Aziz and Saris, right? I think, from the real predators. That's really where that line that we Think it's talking about teaching, about teaching women to teach boundaries is phenomenal. We're, we've all been stuck in this culture for too long with mixed messages. So, Welcome back to Daily Blast Live, daytime's only live show with the top trending and breaking news happening now. Time for the extra shot. It's the story that made you say, give me another round, since it was so uplifting. And today, it's the women of Austin, Texas Police Department. These badass officers are redefining what it means to be a woman in blue. When you think of calendars, this comes to mind. <laughs> Move over, boys. Meet the warrior women of the Austin Police Department. Strong and feminine, they want to change the way people think of female cops. By breaking stereotypes of women officers on the job, true warriors in an active shooting or fighting for someone's life. Nationwide, women make up only about 12% of the police force. The cops in Austin, Texas, want you to know they are brave, beautiful, real-life superheroes. How about it? We have Detective Angel Polanski joining us now, and you are featured in the calendar for the month of March. Now, I have to ask you, Detective, why was it so important for you to take part in this calendar? You know, believe it or not, there's still females in this world who do not think they can do the job. Hmm. So that was my main goal was so we can reach women so they'll, you know, want to do the job and, and think that they can physically do it as well. Wow, you're definitely teaching and showing us. So tell us about the Wonder Woman inspiration behind this entire project. So Susanna Sanchez was the creator, if you'll say, and she liked the Wonder Woman film and said that, you know, she was a superhero who broke boundaries and had the ideal uh, courage, amount of strength and compassion. And that's what she compares female police officers to. You talk about the strength and compassion, and I have to tell you on a personal note, I had a situation where a female officer responded to help me, and her level of empathy is something that I'll never forget. But you say that a lot mm -hmm. of people are surprised when they encounter female police officers. How do you hope the calendar will change that? You know, people have a stereotype still, men, women, everybody, about what female police officers look like or what they should act like. And, you know, we're a very diverse, department or, or world mm. and you know our calendar is indicative of that just by the diversity that we show but women have a lot of compassion well i have to tell you you have inspired a little badassery in me <laughs> thank you detective for your service sincerely we appreciate you and to purchase the calendar go to the austin police association's website or facebook page and the proceeds go to austin cops for charities thank you well, we are live. Let's go to digital producer Brett Forrest. You've got some news at this moment. I do. An update now to an important story I've been tracking for you all week. 
My producer is telling me that Elon Musk's $500 flamethrower has sold out. Bad news for me. Musk's boring company only made 20,000 of them, so let's do the math. In less than five days, he's made roughly $10 million. Thankfully, Musk, Musk tweeted out each flamethrower would ship with a complimentary fire extinguisher. And I definitely question the legality of this, but apparently any flamethrower with a flame shorter than 10 feet is A-OK. -okay, and that's good to know for my next business. Back to you guys. I mean, we, we have to get a, take a test to get our permit and our driver's license. Shouldn't there be some sort of assessment in order to get, get a, a flamethrower? Flame you would think so. And which one you write. But I would just like to take this moment to apologize to my husband. Apparently, you won't be getting this for Valentine's Day because they're all sold out. Sold out, Anthony. Anyways, pop culture guru Tori Shulman has a new trending story coming in hotter than a flamethrower. I kind of want one of those things. Bad idea, bad idea. Coming in hot, things you should never ask your significant other. So podcast Open Mike Reject started this trending hashtag, hashtag stupid questions for your spouse. The responses were hilarious with questions like, when is our anniversary? And wouldn't it be great if my mother moved in with us? So here are some questions we think you should never ask. Take a look. How many partners did you have in college? Because trust me, you don't want to know. The number's already too high if it's more than you. How much they weigh? Because no one has a really good answer. What's wrong with you? Oh, is it that time of the month? You'd be dead, Schroeder, dead in my book. DBL Nation, what questions do you think we shouldn't ask our better halves? Back to you, Jen. Whoa, Schroeder. Mm. Talk about <laughs> what happened to all the money. Watch out. Well, we, we, love your <laughs> we love your viral videos. Watch Bradley, the baby kangaroo's very first hop. Bradley was orphaned and now carried around in a pillowcase that substitutes as a, po as a pouch. Oh, we're back after this. Woo. Eat your heart out. It's so cute. <laughs> Promotional consideration is brought to you by Attention. Uh, real quick, Ab. Yes. I want to know where you got your shoes and your dress. Okay, from. I got my dress from, believe it or not, I do a lot of shopping online, and it's a website called, you know, I'm all about sharing the, uh, the word, Venus.com. Kelly. Jen. It may have been, it, it, it was not very expensive. Well, that's great. Maybe 49, 59 bucks. And these shoes are oldies. Sure, oldies, but goodies. And these came from Wildfair. And bam, pass me that right there, Jay. Sure. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. if you like these, then you're gonna love these. And I got these from them. They're very kind of, they're similar. They Jeez. have the little studs in the back. Those so they're good. Someone. So like if you're out somewhere and if someone's mm. like bothering, you could be like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Take Just, someone out. Your body stays the same. You're still glamorous and you know, you're keeping a Jeep. Yeah. It seems awfully yeah. dangerous. Get you some. Very dangerous to me. All right, Jen, uh, there's a trending fitness store I want oh, to yeah. talk to you about. Let's uh, do it. That Kelly Gregory just found. Uh, Yes. So we know that standing desks have gotten really popular recently, uh -huh. um, and Fortune kind of wanted to look into really how beneficial that is for you, because they say standing is better than sitting all day. But what they found is that you really only burn 54 calories compared to sitting for six yep. hours of yep. standing. So six hours of standing <laughs> only equals 54 calories. Yeah, so what's an easy standing so desk? So what, what, the standing desks are not about, I'm standing, I burn calories. Right. This is not a, this is not a, a transfer of uh, a, 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 Calorie a side by side comparison. Right. It's the idea that, let's say, uh, you're, and you're gonna be more active in your day. So because you're standing, you're reaching more, right. you're doing more, you're more active. And your oh, let me just I'm gonna put my trash can over here. I'm going to go here, right. right? You end up doing more with your day physically than you would being sedentary. By the right. way, like if I'm here and I got to reach for something, what do I do? I go, yeah. Right, right. So your body's more poised, more right? poised to go. You're, you're going to move more. You're going to be Ten have seconds. more movement, and you're going to be like, oh, i got to run to the bathroom. I'm going to get more water. I'm going to do more things. Five it's a, it's going to create more health in your life by standing. Cool. It's not the actual standing. No, that's great, though. And now for a funny moment from earlier in the show. It's National Texas Day. <laughs> Are they gonna take my car away? Wow. That, was, that was a little rough. That the stories rough. never stop. We clearly don't either. We're live on YouTube and Facebook. Keep that conversation going. <laughs> Uh, 
Guys, uh, Kelly, what do we have breaking in the third hour here? Anything to talk to me? You know, there's not much going on. The big news today is Justin Timberlake. Everyone's talking about him. They're getting pumped for the Super Bowl. People want to know, is Janet going to come out? I think if he was smart, he's going to bring Janet out. I think it would be great. Right? Yes. And, like, people have been hating on Justin. And that I, would I, save I, a lot. Right? I think that would save a lot of face. I do, too. And I, I think Justin's a good guy. I think he's maybe also, messed I don't, up Also, I think he's a really creative, smart guy. And it's such a good idea. How can you turn it down? Right? I mean, unless he's got some other idea that he thinks can top that. Nothing can top him give bringing the Janet people out. What, give the people what yeah. they want, right? And it sounds like NSYNC's not going to happen. But Janet... Well, that is what Joey Fatone said. Yeah, I'm hoping the Janet things happen. I'll be so excited. I don't know why he wouldn't do that. Well, let us know, guys. I mean, is that important to you? Do you honestly feel like you would like to see Janet Jackson show up with uh, Justin Timberlake, or could you take it or leave it? These are the questions. Let us know. Send us your uh, DBL take, and we'll talk about it in the next break. So let's go over here. And are we doing a Super Bowl yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Michael, Michael's our producer uh, here at DBL. So what do we have coming up? What did you guys prep for the third show? Um, well, we're going back to Minneapolis, uh, downtown Minneapolis, to talk with the CARE 11 reporter there from right, our sister right. station. Apparently they have a warming house set up downtown to keep people warm since last I heard it was like five degrees there. It's going to be crazy cold all weekend long in Minnesota, which is great for the Minnesotans who right. like, are used to it and like ice fishing. Not so great for all the West Coast and East Coast people who are flying in. Right, right. You know, it's usually at a warm weather state, so I don't know. We'll see how popular yeah, it is. Yeah, we'll see what happens. The stadium's indoors, but we'll right. see how much warmer it is inside the stadium versus outside. And we'll know by asking Al Jackson. So uh, stay with us, guys. We'll have more in a bit. I got to get more Welcome to Daily Blast Live. It's Thursday, February 1st, and we've got everything you need to know in trending news and entertainment, and it's all live right now. Plus, Sarah Jessica Parker talks the next Sex in the City movie minus Kim Cattrall. DBL Nation, how would you like to her character? And we're counting down to the Super Bowl parties. You may regret reaching for that extra handful of chips. And I'm not talking about the calories. Happening right now, an Oprah book emergency. Why she's deleting parts of her new self-help book. Welcome to Daily Blast Live. We're the only live show that covers what you're talking about right now. We shouldn't waste any time. We got a lot going on today. And we're going to get this thing popped off with the top five trending stories happening right now. And what better person to toss it to than my boy, Jay Shro. Hey, Jeff. What's up, Ebony? Looking beautiful as always. That's right, guys. We are live. And I'm here with radio girl, Erica Cobb, Biggest Loser trainer, Jen Wiederstrom, and pop culture guru, Tori Shulman. I'm Jeff Schroeder, and we're a trending news and entertainment show that is live and covers what is happening happening right now. Our entire DBL team is in our studio this Thursday, ready to cover news the moment it breaks. And we're counting down to Super Bowl 52, and we got breaking news. Digital producer Raquel Villanueva has the details. Well, Justin Timberlake just held his live press conference answering questions we've been dying to know. Here's what he had to say about special guests and how he wouldn't mind playing in the game. To be honest, I had a ton of grand ideas about special guests, you know, from NSYNC to to Jay, to uh, Chris Stapleton, to Janet. And, um, but this year, I'm just excited. My band is, uh, Tennessee Kids, the, I feel like those, they're my special guests. And I just wanna throw this out there to, uh, to Belichick, if, uh, you know, if, if, if all of your receivers go down, I'll be ready to go. Sounds like he's ready to go. And he also says there's a good chance we'll hear Can't Stop the Feeling. Back to you. Yeah, I'm glad he wow. got dressed up for that. Huh? <laughs> he, was, he was so unbiased. What do you want, Vana? He's in and out of rehearsal, Tori. <laughs> he was man. Um, I don't know. It just sounded like misdirection. He specifically named all the people we want to hear. I'm like, mm -mm -mm, I see through you. <laughs> Who, so are you saying Janet's going to be there? Janet has to be she there. She wants it so if Janet, bad. I'm, I will make a promise. If Janet doesn't play in the uh, play in the Super Bowl, play at halftime. <laughs> I am not watching the second half. Oh. There you go. That's going to hurt mm. no one. <laughs> <laughs> more, more on the Super Bowl. It's only three days until kickoff at U.S. Bank <laughs> Stadium in Minneapolis, where they're expecting more than a million visitors. Reporter Pat Evans from our sister station joins us from downtown Minneapolis. Pat, hello. Could you hear me? Hi, Pat? it is cold down here. It is crazy cold down here. <laughs> 
Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I, was just, I was just about to ask you about the cold. Can you hear me? I can hear you. <laughs> All right, Pat. I can hear you, baby. I, I can hear you. It is so cold. It is so cold here. L l let me tell you, the reason we don't need Botox here is this is so crazy cold, it freezes every muscle in your face. I'm actually about 83, <laughs> and you wouldn't know it. Note to this self, move to very, Minneapolis. This is a very, great spot right here. Take a look here. I'm going to have Bill pan off a little bit. This is our warming house here, Anderson Windows Warming House, which we're doing all the broadcast here. Down the street, though, we have the Super Bowl. You can see the LLI. A good story about that real quick is uh, they were setting it up, and it was too small for the NFL, so they made them make it even bigger. So a lot going on. On over eight blocks here. Lots, Lots. going on. So, Live music, too. You can believe musicians are out here. They're playing out here. Ooh, wow. right, speaking of musicians, Pat, we just heard Justin Timberlake talking about the halftime show, and yeah. we just got this video. Yeah. He tweeted dancing around yeah. U.S. Bank Stadium. Ooh. Let's watch it for a sec. So, Pat, what's the buzz you're hearing about the big show? <laughs> okay, you were talking about his news conference that he held. He was dressed rather casually. We do it casual down here, by the way, <laughs> for obvious reasons, you know. He celebrated his his 37th birthday yesterday. He went to a steakhouse, and he said that he ate his weight in steak, and I do believe it. It's just down the road here. So serious cow down there. <laughs> a lot of good places to eat, obviously, and folks are taking advantage of all that. You need, you need to eat in this climate, and I look forward to this season because you can cover it all up. Nobody knows. Nobody knows what you're <laughs> Speaking of that, you, this, this is great for the Super Bowl. Your opportunity is great for ice fishing. You're set to go, buddy. Baby, I am set to go. You know what? The nice thing about this, where folks come down here, they can walk this street and you get everything free. This hat, I didn't pay a nickel for it. It probably looks it, but boy, is it nice. Wow. Can I give you, a, give you a couple last shots as you look down here? They're going to have some live music there tonight. There have been tributes to Prince. We're going to see more of that going on here. So it's really an opportunity for locals as well as people from out of town to take in a little bit of Minnesota hospitality. Wow. We're only happy to share it. All right, Pat, we know you're going to have fun this weekend, but try to stay warm. All right. Right? Bye, Pat. Thank you so much. <laughs> I should go Pat to Minneapolis. Oh, I want to hang out with Pat. The yeah. best places. The people are so kind. Free Botox. So nice. You can eat whatever you want. Oh, my gosh. Well, speaking of eating, millions of Americans will be going to Super Bowl parties where a lot of super snacking will yep. be taking place, but not so fast. Turns out those snacks could spread the flu. Double dipping? I don't think so. That's a personal foul. Bowls of candy? <laughs> You better think twice. There's a flag on that play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm gonna it's give that a thumbs right up. It's written right there. I just read what it says. I'm going to give it a thumbs up. But it's true, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, you got to watch out. I thought about that, and I love dips for the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. But now I'm like, not so much. Well, and I even thought, it's usually, you think there's always a spread, right? And it's over, and everyone's kind of talking around it, and then people are coughing, and they're, I know. You know what that, Michael Dean said, our producer? He would have a Purell station at the smorgasbord yeah, table. I, I don't know. You know there's there's no way more. to actually defend yourself from this. I'm just going to go on record and say my father's been saying for as long as I've been alive, don't just be eating anybody's food. <laughs> Y'all know what's going on in their kitchen. <laughs> Did they wash their hands? Are they talking over the food? It's like at the point where the food is being served, you just pray for your life. Yes, everybody, everybody do the Cape cough, please. At the Super, Super Bowl, Bowl tips from Erica yeah. Cobb. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Super Bowl fashion is coming in hot. Sam Shocker is showing us adorable and affordable looks to rock for the big game. That's right, Jeff. Anyone here care to dress like a supermodel for the Super Bowl? No? Cool. All right, here are some looks that supermodels have worn to support their teams and how you can get the look for Sunday. Get creative with your team's colors. Number one Patriots fan Giselle ditches the traditional jersey and sports the Patriots red and blue and plaid. Looks like my closet. You can get the look at H&M for 7 to 20 bucks. Giselle also posted this snap on Instagram showing off her Patriot leggings. Get the look at NFLshop.com for $35. And if you order online today, you will have them by Saturday, just in time. And finally, pair your outfit with spirited socks like Olivia Copo. Find both Patriot and Eagle designs at JCPenney today for $17 to $95. That's a big range. Back to you guys. <laughs> I'm wearing my Bobby Boucher jersey. Ooh. I always wear that. I always wear my uh, Michigan elastic sweatpants for obvious reasons. You can stretch it I'm out. I'm wearing my Chicago Bears jersey. Oh. Because mm. Erica? I have to. It's the only, it's the only one I got. Hopefully, I'm wearing pajamas at home. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
All right, guys, we're going to have more Super Bowl coverage later on in the show, so stick around for that. But now, changing gears, new sexual misconduct allegations. Today, digital producer Kelly Schubert has the news at the moment. Yeah, Jeff, that's right. Supermodel Kate Upton is slamming the co-founder of Fashion Line Guest with sexual harassment allegations. She writes that Paul Marciano, quote, shouldn't be allowed to use his power in the industry to sexually and emotionally harass women, and she included the hashtag MeToo. It's unclear if she's saying she was personally a victim when she was the face of Guess, but listen to what she told TMZ. I'm excited to tell my whole story, but a walk to the car is not going to cover it. What do you think should be done to keep people in positions of power from abusing that power? I think a lot of people around them know about it and need to speak out. Marciano tells TMZ that he has done nothing wrong and Upton can take him to court. Back to you. I'm a little confused at this story because she doesn't say anything happened to her personally, so does that put like... Does it that mean like anything to you guys? Well, the not? hashtag Me Too is usually a personal hashtag. It indicative, it, 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 indicative of so she it just hasn't said the details yet. Yeah, which is what you're like thinking. She's holding on it, but it's weird that this it's taken this long for the story to kind of come out, though, as well. Here's my fear: Where are we in a year? Because if if some of these stories go unheard from the point where they've actually been told and people have been accused and nothing happens in this country, we have a very, very short memory. Very short. So a year from now, where are we? If nothing's happened, if it hasn't been prosecuted, if, do we just continue to, to just go forward? What well, will that mean for the victims and what does that mean for the people who are accused? And so far, what is the only venue these people have? It seems to be social media. Social media, it's, it's, yes. Courts take a really long time. I'm not saying this is the way to do it, but it has turned Tweet, tw Twitter, good job, Tori, has no, turned out okay. to be a, a venue that you get to have your say. Now, that's also a double-edged sword because the other person doesn't get to have their say back unless you go into a Twitter war. So what I'm saying is it needs to go directly and maybe faster to the courts. I would also advocate for longer statute of limitations so these people don't have to worry about not being able to go to court. Oh, I see, because it's the one-year rule. It, yeah, you get, you get to your 28 and then it's over. Yeah. All right. Daily Blast Live covers trending topics and entertainment live. Ebony Steele, what's coming up? Well, Sarah Jessica Parker dishes on the future of sex and the city. A third movie could happen, but how will they get rid of Kim Cattrall's character, Samantha? Yeah, we're going to chat about that. And got a Netflix account? Well, pay attention. If you know someone who does, what you need to do about an email scam going around right now. And you, the viewer, our friends, you're our fifth host. Next, we share your comments live on air about a story getting a lot of buzz online. A man sends an epic breakup letter <gasps> to his gym. Uh, we're a little late for a break because our battery died, but we've got a pretty cool story here, Kelly, about Octavia yeah. Spencer. Uh, what is she doing for her community? So we know Octavia Spencer. She's nominated for The Shape of Water, Best Supporting Actress, very well known. Well, she wants to give back in her own little way, so she is actually deserving tickets for an entire screening for Black Panther. She has not disclosed the Mississippi community yet, but she is teasing that it will go to children <laughs> so they can actually go to the theater. And see and an African-American hero. Yeah, That's icon. Pretty so cool. it's really cool. And it's trending on HuffingtonPost.com if you want to read more about it. Yeah. So she will be disclosing um, which Miss Mississippi community soon. She says, stay tuned as of now. So giving kids access to uh, heroic dreams. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. But Octavia is a pretty cool person. So thanks, guys. We'll, uh, we'll talk more in the next break. Uh, but you're not going to want to miss this story about breaking up at the gym. If you ever had to break up at the gym, how about Netflix? How about a hairstylist? It's not easy. So uh, these guys are going to talk about it in the next uh, segment. Okay, 30 thanks. 30 seconds to back.
Welcome back to Daily Blast Live, the only live show that covers trending stories live no matter where you're watching. And we're listening to you too. It's time for Fifth Host, where your comments are a part of our discussion. Take it away, Jeff Schroeder. All right, thank you, Ebony. We'll get to the fifth host in a minute, but first, let's get to digital producer Raquel Villanueva with news at the moment. Well, Jeff, right now, police across the country are warning Netflix users not to open a fake email. We told you about this scam first right here on DBL, and now a new email has hackers trying to get your credit card info by saying there's a problem with your Netflix membership. But the warning is the same. Do not open it or click on the email and report it to Netflix right away. Back to you. Thanks, Raquel. Watch out for that, guys. All right, let's get to our fifth host. One Reddit user tried to cancel his Planet Fitness membership over the phone, but to no avail. So he wrote the most epic breakup letter ever. Tori? It starts with, it is with deep regret and a heavy heart that I write this letter. I still love you, but more like a friend at this point. You just keep being you, and while we both grow, it will be into our new lives without each other. That was deep, Tori. That was deep. That was Way deep. to go. Great that sounded read. exactly. Thanks, guys. That's how, that's how exactly how he sounded when he wrote it. <laughs> we asked you, our fifth host, why is it so hard to cancel gym memberships? And here's what you had to say. I'm going to start out with Jamie Lynn Tony. She wrote in, I changed banks to get out of my gym <laughs> membership. Got the idea from a Friends episode. Uh, <laughs> I remember that episode. I love that episode. That was I, love a good that episode. One. I gotta tell you what, as a trainer, I had somebody do that to me. Like, I, here's the, the check for the next set of sessions, and then I didn't clear, and they never responded to me. So, although I didn't really like it, it was quite effective. <laughs> <laughs> I got the hint. Wow. Okay, Sammy uh, Given says sometimes you just gotta threaten them with a lawsuit. That'll get you out of your contract. Oh. Well, Sammy, I guess if that works for you, but I am of the school of thought that your lack of planning doesn't become someone else's priority. Um, I just do have to say, I know this isn't going to be popular, but I had an experience with California Family Fitness, and I knew that I was moving from California back to Denver three months before. I told them, and they canceled it the day of my last day that I went there. So I didn't have any problems because you kind of have to plan for these things. Well, I have an opposite story. I was at LA Fitness, and I told them to their face, hey, I'm leaving. And they said, I go, can I cancel my membership? They said, You're, you just started your new site. So I left to move to Denver, called them, say, hey, could I cancel my membership? Now, this is the day you told me. They said, now we, you either have to come in person or give us to a writing. So oh. I wrote in and it said this will be processed in five to seven days, which got into my next cycle. <gasps> so they got three months out of Did me. Did you Erica. ask to speak to a manager? Because I went straight to the manager and I put it in writing. And then we did a carbon copy of exactly the last day I was going to be there because I wasn't going to give them any more well, of my money. And that's how it worked. Guess what? Companies, if you want to deal with me next time, I'm putting Cobb on the phone. Yeah. Do we got to squeeze in one more? Oh my God, first of all, I like your cycles and companies. That's really helpful. <laughs> YouTube user yeah. BH Brady one writes, I had a membership at Bally's in Tampa and wanted to cancel, but the contract said you could only cancel if there wasn't a Bally's in a 50 mile radius. <laughs> I literally had to change my address to a family member's oh, in man. Michigan. I mean, that's Why is it ridiculous. So nice layered. I mean, this is the last biggest red tape we have. Why are we allowing this? Maybe that's just, why I don't work out. Maybe they want to. <laughs> maybe they want to keep you healthy. We want to thank you, the viewer for being our fifth host. Be sure to join us before and during the show on Facebook and YouTube Live to share your comments. We love them. Daily Blast Live is all about news as it's happening. Ebony Steele, what's coming up? Who doesn't love puppies? Come on, it's the annual Puppy Bowl and you know comedian Al Jackson's gonna sound off on this one. And it's National Texas Day and we're testing your Lone Star knowledge in our trivia showdown. Get your DBL app ready and play along with us to win a cool prize. Do you know what an isthmus is? I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Stay tuned, because we're going to take a third grade quiz that apparently is stumping everyone. Hi, guys. So we're always bringing you uh, the latest of trending. And this study from Pew Research is uh, trending huge. And it's really kind of shocking, Kelly. Yeah, it's kind of not what you would think. So this is coming from Romper and the Pew Research Center. They're saying that millennial moms are stay-at-home moms more than the generations before. So you kind of think millennials are being non-traditional, but this is probably the, one most, of the traditional. most traditional things you can think In fact, of. I think the study says that it was plateauing for years and years, and now it's actually just back, it was declining. This article. So, we so can look at this. 
look us. at the chart if we want so to. So from 67 to like 2002, it was just declining, declining, declining. Yeah, and where they look at it really is 2012, it hit a 29% rate of stay-at-home mothers, which compared to 1999 had 23%. So a small fraction, but still going up in a surprising way. Well, that's good for us here at the DBL Nation, because I'm sure a lot of you guys are moms right now watching us. Yeah. Take care of your kids, and we always appreciate that. But uh, yeah, it's shocking. What do you guys think? Uh, are you a stay-at-home mom? Do you feel like uh, you see a lot of more younger moms uh, kind of in the neighborhood during the day walking around with their kids out in strollers and stuff? Let us know what you think. And, uh, and uh, we celebrate all of you guys because staying at home is not any easier than going out Well, in an there. additional point to the story is that they also counter in um, moms getting their <coughs> educations that are home for that. Homeschool, yeah. Um, moms that cannot find employment, so unemployed moms, moms that stay at home. Oh, education. that's so stay at home moms based on just that they're, they can't find work. That's interesting that they've lumped all of that together. <sighs> yeah, I mean, yeah, okay, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, so the numbers are on the rise regardless, so uh, what do you guys think is causing that? Do you think it is actually that they're moving to more traditional roles, or do you think that a lot of them can't afford daycare, or a lot of them don't have a job, or the economy situation is kind of keeping them at home? That's a really interesting perspective. One way or the other, it's on the rise, so let us know what you guys think if it's one or the other. Are millennials more traditional, or are they actually strapped economically, therefore they have to stay home? It's a good question. And also, uh, Jen... Um, do you work, have you ever put yourself in a position where you worked at a gym that had a crazy difficult break? Yeah, I mean, my first one of my first jobs ever was at Lifetime Fitness in Warrenville, Illinois. I helped Warren open a lot of a lot of their their big openings, and I mean, it was a great gym and everything. But it's a, it's a layered process. I think it's I think it's two things. One is. Uh, I like to think that as <laughs> listen, the, the mission statement of any health club is to help you be healthy, right. to but keep you going. And so part of that is that mm -hmm. it's a commitment. When you can commit, they can commit. But also the business side, <coughs> as it does commit you to them constantly paying. And oh. counting on. Oh. oh. Damn it. As you can find with a little help from Jeff Schroeder. Take it away, guys. Thank you, Erica Cobb. It's time for everyone's favorite segment. Al sounds off with everyone's yes. favorite comedian, uh, Mr. Al Jackson. Okay. How are you? Feeling good, buddy. Feeling good. Let's get into it. All right, Al, with the big game around the corner, there's so much to look forward to. The yeah. commercials, the food, and of course, the puppy bowl. Ugh. Now, Jeff, I just love this. It's Check so cute. Zone. This is the puppy bowl, or as Sam calls it, the Super Bowl. Right. <laughs> and she still doesn't know what teams are playing. Uh, <laughs> I like this. You know, everybody's like, this game's going to be off the hook. This game's going to be off the leash. Now, <laughs> Jeff, I'll tell you this. You know, I'm a gambling man. Uh, there's a lot of props being uh, laid out. What's your favorite bet for this year? Oh, the coin toss, man. Uh, well, I would bet that there's going to be a flea flicker. Uh, <laughs> And the saddest thing about both these teams, they both won as many games as the Browns did this year. Let's go to the next one. All right, Al, this week, Sophia, a humanoid robot, spoke about the future of artificial intelligence in South Korea. You got to watch. I am always working to improve myself and learn about different culture, right? That's why I'm in first class. Now, Jeff, she's just sitting there. I mean, she's in Korea. You would think she'd have more soul. <laughs> If I, want one, if I want a woman to stare blankly and blink at me, I'll just go on a Tinder date. This is <laughs> very rare. But, uh, uh, and bad news, fellas, she doesn't have a clear history button. Uh, <laughs> Think about it. Uh, let's go. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> All right, Al. These headphones are guaranteed to keep your music lit. Watch this, Al. All right, let's check it out. Now, Jeff, I just love these headphones. I think they're so cool. You know, it's just like, it, it, dude, and here's my joke for you that I thought was so funny. It's like, you can listen to Queen while looking like a princess. You, the, you get, Jeff, you could, the, the, the group Queen. What do you mean? Do you, you don't get my joke? The, Queen is a group, and then you can look like a. What? Jeff, are you not listening? I was listening to your half hour special on Comedy Central, Al. Oh! Check it out. Uh, <laughs> hilarious. That was good. Sounds up with everyone's favorite comedian, Mr. Al Jackson. TV personality Sam Shocker has a new Cheeto mashup coming in hot. That's right. Drilled ice cream in Fountain Valley, California just started selling flaming hot Cheeto ice cream. And it's already an internet sensation, of course. The spicy snack is blended with vanilla ice cream served in a waffle cone and garnished with more flaming Cheetos. DBL Nation, would you try it? Well, lucky for you, where? Oh, there it is. Sorry. Hello. Lucky for you, we'll try anything except me. I'm going to have somebody else try it. 
I am vegan. This is not non-dairy ice cream, so I have an excuse. Who sh who's Jen gonna try it? Jen Scorpions. Oh, look, so let you see it. how confident she is right now? Yep. Okay, Jen, 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 How is it? Better than the Scorpion? I'm actually, I actually quite like it. Oh, there okay. you go. Okay, I'll leave it with her. All right, right. There. my Sex, work is done, folks. Sex in the City 3 without Samantha? The horror coming up in Top Trending News. Sarah Jessica <laughs> Parker hints at the future of the franchise. And open up your DBL app or go to dailyblastlive.com because right now we're testing your Texas trivia. You can win a cool prize. Our DBL trivia showdown is right after the break. Yeehaw! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's delicious. What is the base ice cream on this vanilla? Just it's just vanilla, vanilla ice cream. Listen, yeah, I'm right. a Cheetos fan. I'm waiting for the and the sugar cone is my favorite. Do you know what Leo said? He said it was sweet, salty, and heat. There was yeah, heat. That's a three balance. Heat. A trifecta. trifecta. Yeah. Oh, you know, a lot of you guys were asking. Totally. I'll take it over here. A lot of you guys were asking about Al's suit. Uh, and uh, Hannah, our hey. local person, is here with, uh, with the latest. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Hannah and I went out. Where did you guys get it from? Mind. We went up from suit, uh, got it from suit supply. Sorry, my, uh, my mic is my, the mic's kind of pulling running from it. it. Yeah. So we went to suit supply in Denver, and we got him two new suits. This is one of them. It's called the Hartford Check. Love you it. can actually look online for it. And then we got him this dope um, turtleneck. I'm surprised we haven't made fun of him for wearing a turtleneck on the show today. Oh, somehow when Al wears it, it just looks right. It like looks Funny right. How that works. Yeah. Nobody and then we also peak. got him these amazing Magnani shoes. You can get these at Nordstrom. They're beautiful. And he is the worst shoe tire in history. So we made sure it had a buckle. And I still didn't even buckle it right. Look, I didn't even I know, it it's like loop. still not, oh my gosh. We're getting there, there, we're getting there. Baby steps. But uh, next week, you guys will see a new beautiful gray suit that he has. Ooh. Gotta I get know. a retailer. Somebody's ready for all the yeah. Super Bowl parties in Minnesota. Exactly. Yes. So if you guys want to copy a style, then you know to go to Suit Supply. Yes. All right, guys. And so follow much. Hannah on Instagram. She's yeah, got all, find me on everything there. I have every day uh, you can find through her, and she'll <laughs> tell you where to get it. All Sounds right, guys. Good. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. You're watching Daily Blast Live. It's National Texas Day. So to celebrate, we're testing your knowledge of the Lone Star State. It is DBL Trivia Showdown, Woo! Texas style. Today's showdown is between Ebony, looking good, and Erica, looking fine. And all of you, the viewers who look good too, go to dailyblastlive.com and tap vote now. You Questions. Keep, you keep falling in and out of your I right sure seat. do, because I'm not good at it. Will appear on your device. <laughs> now the winning viewer will win a DBL hashtag genius t-shirt. Are you all ready? Yes. Okay. Let's do it. You cannot, uh, you, oh, nice handshake, y'all. You cannot um, touch the bell until I'm finished. Here we go. Question number one. Okay. Which Longhorn scored the winning touchdown in the 2006 National Championship? Was it Vince Young, Major Applewhite, or Ricky Williams? <laughs> Erica? Uh, Vince Young? Correct! Nice job, partner. Nice job, partner. All right, question number two. Who is an honorary Texas Ranger? Is it Tommy Ooh, Lee Jones, Robert Duvall, or John Wayne? Erica? Tommy Lee Jones? <laughs> Um, the, the, not John Wayne, but the other one. The answer John is Wayne, I John Wayne. I said John Wayne. <laughs> but I no. said not and guys, Chuck Norris and Will Rogers are also honorary Texas Rangers. All right. Question number three, Texas. I must submit that I'm scared of Erica's nails a little bit. That's <laughs> Texas, <laughs> Texas has the highest speed limit in the country. Now, what is it? Is it 85, 80 miles per hour, or 90? Uh, Erica, I mean, Ebony, go ahead. Um, how could you get us confused? 80. <laughs> Damn. 85. Correct! Nice job. Very nice job. Question number four. Come on up. What president was not born in Texas? George W. Bush, Dwight D. Eisenhower, or Lyndon Johnson? Erica? Eisenhower. Uh, John, uh, Johnson. The Bush. answer is George W. Bush. Whoa. He was born in New Haven. That was a trick oh, question. Man. That is a trick question. Let's see who wins. Erica's a winner. Oh, we'll Erica be right back with 0848 as our winner. Yay. I'm the line and dance my winner. Howdy, y'all. Howdy, y'all.
Guys, uh, so that was our Texas trivia. I hope you guys won. I want to know who won. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, you kind of cleaned house yeah. there. You know, we were making jokes uh, and retracting, apologizing for our cowboy stereotypes because in the first hour we got a couple people that were like, hey, we don't all wear cowboy hats. But then by show two, we were getting more people being like, thanks for celebrating Texas. So we hope you enjoyed it. We, we understand that it's also a very cosmopolitan state, but we also understand that you guys uh, kick butt and take names. That's right. That's so y'all come of, back now, you hear? It's the balance of Texas. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting. So how did you guys do with your Texas knowledge? <laughs> I've only been to Dallas. It's only My family's from Beaumont. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Well, where's Beaumont closest to you? That's a really great question. Um, <laughs> El Paso. The what? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, most of my family now is in San Antonio um, and a little in Houston, okay. but yeah, Houston's a great city from, too. Yeah, Dallas was super fun, and I want to go to Austin, like I was saying earlier in the day. But no, that's on my list. It's fun. We have to, got to do Austin. Um, now we've got a great video coming up uh, that we're actually going to be putting online tomorrow that you're going to have to see. We're making a cool graphic for your uh, rides. Oh, yay! But it is awesome, and we're super excited. We're going to tell you guys about it tomorrow during the digital breaks um, so you can share it out but it's a very cool uh, reading by our own Erica Cobb and it's very you. cool I think you're going to like it a lot because I appreciate it yeah no it's great um, alright guys we're going to take a little break here they're going to return to the show they're going to talk about Sex in the City which is coming back without I repeat without Kim Cattrall how do you want them to kill off her character let us know talk to you in a second It's Daily Blast Live, the only live show that covers breaking news and top trending stories that are happening right now. We are live, yes we are, in our DBL studios where our team is busy tracking trending topics and breaking news. Let's go to digital producer Kelly Schubert with news at this moment. Kelly. Yeah, Ebony, I've got news just in. E! has just announced that it has finished investigating Ryan Seacrest over allegations of misconduct. The network says it found insufficient evidence to support the claims of former stylist made against Ryan back in November. E! says it is committed to providing a safe work environment where everyone is treated with respect and dignity. Ebony, back to you. Thanks, Kells. Let's go to Erica Cobb, Jen Wiederstrom, Tori Schulman, and Jeff Schroeder with all the top trending stories. Thank you so much, Ber uh, Eb. <laughs> also trending right now, Megan Kelly. I was Megan Kelly and Eb. I was between those two. Yeah. According to Radar Online, Megan has been banned from covering the royal mm -hmm. wedding. Sources say they only want their best correspondence. Ooh. Reporting on Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's big day. Erica Cobb's ready for this story. They worry <laughs> Megan Kelly w might say something inappropriate or create controversies, what she does. So Savannah Guthrie and Hoda Kotb will be there to helm NBC's wedding coverage. I will be there too, obviously, with Royal Watch with Tori Showman. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you know what, actually, that's actually a great place to start, even though you're giggling about it. Could it be that Megyn Kelly, maybe that's just not her forte. Like, you're doing the Royal Watch, I do Fitness Friday. There's a reason that we're good at different things, and so you're placing those positions if on you're, purpose. If you're spending $25 million, you better be good at a lot well, of things. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe NBC misspent. I don't think... I don't think that's what they're going for at all. I think okay. uh, I think they're pulling her because of what, exactly what they said. She might say something controversial. She's a risk to the network. I think. I, I think they're just not happy with her. I think. Do they, you think they regret the twenty? I think they do. Yeah, yeah I think they got to cut their losses at some point. Isn't that kind of always been her though? Like a hard line, a very strict. Well, yeah, she doesn't scream lifestyle to me. And yeah. wedding is a very lifestyle thing. It's like more floral. And Hoda and Savannah are absolutely the perfect yeah. people to do it. Why would you even throw someone else in the mix? So you're you're on Team Jen. Yeah, team Jen, all the way. Well, Coach banned, I think banned is a, t is a strong word. That's if they would have said Megan Kelly stepped down from doing it, it would have been a totally different story. Megan Kelly's banned from Great it point. is like. Jeff, such a good point. The verb ban changes the whole tone of this story. Right. It makes it seem like she was going to go and then was like told no or is in trouble, where it might be that she just doesn't fit there. So right. Be careful so, what you read and how you read uh, it. And I read into it a little bit too much. Perhaps. Eh. Perhaps. All right. Could you have a big wedding for a second marriage? Goop Queen Gwyneth Paltrow says yes. She's planning her second walk down the aisle with Brad Falchuk and is looking at dresses, but her first marriage to Coldplay singer Chris Martin was not a big event with flowers <clears> and fanfare, and she even told People Magazine, quote, I never had a wedding before. 
I just want to take this one real quick. I used to sell discount bridal gowns for two <laughs> years while trying to be a stand-up uh, comic. And I learned a lot about second marriages because you wouldn't get new ones. You get discount usually. And I always felt so bad because they, they, a lot of the brides wanted to go big, but the tradition was to go small. And it's, it's, it's not... It's, oh, like they it's like time to go big because it's like you've made a new choice and a new you. Why not go yeah. big? So they, had, they picked a dress that was more played down because yeah. they and felt said, like they already right. had the big dress before. Right. And I'd say, you know what? Uh, Screw it. Go for the big dress. This is your life and this is your big moment. So yeah. I think people have to do what's comfortable for them and makes the most sense for them. For me personally, I did the big wedding the first time. I didn't want to have a wedding the second time. I wanted to do something very intimate just with the family. Yeah. It was my husband who wanted a wedding. I could see everyone. And I, yeah. And I I and it was asked Anthony's him. first marriage. It was it's his okay. first marriage, and and hopefully only one. And <laughs> I, I picked out a dress that was very toned down, and he requested that I wear something a bit more traditional. Okay. So that was important to him, and I gave him. I literally threw a wedding for my husband because that was important. And, for yeah. Him. And I think to point. each, I think that's a great point to each their own. If it's personal and someone wants a wedding, if my wife wanted a big wedding, we got married in a courthouse. I'll, I would throw her that wedding on an anniversary, but I'd rather take the money and travel, pay for my kids, whatever, education and things like that. That's what I'd rather do with my yeah. money for a wedding. Let's be honest, 50% and in divorce. However, you know what I mean? in every religion, there's always a rite of passage. You have the bar mitzvah, you have the christening, you have a wedding, Jews step on the glass, they have other traditions. These are important ceremonies because it really, you can go back to that time yeah, and say, I remember But I will tell you, Jeff's ceremony, although at a courthouse, even though it costs way less than maybe, let's say, Cobb's uh, wedding for Anthony, <laughs> doesn't make the ceremony any less important. Agreed, agreed. Fair point. Agree to agree. Sarah <laughs> Jessica Parker says that producers are trying to write another Sex in the City movie without Samantha, either killing her off or recasting her <laughs> That was her your now. idea. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Actress Kim Cattrall wants out. So last night, Bravo's Andy Cohen decided to throw his wig in the ring for the role. Check out this audition. <laughs> this is about the <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> what, 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 why? Why? One little and I'm a hooker with no taste. We can't get away with the same stuff we used to get away with. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Meaning. <laughs> oh, Jesus, again with the. <laughs> Did we really say <laughs> that many yes, times? Yes. <laughs> they do swear a lot. Jeez. <laughs> I had to pull out my earpiece a little. There's so many beats. <laughs> well, if they're recasting Samantha, we do have one suggestion we'd like to throw in the mix. Here it is. Oh, oh, God. Of course. <laughs> oh, Lord. You That's know, it. There are three women on this panel. You could have easily chosen. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. One of us. And if, you're, if I'm going to be the butt of the joke in this one, at least make me Charlotte. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh. Although I do like so it. It was your you. idea to. It was your idea that. to offer. Digital producer Jason, thanks for that joke. Charlotte there you go, joke. buddy. There we Thank go. you for that, buddy. Shout out to Jason. <laughs> He's giggling so hard. <laughs> he gave me that joke off camera. Oh, I like it. Because I have no idea who Charlotte is. <laughs> oh. All right. And now an update to a story we brought you yesterday. A woman denied from flying out of Newark, New Jersey, because she had her emotional support peacock named Dexter. Yeah, this is true. But now Dexter is on a cross country road trip to Los Angeles. Starting from Dexter's home in Brooklyn, New York. We hey. have a play by play. This I is love a graphic. This. He traveled to Pennsylvania where he stopped at Trainer's Midway Diner for a bite. Then Dexter visited grandparents in Indianapolis. <laughs> in St. Louis, Dexter played pinball. And finally, Dexter stopped in the city of Miami, Ohio, where he visited the Coleman Theater. Miami. Or Oklahoma, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah. What did I say? Ohio. It's okay. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was a, nonetheless, it was a terrific journey for Dexter. <laughs> I don't, I think it's funny that we're even talking about it Can still. I ask you guys a question? It looked like the video had been set up for when she walked in, in that airport. Oh, you, yeah. It was almost like of a course. setup. Of course. Okay, Why okay. would you bring a peacock on a plane well, and not cover it? And okay. they had already told her like three different times before she even arrived at the airport. You can't bring Don't come, don't come, don't come. Yeah. Dexter, so. There she is. There's well, we should pull up. Well, this is obviously we're talking about it. One of us next time we go to airport need to like ride an emu or hop in on a kangaroo <laughs> and try to get that on a plane and see how any, like, any put exotic that on the animal yeah. would do. I thought mine were pretty exotic. I'd like yeah. yours. That's what I'm saying. Especially the it's emu. great. I want to ride in on an ostrich. Really, really. Cut no, down just, and... Emu is kind of the same thing. You stole my idea. Moving oh, on. <laughs>
I said, oh, is it the really? I have I'm to look kidding, this up Jenna. now. I'm just kidding. We'll talk at the break. All right. <laughs> if you're flying and didn't violate your, per oh, if you're flying and violate your personal space enough already, did you get that? Virginia Atlantic now has a love suite on some of its flights. That's right. It's a love seat so you can cuddle, watch movies, or catch up on work with a colleague. Mm -hmm. Or with a colleague in quotes, I guess. I just feel this is Virgin Atlantic, not Virginia Atlantic, and I honestly feel <laughs> as if, wouldn't that be a fire hazard if there was some kind of... No! <laughs> Why? This is amazing. I've already sent this link to my husband. Oh. I, I, I swear, now I'm like not even concerned about destinations that we need to uh, check off our bucket list. Now I'm like, how are we getting to wherever? Right. It doesn't even matter. This is awesome. I love this. This. Really? I am obsessed with this, and it's going to happen. It is on the bucket list. I am manifesting Whoa. this. <laughs> what she it said. It is so cool. Would two, you do this? Two thumbs up from Weeder, Sherman Cobb. Would you do this? No, I think it's stupid, completely stupid. <laughs> I'm, I'm not for I don't know. Just everyone just face forward and don't bring pets on a plane. <laughs> don't cuddle. I don't want to see anything. Just face forward. Well, that's the point. Forward. You won't see it. You're not even going yeah, to see the person next to you. Yeah, but what if I'm next to you? You don't see the person next to you. It's a private cabin. Have you looked at the photos? I just You fly. need to look at the photos. Okay. <laughs> I'm out. I'm it not in. Amazing. I'm not in. Jeff's How much does that cost? A billion dollars to do that? And then you got to check your bags for 25? I'm out. <laughs> what? Comedian what? Al Jackson has a new trending story coming in hot. <laughs> <laughs> I just, that's Virginia Atlantic. That's that's the airline I want to get you to Norfolk to Richmond. <laughs> that's awesome. Buzz, BuzzFeed posted a third grade social studies quiz and it is trending hot right now. It seems easy, but you should check this out. Click on the largest ocean. Pacific. Correct. Mm. It's the Pacific. The Atlantic. Mm. Does that red circle mean it's wrong? Who wrote the Bill of Rights? Thomas Jefferson. Oh! Tori's gonna be so mad. Madison, correct. Which arrow is pointing to an isthmus? I don't even know what an isthmus is. It must be on here somewhere. Isthmus. <laughs> I got that wrong. Riverbank. Yeah, what's up? What kind of map is this? Political. See? I don't see anything that makes this political. Political? What in this picture is a capital resource? The road. <laughs> yeah. Roads. Cow. I got three out of seven, but still got it. I got six out of seven. I'm a star student. See, it says it right there. There's no way that I got a two out of seven. It says I'm a sleepyhead. <laughs> It says here on this prompt that I'm supposed to be disappointed in you guys. I wouldn't have been able to get one of those questions. So, like, feel that's fine. Uh, and Sam did really well, so shout out to Sam. So, DBO Nation, how did you guys do? Let us know. Back to you, Jeff. Thanks, Al. I think that last one was a trick question. I'm just saying. Try it at home. It's a little tricky. The political one? Yeah, the political one. I kind one. of agree with you. It's got to be red and blue, oh. not gray. Stu disagrees. Try it at home. It's a cool, it's a, actually a cool, like, little quiz. I'm going to try it. All right, now it's time for our top feel good stories of the day. All right, thank you so much. And I'm with you on that, uh, Jeff. Yeah, that political map, I thought it should be red and blue, but I don't know, evidently we don't know. All right, but let me tell you what we do know, that the Royals are walking in a winter wonderland. Check out Will and Kate in Norway today, giving us major frozen vibes. Prince William even got in a little workout while wearing a suit. And John Bon Jovi is giving back. This weekend in Philadelphia, he opened a new facility to help the homeless get back on their feet with counseling, coffee, and a place to do laundry and take showers. And this Philadelphia area school bus driver got the surprise of his life. The parents on his route bought him two tickets to the Super Bowl to thank him for being so wonderful to their kids every day. What a way to do it. Enjoy the game, Mr. Gary. Coming up on Daily Blast Live, Helen Mirren back on air with us to talk her movie Winchester. It's out tomorrow. And coming up and chatting with the stars, the Oscar winner reveals why she loves playing real life roles as she talks to the two crazy blondes. It's up next. Need some advice on what you should never say to your spouse? That's coming up. Oh, we are just talking about the love suites on these airplanes, <laughs> and Erica okay. brought up a picture of one. On right. We're going to show you, remember what we just showed you? Mi totally misleading. Yeah, this Look at this. Well, okay, this is so this Emirates. is Emirate. Um, it's not Virgin. Virgins haven't been constructed. They're still constructing the plane. So it's a private suite. So if you, like, if you see the pods in, like, first class, basically they're closing the that in a wall. So you have privacy, which is great because if, I mean, if you're going to, if you're flying highfalutin, 
None of us are doing that. Um, but if you're laying down, first yeah, if you're highfalutin, if you're like, you know, fancy and you can, you can spend a, a year's whatever. Anyway, so you can lay down on the bed with your partner and sleep as if you're in your own home. It's pretty awesome. That's all I'm saying. Well, listen, we, I was saying they don't have time to clean the planes very thoroughly between <laughs> flights. And I don't know if I'd want to just hop into a love suite after a 14-hour trip Listen, that another couple took from Shanghai. And I'm someone said, <laughs> I'm not saying anything. I'm just putting it out there. If you're paying that much money for your own little cabin. You best become a member of the Mile High <laughs> Someone's joining that club when you, you get gotta, off there. I mean, that what membership else is it for? to the Mile High Club has to be included. What else is it for? I will Okay, so like if you're, doing, <laughs> if you're doing a long flight and then like you change into your pajamas. There's no way you're not doing that. I'm just saying, no, I'm saying if you're doing a long flight and you like change into your pajamas, then you want to feel like you you have some security around you. Can I just say something? Don't you think building a shelter in the plane takes away leg space from no. everybody else? No, not if you're paying 10 it's grand for a ticket. I want, how much is it, how much do you know, like I estimate like how much they go no for? Idea. It has to be 10 grand. Because, because you need to take well, up I mean, all the other spaces that people would normally yeah, totally. sit in. It's yeah. 10 grand from Denver to Tokyo if wow. you buy a first we're just class. A oh, wow. yeah. so we're just talking 20 to grand. Yeah, yeah, so it's right. probably about You're sleeping 20. anyways, See? man. You're not sleeping in a love suite. You're not sleeping. Honey, I'll bang in Tokyo. Nobody pays $10,000 for a love suite. Whoa, hi-oh. Hey-oh, Tokyo. Hey-oh. Hey-oh. I'm just giggling the whole thing. I mean, I say bucket list, you know, when I win the lottery. I yeah. do. Also, is well, that if anyone out there ever flew in one of those, please write yeah. us yes. and let us know. Give us all the sorted details. Yes. Yeah, we would love to. If you're part of the highfalutin yeah. club, we want to know. <laughs> <laughs>
I would say it's magnificent. Looks kind of rocky. In the words of Al Jackson, how many photos do we need of Mars? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, he's got a point. He does. They all look similar in beige. Yeah, well, it's, 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 it's a beige planet. <laughs> Hard-hitting news yeah, right here at Daily Black guys. Live. <laughs> and we also cover stories about people doing great things in their communities. Ebony Steele, what's still ahead on BBL? Next, we're all about girl power. Cops are rewriting the rules about what it means to be a woman on the police force. It's our extra shot interview. And we want to give a DBL shout out to Milwaukee Transit bus driver, Michelle Mixon. Michelle came to the rescue of a little girl whose mother had a seizure. Michelle called for help and comforted the scared little girl and her kindness made a world of difference. Difference, that is. Love it. Way to go, Michelle. Get it, girl. This is, a. Uh, so we're always bringing you the hardest hitting news and the most important stuff, and you'll be happy to know that trending right now is the Tonight Show puppies have picked the winner of the Super Bowl. And uh, you'll be shocked to see what the animals pick. What did the, what did the puppies pick? So they, they do this every single year. They yes. get the two Super Bowl puppies, which are up for adoption, by the way. Adopt, don't shop. Right. Um, and they predicted the New England Patriots well, would be the Super Bowl winners. Wouldn't these puppies just be simply used to doing this year after year, seeing the same logo year after year after year? They're, they, that logo's there every year now. So yeah. I think the puppies are just now they trained to go to the Patriots yeah. logo. I mean, it's like Pavlovian now. I think uh, we're going to hear... I mean, they've been correct Right, years and, past. and April the giraffe tomorrow did the same thing, and I don't want to give away what she said, but... Animals are psychic, apparently. Apparently animals <laughs> are psychic, or they've got good stat bookies. I don't know. But either way, they're, uh, they're going with the uh, predicted winner because the Patriots have won a lot. I'm just saying. It's not because I'm from Boston. I'm just saying they win a lot. So, anyway, guys... Um, uh, did you hear the puppies from the Tonight Show pick the uh, Patriots to be the winners in the oh, Super Bowl? So oh. you can now um, sleep. Better. See, we're not Thank the only you. ones doing hard-hitting news no, today. No, exactly. <laughs> we have been exactly. waiting for that news. Tomorrow we're going to do coverage on who April the Giraffe picked to win the Super Bowl, and I think you might be surprised who, who she April picked. April the Giraffe? I mean, just like Groundhog Day, where there's it's, really no evidence. Just, well, here's what I said about the puppies. Here's what I said about the puppies That's right. on the Tonight Show. They've just seen the Patriots logo every year that they do this. So it's like now they just go to that logo like it's Pavlovian, right? Or maybe the person that did the lo set up that logo had bacon for breakfast and there was oh, grease on their true. fingers. I and think, you know, when you see the same logo year after year after year, just even a dog gets I will trained. tell you, though, like puppies aside, what, what the Patriots have done is if you look at them, none of their starting lineup, with the exception of Brady and maybe a few others, are those first-round draft picks. They're all guys that came later in the lineup that were great, hardworking players. They have a great team aspect, and they fight to the end. I've known a lot of pro guys through my years of being on this planet, and like you know, going to college and meeting them. But like, they yeah, nobody don't. Can say want, they don't, they don't get it. more money when they play in the, in the Super Bowl. They don't get more money when they go into the playoffs. Yeah. Their their break, their vacation, just gets taken away. Wait, who? I'm seeing other professional players. No, they do. Welcome back to Daily Blast Live, daytime's only live show with the top trending and breaking news happening now. Time for the extra shot. It's the story that made you say, give me another round, since it was so uplifting. And today, it's the women of Austin, Texas Police Department. These badass officers are redefining what it means to be a woman in blue. When you think of calendars, this comes to mind. Move over, boys. Meet the warrior women of the Austin Police Department. Strong and feminine, they want to change the way people think of female cops by breaking stereotypes of women officers on the job, true warriors in an active shooting or fighting for someone's life. Nationwide, women make up only about 12% of the police force. The cops in Austin, Texas, want you to know they are brave, beautiful, real-life superheroes. How about it? We have Detective Angel Polanski joining us now, and you are featured in the calendar for the month of March. Now, I have to ask you, Detective, why was it so important for you to take part in this calendar? You know, believe it or not, there's still females in this world who do not think they can do the job. 
Hmm. So that was my main goal was so we can reach women so they'll, you know, want to do the job and, and think that they can physically do it as well. Wow, you're definitely teaching and showing us. So tell us about the Wonder Woman inspiration behind this entire project. So Susanna Sanchez was the creator, if you'll say, and she liked the Wonder Woman film and said that, you know, she was a superhero who broke boundaries and had the ideal uh, courage, amount of strength and compassion. And that's what she compares female police officers to. You talk about the strength and compassion, and I have to tell you on a personal note, I had a situation where a female officer responded to help me, and her level of empathy is something that I'll never forget. But you say that a lot mm -hmm. of people are surprised when they encounter female police officers. How do you hope the calendar will change that? You know, people have a stereotype still, men, women, everybody, about what female police officers look like or what they should act like. And, you know, we're a very diverse department or, or world mm. and you know our calendar is indicative of that just by the diversity that we show but women have a lot of compassion well i have to tell you you have inspired a little badassery in me <laughs> thank you detective for your service sincerely we appreciate you and to purchase the calendar go to the austin police association's website or facebook page and the proceeds go to austin cops for charities thank you my friend comedian Al Jackson has a new trending story coming in hot. What a great story that was, Jen. That's right. This is coming in hot as well. How about things you should never ask your significant other? I mean, be real. Well, the podcast Open Mic Rejects started the trending hashtag stupid questions for your spouse. Check it out. Now, th the responses were hilarious. There were questions like, when is your anniversary? And wouldn't it be great if my mother moved in with us? Probably not. Uh, here are some questions we think that you should never ask. How many partners did you have in college? Because trust me, you don't want to know. The number's already too high if it's more than you. How much they weigh? Because no one has a really good answer. What's wrong with you? Oh, is it that time of the month? Oh, Jeff, never asked that. Well, DBL Nation, uh, what questions do you think that we shouldn't ask our better halves? What do you guys think? Um, <laughs> I'm out of this him call. everything. Yeah, well, say. mainly because I'm hoping that his answer is worse than mine. Did you eat the last piece of cheese? Great. <laughs> Just well, saying. we love your viral videos. Watch Bradley, the baby kangaroo's very first hop. Bradley was orphaned and now is carried around in a pillowcase that substitutes as a pouch. We're back right after this, you guys.
Goodwin. Hey guys, so Rachel Goodwin is trending right now. We thought we'd give you a little burn because look who she's with in curlers. Well, it's Emma really Stone. interesting because it says we have a permanent bond. So that means Emma Stone is getting a perm. And we don't know why. Is it a friendship thing? If you had a friend that was like, let's get perms together, would you be down for that? Sure. A tight perm? <laughs> what do you guys think? Is it a project or is it friendship? Perms. Pro or con. Welcome back to Daily Blast Live. Let's take a look back at some funny moments from today's show. Just a few. Did, Did you ask talk? to speak to a manager? Because I went straight to the manager and I put it in writing and then we did a carbon copy of exactly <laughs> the last day I was going to be there because I wasn't going to give them any more well, money and that's how it worked. <laughs> She's right. We got one more. We got one more. Oh, man. It's National Texas Day. <laughs> Ebony. <laughs> that was my Cotton Eye Joe live I was live noticing. Was the stories never stop, but we don't either. We are live on YouTube and Facebook. Keep the conversation what? going. Happy Thursday. Almost Woo! Friday. Welcome to Daily Blast Live. It's Thursday, February 1st, and we've got everything you need to know in trending news and entertainment, and it's all live right now. Plus, Sarah Jessica Parker talks the next Sex in the City movie minus Kim Cattrall. DBL Nation, how would you like to her character? And we're counting down to the Super Bowl parties. You may regret reaching for that extra handful of chips. And I'm not talking about the calories. Happening right now, an Oprah book emergency. Why she's deleting parts of her new self-help book. It's Daily Blast Live. We're the only live show in daytime talking breaking news, entertainment, and trending topics that you're talking about right now, no matter where you're watching. Let's get this kicked off with the top five trending topics you need to know with our girl, Sam Shocker. Take it away, girlfriend. Thank you so much, Erica Cobb. We are live. I'm here with Media Maven, Ebony Steele, everyone's favorite big brother, Jeff Schroeder. Comedian Al Jackson clearly Woo! dressed as Al Fashion Jackson oh, today. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Make me feel good. Oh, yeah. And I'm Sam Shocker. <laughs> What's up, Sam? Hey, you know. yeah, we are a trending news and entertainment show that is live and covers what is happening right now. Take a look at our entire DBL team. That's to our stage manager, also known as Stu Magoo. Movie Reviews is waving to you. <laughs> and they are very busy covering news the moment it breaks. We are counting down. Are we ready, DBL? Yes. I'm How ready. many days to Super Bowl 52? Um, three. Three, three. weeks. 
Maybe we should have rehearsed this. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta we are live. Sunday. Clearly. When is Sunday, guys? This is going to Wow. Okay. okay. And we got breaking news. Digital producer Cal Villanueva has all the details. Thank God. Save us, girl. <laughs> Counting is really our specialty over here. <laughs> so Justin Timberlake just held his live press conference answering all of the Super, half Super Bowl halftime questions we've been dying to know. And here's what he had to say about some special musical guests. To be honest, I had a ton of grand ideas about special guests. You know, from Instinct to to Jay to uh, Chris Stapleton to Janet, and um, but this year I'm just excited. My band is uh, Tennessee Kids. The, I feel like those they're my special guests. And he didn't exactly shut down those other ideas, and he's coy about what songs he'll perform, but says there's a good chance we'll hear Can't Stop the Feeling and hinted at a Prince tribute, but we'll have to wait till Sunday to find out. Back to you. Ooh. Thank you, Raquel. Any, any Justin songs that you guys, he, he felt like he has to do? I want to hear Suit and Tie. I, like I was about to say, I love when the Suit and yeah. Tie flows down. Yeah. Yeah. I want to hear Cry Me a River and Brit Brit to come out. Isn't that a little sad and in Super Bowl? Brit, and Brit Brit to come out. Would that not be amazing? Britney Spears to but show up. But you know, up? Cry yeah. Me a River was supposed to be about her and their breakup, and I think that would be really juicy. Uh, I know that you're a huge Justin Timberlake fan. What are you hoping to see? <laughs> you I, are. I am. I, I'm, I'm going to hope to see in sync out there, but I think the, the more important, I think the bigger choice is you got to bring back Jan. Yeah, I Jan agree. Jan. Got to yes. bring her back. I agree. Make it right. Make I it right. Love yep. It. Uh, more on the Super Bowl. It's only three days until kickoff at U.S. Bank we Stadium that in <laughs> Minneapolis, where they're expecting expecting more than a million vis visitors, including our very own Al Jackson. Woo! Yeah. Reporter Carla Hull. Take Carla from our sister station. Joins us from their very chilly, snowy backyard. Carla, hi. Hi there. Well, hey. hello there, everyone. Yeah, it's about five degrees here right now, wow. and that's actually warmer than what it will be on Sunday. If you can imagine, it's going to be a whopping three degrees Ooh. on Sunday at kickoff. So it's believed to be the coldest Super Bowl ever in the history of the Super Bowl. So we're pretty proud of that here in the bold north, as you can imagine, right? You That's know, right. three degrees. There you Fortunately, go. it's an indoor stadium. We yeah. just saw Justin Timberlake right now heating things up. Did you see anybody around town for the halftime half yes. show? You see Janet Jackson or any of the NSYNC boys? Men we're camping out. We are hoping to see them. I know boys, men, whatever they are at this point. <laughs> but at any rate, we would love to see them. There are a lot of people searching for that. I think they're camping out wherever they can spot them. I was just at the Mall of America earlier today, and certainly there are tons of people. I did not see a notable celebrity, but we are hearing Justin Timberlake did hit a really fancy steak restaurant over the weekend. It's called Manny's. Mm. It's the best restaurant in Minneapolis, we believe. I often go there with my husband for my anniversary dinner, so it's really good. And then we're also hearing that Jayla. Jennifer Lopez, who will be performing for a concert on Saturday night, mm. that she's staying in a cute little boutique hotel in a suburb of Minneapolis, mm. kind of the hip up and coming hotel. So yeah, there are some celebrity sightings that have started and we expect more and more, which is unique here, right? We don't get a lot of people who want to come here in the winter, but they are mistaken. I mean, Prince loved this state for a reason. Yeah. He thought it was great. <laughs> and so the, they'll want to stay too. And Carla, we got our very own Al Jackson coming there too. So watch out, oh. Minneapolis. Okay. Carla, <laughs> we will watch out. Put we'll some gloves on. on. Put some gloves yeah. on. For I know, us. I know. I do have to recommend to Al and other visitors wear lots of layers. Do not forget your gloves, but I'm a hardy native Minnesotan, so I can handle this. <laughs> but visitors, you shouldn't be doing this. You should have the gloves on. Right, thank, <laughs> you. thank you, Carla. Notice. Al, you're going to need some gloves. Right. Right. Two pairs. Like dumb and dumber. What is the yeah. worst part of when you're cold? I think it's when you start talking and your mouth kind of goes like this. Yeah. You saw that it's during um, New Year's Eve. Everybody at, at Times Square, they could barely talk right, on air. Because their mouth was so, yeah. Oh, gosh, Are you excited crazy. or what? I can can't you believe wait. I feel like going? it's not real yet. Have so you ever when been to the up, Super Bowl? Uh, never been. So I was I was in the city when the Super Bowl was happening, but I didn't go to the game. My first game. So wow. I'm excited. What are you most looking forward to? Uh, honestly, man, my uh, my buddy Mark that I'm going with, uh, you know, it's he's a high school football coach. He was a high school football and college star, uh, and uh, he works with uh, uh, disabled children now. Ooh. And so this is like we've been waiting for this for 40 years. So. This is like the, you know, from high school to here, it's going to be like a coming of age thing. So. Ow. Well, we're going to live the experience through you. Yes. Oh, yeah. Can't wait. Everybody stay tuned because Al will be, he will be doing Instagram stories about it. Of course, on Monday, he will give us all the juicy feedback That's we have. That's right. Yes. Shots on deck, Mark. <laughs> oh, Super Bowl fashion.
fashion is coming in hot. Tori Shulman is showing us adorable and also affordable looks to rock for the big game. Yeah, want to dress like a supermodel for the Super Bowl? Me neither. But here are some looks that supermodels have worn to support their teams and how you can look that good for Sunday. First up, get creative with your team colors. Number one, Patriots fan Giselle. She ditches the traditional jersey and sports the Patriots red and blue in plaid. Looks like Sam. You can get the look at H&M for 7 to 20 bucks. Now, Giselle also posted this snap on Instagram showing off her Patriot leggings. Get that cute look at NFLshop.com for $35. And guys, if you order online today, you will have them by Saturday. Finally, pair your outfit with spirited socks like Olivia Culpo. Find both Patriot and Eagles designs at JCPenney today for $17.95. I will be sporting my famous elastic sweatpants and a loss of dignity for how much I'm eating. Back to you guys. <laughs> yep. Oh, Tori. No, you don't. Know. That's a good thing. She should eat. You should overeat on the Super Bowl, Absolutely. Thanksgiving, and Christmas Day. All right, done and yeah. done. I'm with you. Get I'll in wear there, them Tori. too with you, Tori. Yes, yes. I will. Uh, Switching gears here, new accusations of sexual misconduct today. Digital producer Kelly Schubert has the news at this moment. Yeah, that's right. Supermodel Kate Upton is slamming the co-founder of Fashion Line Guests with sexual harassment allegations. She writes that Paul Marciano, quote, shouldn't be allowed to use his power in the industry to sexually and emotionally harass women, including the hashtag MeToo. It's unclear if she's saying she was personally a victim when she was the face of Guests, but listen to what she told TMZ. I'm excited to tell my whole story, but a walk to the car is not going to cover it. What do you think should be done to keep people in positions of power from abusing that power? I think a lot of people around them know about it and need to speak out. Marciano tells TMZ he's done nothing wrong and Upton can take him to court. Back to you. Wow. wow. That's I'm just saying, I was looking at that. There's a way quicker way to get out of LAX. <laughs> is that what you got out of that whole story? Is that what you got out of that whole story? Yeah, she was out. So she didn't say anything personally happened to her, but she knows of stories. We don't that know. Happened we're going to learn details. It was just so details. ambiguous. I wonder if we should be reporting on it because she didn't even say it was me. She didn't say who it was. She did hashtag me too. Shit. And you but know what? can put a hashtag on a, the Marciano brothers have discovered her and also uh, Anna Nicole, Nicole Smith yeah. and yeah. Claudia Schiffer. So perhaps even Gigi Hadid. Perhaps we're going to hear more from other people. Perhaps we're putting somebody's reputation on the word on the line for somebody. The word perhaps and maybe and maybe we'll find out. Like, I don't know if somebody's name should be out there until we have, at, like, at least allegations down on paper and, like, criminal... And at least he can respond. Right. right. And okay, it'll, hurt, it'll hurt guests as well. Right. People yeah, won't buy like guests anymore. People will buy the line somebody's name because and of reputation. that. We already did the story with Ryan Seacrest, and it turned out they, at least he investigated, said they found nothing, but we already put his name out there. What would, what would Kate Upton have to, and this is just me being polemic, what would she have to gain by tweeting this? I don't know. People have grudges. I don't know. I'm not saying she's right, incorrect. I'm just saying Let's we don't process. know. So why are we putting this guy's name out on national mm, TV? Yeah, and it's like sometimes when people get the last word, that's what people remember and what right. sticks. Right, yeah. that's a good point. Daily Blast Live covers trending topics and entertainment live like that. That just happened. Mm -hmm. Erica, what's coming up? Well, Sarah Jessica Parker dishes on the future of Sex in the City. It seems a third movie might happen. But how will they get rid of Kim Cattrall's character, Samantha? We'll check about that and got a Netflix account or know someone who does what you need to know about an email scam going around right now and you the viewer are our fifth host next we share your comments live on air about a story getting a lot of buzz online a man sends an epic breakup letter to his gym Hope you guys weren't dizzy just then. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of shift so uh, we're here with uh, Bertie's going to give us a little Olympic mini pod here. Ooh. What's trending with the Olympics? What's going on? Bert? Yeah, two stories coming out for the Olympics. The first is something that happens every Olympic Games, and I just want to talk about it. Is it the Olympic Village hookups? It is. I'm sure it is. What happens when you bring thousands of people together in peak physical shape? <laughs> yeah, that are good looking. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah, wow. they're, they're going to hook up. So every Olympics. Terrible. Tons of condoms are delivered to the Olympic Village just to practice safe sex for the athletes. And this year, for the Winter Games, it is a record number of condoms delivered. Oh, wow. 110,000. Wow! Which is 10,000 more than the last Winter Olympics. 10,000 more? Wow. Yeah, and, and they say there's only a little over 2,000 athletes. So they say they don't expect all of them to be used. I'd hope not, because that yeah. would be, I think that's exhausting. It, it came they out have to, to compete. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, they're gonna tire themselves out. I'm just saying. Um, oh god. We need the luge, people. We need the right. luge. Save your energy. Yeah. Comes out to about 27 condoms and athletes. So that, that's a lot. It's a two-week event. That's Come on. Right. Yeah. You know they're good looking. Yeah. Hey, listen. But but let's let's also remember the <laughs> Summer Olympic Games have way more athletes, and so that still holds a record. Right. I think 400 more shorts. 450,000 yeah. condoms. There is more shorts, and there's more shorts. Yes. More shorts. More. More tans. Yeah, the, that's the true. volleyball players. Sand. Okay. A lot of sand. A lot of sand. Yeah. Volleyball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so then another story uh, trending from CNN. From sexy to sick. Oh. Yeah, sexy to sick. No. Related, possibly. Um, so there is a concern for the flu outbreaks in North and South Korea right now. It's a worldwide thing. We've been reporting it here at Daily Best Live forever. And it's just, uh, there is concern because North Korea is having a severe number of cases. And then there's also the avian flu, which they're oh, worried sure. about. Bird, bird, bird flu. flu. And that's coming That's coming from North Korea. And the Olympic Games are about 50 miles south of the border. Are you so saying North Korea is delivering the bird flu? I've no, not say, I've never I would, said that. But I will all. say this. North Korea doesn't have a lot of infrastructure and ways to placate a huge uh, right. uprising. Just they don't have the them. internet. They don't have. They they basically are growing in farmers. So not a good spot to have 50 miles from where the entire Olympics is. They don't have the infrastructure to take it down. But, to be honest, they don't have the hospitals. Yeah. They just don't. They so look like they do. My question middle. is: Will the flu affect the condom use? Bye. Welcome back to Daily Blast Live, the only live show that covers trending stories live, no matter where you're watching. And we are listening to you, so it's time for Fifth Host, where your comments are part of the discussion. Take it away, Sam Shocker. Thank you so much, Erica. We'll get to Fifth Host in a minute, but first, digital producer Raquel Vinueva with news at this moment. Raquel. That's right, Sam. Police across the country are warning Netflix users not to open a fake email. We first told you about this scam right here on DBL. Now a new email has hackers trying to get to your credit card info by saying there's a problem with your Netflix membership. But the warning is the same. Do not open or click on the email and report it back to Netflix. Back to you. Thank you so much, Raquel. One Reddit user, we're going to move right on to Fifth Host. One Reddit user tried to cancel his Planet Fitness membership mm. over the phone, but to no avail, as we all know. So he wrote the most epic breakup letter ever. It starts with, it is with deep regret, regret and a heavy heart that I write this letter. I still love you, but more like a friend at this point. You just keep being you. And while we will both grow, it will be into our own new lives without each other. <laughs> that was deep. That was pretty that deep. Was pretty deep. Was we asked you our fifth host why it is it, why is it so hard to cancel gym memberships? I can't wait to hear what Jeff has to say. It is yeah. a good story. First, let's start with you have to say YouTube user Beach Brady one writes, I had a membership at Bally's in Tampa and wanted to cancel, but the contract said you could only cancel if there wasn't a Bally's in a 50 mile radius. What? I had to change my address to a family members in Michigan. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm that's sorry you went through that, but that's amazing. Ridiculous. That's ridiculous. I went through a similar problem with LA Fitness. I'll put them out there. I was moving to Denver for this job. So I went to the gym and I go, hey, listen, I'm going to, I got to cancel my membership. I'm leaving. And they go, well, you just started your new cycle two days in. I'm like, all right, so I guess I'll keep it. When do I have to cancel? And they're like, on the 25th. I moved, I call them on the 25th, I'm like, hey, I gotta cancel my membership. They're like, sorry, you could only do that in person. I go, what no do you way. mean? They're like, yeah, you can only do that in person. I go, I go, I live in Denver, I'm not flying in. They're like, well, maybe there's a gym around you. I'm like, there's no LA Fitness in, in Denver. Anyways, how do I get rid of this membership? Write an email, so I write an email, so I write it in. This will be pressed in five to seven days. Past my next start date, and they got three months out of me from, I just wanted to cancel the day I was there. Shame on you, shame on you, LA Fitness. Shame. You stole money from my shame. child. <laughs> Janet Vernon says, shame. Janet Vernon says, it took me six months to cancel my late husband's gym membership. We had to send him his death certificate twice. Uh, that is sad that and is not okay. That is unacceptable. I'm so sorry, Janet, you went through that. No, I totally agree with you. Like, seriously, I don't know why they put uh, those clauses like that in there. It happened to me one time in college, and they were drafted out, and I'm thinking, okay, it's 12 months I signed up for, and it's the automatic renewal thing, and, like, I was overdrawn for, like, eight years. Yeah. I think I still have a gym membership somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy Given says, sometimes you just got to threaten them with a lawsuit. That'll get you out of the contract. I like that. Yeah. I like that get a lot. In the pocket. That's, that's the only yep. thing that works. Get a letter with some legal jargon on top. Yeah, you can find, find one online. Send it away. Or find All somebody right. that can do it, you oh. know, like uh, Tori's dad. 
<laughs> we want to thank you, the viewer, for being our fifth host. Be sure to join us uh, before and during the show on Facebook and YouTube Live to share your comments. We love hearing what you have to say. Absolutely, we do all day. Daily Blast Live is all about news as it's happening. Erica, tell us what's next. Well, you know, comedian Amy Schumer is known for her opinions, and she's giving it on the Aziz Ansari scandal. Plus, who doesn't love puppies? It's the annual Puppy Bowl, and you know comedian Al Jackson will sound off on this. And it's National Texas Day, and we're testing your Lone Star knowledge in our trivia showdown. Get your DBL app ready and play along with us to win a cool prize. Do you know what an isthmus is? I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Stay tuned, because we're going to take a third grade quiz that apparently is stumping everyone. Hey, guys, we're back. And uh, boy, you started a whole uh, LA Fitness backlash. Katrina says, oh, hell no, LA Fitness. And Eric Yance on Facebook says, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Jordan Pete says, boo, LA Fitness. I mean, so it's, it's they're, really... they're straight stealing money from me. Yeah. And, it, and it's legal. It's I mean, don't get me started because I get off on a rant, but it's like the airlines, hey, we're just going to charge you $35 for this. Why doesn't somebody stop this? This is three, they stole money from me. The airlines steal money well, from me. Nobody, also, yeah, yeah nobody cares. Yeah. Well, like they just keep, people just keep raking one in cash. The, one of the news magazines interviewed the Planet Fitness owner and they make the majority of their profit from the people who are, have wow. memberships but don't work out. Shame right. on they, they basically make money off of the people and then that you just can't don't cancel go. That I mean, that's, it's, that. it's completely idiotic and ridiculous. Hey, is this the, I called the main office. Can I cancel my membership? Yeah. No, you're going to have to go in person. Yeah. You know they have a computer that can just go yeah, delete. Yeah, easily, yeah. easily. You know, and they know they're going to steal money from me. It's not, it's not anything else but stealing for the next two months. And then my letter won't be processed for five to seven days. After which your is billing stealing. cycle. They after, have it. Yeah. Right, they have it. And they well, know how many bad 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 I mean, would you ever consider going back to LA Fitness now? No, no. So that, but I know. think a lot of gyms are like that. No, they are. Oh, yeah. Especially the ones that are the big chains. Like, I'm moving to another city. You can't, I don't want to be with your gym anymore. Yeah. Well, there was, yeah. I want to, I want to do yep. somebody, somebody else. I yeah. left LA, called Planet Fitness, called my oh, gym. Oh, you were with Planet Fitness. Yep, and I said, uh, I, I'd like to quit. I live in Denver. And they said, well, you have to send us a registered letter. I'm like, I can give you my membership like, number on the phone right now. We need a registered now. letter okay. as well. I got to look at that. Letter that right, is I gotta go. uh, certified. Just certified. A certified letter to ensure that it made it to them. Okay. Um, and then just simply say what I said over the phone, which is I moved to Denver. And I still don't know if the charge has been taken off yet. Well, they, they make you jump through hoops on yeah. purpose. Yeah, on purpose. So, you so you don't get follow up yeah, with hoping it. That and, then, it just... and then it recycles itself. But I did it, LA Fitness. I got that letter certified, so. Watch out. Or someone Watch told out. me, Watch also out. someone told I can't me, run very fast when I said that, stop going. Uh, I told someone else that story, like when I was leaving, they said, cancel your credit card that you have under oh, them, no. which is a big problem, which is a big problem because you might have other things on that. Right. Yeah. But cancel your that's credit card. That's you know, I have done that. That affects your, uh, from you. your credit though. No, that's if you... You just get a different card. Yeah, you, you don't close the card. That affects, affects right. you. Right. Close so your card. So that's an answer right. too. But you have to even, you have to go through all those problems just for that. That's crazy. Great, great, great. Let us know what you... Welcome back to Daily Blast Live, the only live daytime show that covers trending stories live as they happen. It's time for Al Sounds Off when comedian Al Jackson goes off on the wildest stories he can find with a little help from Jeff Schroeder. Take it away, guys. Thank you, Erica Cobb. It's time for everyone's favorite segment, Al Sounds Off, with everyone's yes. favorite comedian, uh, Mr. Al Jackson. Feeling good, buddy, feeling good. Yeah, yeah. Let's get into it. All right, Al, with the big game around the corner, there's so much to look forward to, the yeah. commercials, the food, and of course, the puppy bowl. Ugh. Now, Jeff, I just love this. It's Check so cute. Stuff. This is the puppy bowl, or as Sam calls it, the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> and she still doesn't know what teams are playing. Uh, <laughs> I like this. You know, everybody's like, this game's going to be off the hook. This game's going to be off the leash. Now, <laughs> Jeff, I'll tell you this. You know, I'm a gambling man. Uh, there's a lot of props being uh, laid out. What's your favorite bet for this year? Oh, the coin toss, man. Uh, well, I would bet that there's going to be a flea flicker. Uh, <laughs> And the saddest thing about both these teams, they both won as many games as the Browns did this year. Let's go to the next one. All right, Al, this week, Sophia, a humanoid robot, spoke about the future of artificial intelligence in South Korea. You got to watch. I am always working to improve myself and learn about different culture. Right? That's why I'm first class. Now, Jeff, she's just sitting there. I mean, she's in Korea. You would think she'd have more soul. <laughs> If I, want one, if I want a woman to stare blankly and blink at me, I'll just go on a Tinder date. This is very <laughs> rare, but, uh, uh, and 
and bad news, fellas, she doesn't have a clear history button. Uh, <laughs> think about it. Uh, let's go. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> All right, Al. These headphones are guaranteed to keep your music lit. Watch this, Al. All right, let's check it out. Now, Jeff, I just love these headphones. I think they're so cool. You know, it's just like, it, it, dude, and here's my joke for you that I thought was so funny. It's like, you can listen to Queen while looking like a princess. You, the, you get, Jeff, you could, the, the, the group Queen. What do you mean? Do you, you don't get my joke? The, Queen is a group, and then you can look like a. What? Jeff, are you not listening? I was listening to your half hour special on Comedy Central, Al. Oh! Check it out. Pop culture guru Tori Shulman has a new Cheeto mashup coming in hot. Yeah, drilled ice cream in Fountain Valley, California, just started selling flaming hot Cheeto ice cream, and it's already an internet sensation. The spicy snack is blended with vanilla ice cream, served in a waffle cone, and of course, what else? Garnished with more flaming Cheetos. So DBL Nation, would you try it? Lucky for you, they always have Tori try it. So let's take a look. I have two here. Would anyone want to try it with me? Maybe me. Leo! Here we go. Well, On one, two, three. Oh. She, she told no. It's terrible. Back to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Sex in the City 3 without Samantha. Coming up in top trending news, Sarah, Sarah Jessica Parker hints at the future of the franchise. And open your DBL app or go to dailyblastlive.com right now because we're testing your Texas trivia. You could win a cool prize. Our DBL trivia showdown is right after the break. Promotional consideration is brought to you. <laughs> Leo said, and then we gave it to Raquel Villanueva, and she said, quote, I'm confused. By the taste? By the whole thing. I don't know. I can see how the milk it's and the Cheetos would be a not bad thing. Yeah, it's, it's not too said. bad. It's a balance of salty, sweet, and heat. It's a great trifecta. You are. That's right. Balance. It's a nice balance. You're yeah. right. You guys should try it at home. Maybe just take some of the ice cream okay, and then you. crumple up a bag of Cheetos, and you're good to go. Yeah. Um, you want to try it, Jeff? You know, RMP no, uh, is Daily Glass Live located in Denver. I hear them talking about Denver a lot, so I was curious since I live there. Yes, RMP, we are here in Denver, blasting out to the world from Denver, Colorado. So, yeah, we're here. We're here with you, buddy. And it's cold today, so we're feeling that as well. Um, let's go over here and see what else is going on. What's your thought on it? I don't mind it. Yeah, it's, what's salty and sweet is always a good combo, right? Are you feeling any heat? No. Really? Because the ice cream cools it down. And it was all over my lips, too. Even, even after that? Now, even now, there's no burn? We've been eating habaneros every day. That's true. Your <laughs> <yarn is laughs> my, my taste buds are burnt off. It's true. And Actually, uh, I kind of like it. You all need to stop sharing food. That's no. what I'm going to say. That's why I didn't eat it there. They gave me one that was fresh. Good, good, good. That's why I ate it. I can't be getting sick. No. No, it's not fun. And, it, and you know what? It's not like... I don't mean to get too much inside information here, but the thing that's running... The train that's running through DBL... Is taking people out for like the week. Yeah, it's not. And they said it's down. like it's not just a normal flu. It's like heavy duty business. And I mean, people are passing away. And I mean, no, that's, I know it's isn't that crazy. It's that crazy. It's just crazy from a flu. Are, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's sad. Very sad. But listen, uh, we want you to stay safe. So don't eat ice cream off of someone else's cone until this get a, whole get a fresh one. Flu thing is is gone by, guys. But uh, let me see if you guys have any more comments here. Oh, 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 mm. oh. It's Bob Tavares on YouTube, Cheeto ice cream, yuck. Well, I don't disagree. Don't mock it till you try it. You're watching Daily Blast Live. Guys, it's National Texas Day. So to celebrate, we're testing your knowledge of the Lone Star State. Why are you talking a lot there? Because it's National Texas Day. All right, here we go with our DBL trivia showdown. Today's showdown is between Ebony and Sam. Little and lady. Little lady. Thank you, Howdy. And all of you, the viewers. So guys, go to dailyblastlive.com and tap vote now. Questions will appear on your device. Ladies, are you ready? Yes. Make sure you wait till the very end, okay? Here we go. Little the lady. Little lady. The winning viewer will win a DBL hashtag genius t-shirt. Question number one. Jerry Jones is the owner of what sports team? Dallas Cowboys, Texas Rangers, Dallas Mavericks. Sam. Cowboys. Oh, little lady. That's correct. Dallas Cowboys. Next, question number two. This Texas town is home to Chip and Joanna Gaines. San Antonio, Waco, or Fort Worth? Sam. 
Waco. Okay, she's taking it real seriously. She's real in character. I love Chipper Joanna. I, <laughs> I love yeah, Chipper Joanna. Joanna. That's right. All right, now question number three. Coach Taylor leads the Dillon Panthers in this high school drama. Is it Friday Night Lights, Varsity Blues, or Necessary Necessary oh, I'm sorry. That's, That's okay. okay. Necessary Roughness. Varsity eh. Blues. Eh. Oh. Friday <laughs> Night Lights, guys, come on. Oh. Kyle Chandler? Okay. Never right. seen it. Question number four, which celebrity is not, remember I'm saying not from Texas, Beyonce, Matthew McConaughey, or Miley Cyrus? Sam? Miley Cyrus, she's from Nashville. That's it, correct, that is correct. All right, now let's find out which uh, viewer won. Vanna okay. White, could you help us out here? Uh-huh. In three, two, viewer? 6029. Yay! And get it right, this is Vanna Black. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we want to let you guys know, did you, you're from Texas? I lived in Texas for a while. My hand's just not as long as Sam's. I hope that makes that's, sense. That's, yeah. <laughs> she was getting I me do every have very lanky arms. And I was that's scared true. too, girl. That was true. Now, is there, a, is there a favorite Texas movie or uh, genre, anything you guys love? I love visiting Austin, Texas. Oh. Austin. So our DBL Nation, let us know where in Texas you guys are from. We want to love that Lone Star State. And who won, Tori? All right, what's that? Who won? You know you won. Okay. Sam the won. answer is <laughs> little, Sam. Lady. little lady. Congratulations. So let's all lady. line dance our way out of here. Here we go. We're gonna step in front of the podium. Oh, we are. Okay. Oh, Come on, Sam. Be part to. of the You're team. You're the winner. You should want to. You ready? Right, yeah. And. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. This is going great. This is nothing okay. like the electric slide and what we do. Oh, I'm doing it. <laughs> Can we wobble with it? I don't know what this is. <laughs> I'm terrible. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. More trending stories in our next half hour of Daily Blast Live. Will the behind the scenes drama ever stop at NBC News? The latest on Megyn Kelly and what she is and isn't covering. And Oprah's bold statement in the Me Too movement, who she just erased from her self-help book. Stay with us. Uh, we'd like to make a disclaimer on digital that we are well aware that not all Texans are cowboys. <laughs> Actually, it's quite and a also that they're not living in the 1880s. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So that is our formal I, I look retraction at yes. for what you just witnessed. We are fully aware that it's a very cosmopolitan state and not everybody wears cowboy, cowboy hats, hats and yes. does line dancing. Right. <laughs> so, anyway, yes. so Al, uh, you're packed up. You, you've taken off Friday night for the Super Bowl. I am. Um, what is the, uh, now you're going with a buddy, what is the one thing you're looking forward to the most about being in Minnesota for the Super Bowl? You know what? The, I'm looking forward to kickoff. Yeah? That's going to be, you know, because kickoff, all the cameras are going to be going off. Right. And it's a once-in-a-lifetime moment kind of thing. You know, if you go to Super Bowl once, you're lucky. Right. So I just think... Uh, the the halftime show? The halftime show is going to be good. I'm a, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm a... Five, five with JT? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah I, I would five. say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the songs that he... Um, that he's... Uh, that he's... That I really like, I really like, but yeah. most of them I can kind of take yeah. and, But the surprise aspect of it, right. there's it, always some surprise. You gotta be there cool. for it. So, kind of cool. you know, just have, having fun with my, my buddy, my other friend, uh, Greg Coleman, uh, who's a comedian. His father uh, was the first black punter in the NFL, and he's now the uh, special teams coach for the Vikings. Oh, really? So, hang out with my buddy Greg. That's he just cool. shot hard in the city. Uh, well done uh, for you, uh, new Greg Coleman. So, Great, um, Greg Coleman. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Now, are there any comedy yeah, events yeah. happening in there surrounding the Super Bowl that I'm you know? I'm sure they are. I'm not going to get on stage. Right. It's my weekend to not do anything. Area. Uh, yeah. Consume food? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I've always, uh, you know, I've been to Minnesota a bunch of times, uh, and I'm excited to go back. So, it'll be fun. Well, good, Lots man. Lots of pictures. Just Lots of pictures. Minnesota should watch out. Right. when Al Jackson touched. Yeah, it's gonna be a problem. Anything can happen. Let's do it for real. <laughs> Bye, guys. Can I come? It's Daily Blast Live, the only live show that covers breaking news and top trending stories that are happening right now. We are live in the DBL studios where our team is busy tracking trending topics and breaking news. Let's go to digital producer Kelly Schubert with news at this moment. Yeah, Erica, I've got news just in. E has just announced that it has finished investigating Ryan Seacrest over those allegations of misconduct. The network says it found insufficient evidence to support the claims a former stylist made against Ryan back in November. E says it's committed to providing a safe work environment where everyone is treated with respect and dignity. Erica, back to you. Thank you, Kelly. Let's go to Ebony Steele, Jeff Schroeder, Al Jackson, and Sam Shocker for all the top trending stories. 
Thank you so much, Erica. Also trending right now, Megyn Kelly, according to Raider Online, Megyn has been banned from covering the royal wedding. Sources say they only want their best correspondence reporting on Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's big day. They Ouch. worry that Meghan Kelly yeah. might say something controversial and inappropriate. So if they're gonna like, send Savannah Guthrie and Hoda Kotb, they will be there to helm NBC's wedding coverage. Yeah, I just, you know, I don't think it's a big deal. I think we all have family members that have been banned from weddings. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just like, I think she's one of, and, and for the same reason, might say something inappropriate. So I think NBC's kind of covering their, you know, covering their bases before something goes down. And they know how conservative the, the monarchy is. They know how, sure. how much they value these royal weddings, everyone in England. So they don't want to And create, a lot of people here too as well. Yeah, they yeah. don't want to ruffle any feathers. Well, I just look at how much they're paying Meghan Kelly and it's like, wow, are they really getting their money's worth when they can't use her for some of these huge events like that? Point. You're wondering I, if they have regret. Exactly. I almost feel like you got to cut your losses at some point. You know what I mean? If she's not representing your network well, you got to cut her off. And she's not doing her right. job, and she, they don't have trust in her. Jeff, let me ask you this: If you hired somebody for twenty-six million dollars and you sent them somewhere, and you felt like they couldn't cover a wedding without doing something to embarrass your network, I mean, have you just made a huge error in terms of where you spent your money? You, I just lost my job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now let us know, DBL Nation, weigh in. And uh, moving on, new fallout today for music mogul Russell Simmons. Oprah is removing parts of her book, The Wisdom of Sundays, that include him after sexual assault allegations against him have surfaced. Shark Tank star Damon John also scrubbed Simmons from his advice book rise and grind what a waste and when I say what a waste, like if you just look at the empire and everything is still alleged as far as Rus Russell Simmons is concerned, but just all that work and time and effort he's been, uh, he's put in all these years to be recognized by the Oprahs, by other people, and then for it just to be erased and scratched away, you know, for some for some indiscretion allegedly that could have happened. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, if you're sexually harassing people, it doesn't matter how much work you put in for the good. You're also doing bad. I agree and, with and you. This way, no, Beyond no harassment, waste. though, these are these, these are, are these are stronger claims. These are, these are improprieties. These are, these are rape these accusations. Are rape allegations. Rape yes. accusations uh, sexual misconduct allegations. And you know, Russell Simmons has been very open that he had a very checkered past. Although he is denying all of these allegations, mm -hmm. his uh, ex, Kamora Lee Simmons, is 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 defending him. But would you? I think guys, she did that for their daughters. Okay. Uh, would you guys ever consider removing someone? Do you think this is specifically a, a business decision, or do you think that because Oprah is really behind this Me Too? movement? Movement. Do you think she's looking at Russell in a whole different way? Well, I think to maintain credibility, she has to. Because if she, even leaves if she him, believes him, even if she believes him, because if, if he's in her book, anything that's in that book, she's going to get a, literally half a million emails saying, well, how can I believe what you're saying when I just read a chapter uh, by somebody that's been accused of rape? Especially so, when it's a self-help And evidently he doesn't believe, well, in himself because he dropped down from his company himself, you know, he I did. guess to try to save the assets. So, hey. But he also has a board of directors and I'm sure they voted him out. Yeah. So, so, uh, moving on to Sarah Jessica Parker, she says that the producers are trying to write another Sex in the City movie, but you guys, without Samantha, they're going to either kill her off or recast her. Now the actress Kim Cattrall wants out. So last night, Bravo's Andy Cohen decided to throw his wig in the ring for the role. Check out this audition. This is about the <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> what, 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 why? why? One little and I'm a hooker with no taste. We can't get away with the same stuff we used to get away with. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Meaning. <laughs> oh, Jesus, again with the. <laughs> Did we really say <laughs> that many yes, times? Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, Andy Cohen, we have somebody that's going to give you a run for your money to play Samantha. Are you ready for our casting choice for Samantha? Let's see. Let go. Do you recognize? Do you recognize that beautiful broad? That's Jeff Schroeder. Ooh. Listen, I, I love being the butt of everyone's joke, but why would you cast me in this role? You know what I mean? It doesn't even make sense. At least have a guy in there and let me do it. You know what I mean? Well, Sam has the same name. Yeah, I mean that, that right, makes can, that I, makes way more sense. Maybe me. Oh, Sex that's a little city, audition. Maybe me. Right right I, I, I still I still think I could pull it off, but I'm just saying <laughs> that's not get ridiculous. Oh, look it. If I were her, maybe I mean, me. yeah. Okay. I can't do wow. That. Wow, that was pretty good. <laughs> is that embarrassing? Yeah, I feel like my face is bright red, is it? No, you okay, look good. good. Okay, look a, little, a little blush. Mm -hmm. uh, and now an update to a story we brought you yesterday. This is quite possibly my favorite story of the day. A woman denied from flying out of Newark, New Jersey because she had her emotional support peacock 
That peacock's name is Dexter. Now Dexter is on a cross-country road trip to L.A. Go Dexter! Starting from Dexter's home in Brooklyn, New York, he traveled to Pennsylvania where he stopped at Trainer's Midway Diner. Why not? He was hungry. He had a little bite. <laughs> he had a little bite to eat. <laughs> then Dexter visited grandparents' house in Indianapolis. Yeah, grandmama. Mm -hmm. And then in St. Louis, Dexter played pinball. Yep, he's a gamer. And finally, Dexter stopped in the city of Miami. Oklahoma, where he visited the Coleman Theater because word on the street is he loves him a good little afternoon matinee. I love your little ad libs in there. Thank you really you. You love this story. I love this peacock. I how, do feel bad for the peacock. How do you transport a peacock? I don't apparently, know. Just in the back apparently seat. you drive. I know, but, but what? Like in an SUV? Oh, happens. like is he in a cage or something? How like do you let the That's seat a back? long trip. Perhaps, though, this, right this is her, uh, you know, the peacock's owner this is her best friend but I just don't think that peacocks understand you know as much as like a dog would mm -hmm. or a cat I don't think you know I took my four cats and a dog all the way to Denver from LA it was hell how was it how is it even <laughs> legal to, to to have an ostrich as a or an it's ostrich. not an ostrich it's, it's a, a, peacock. a peacock whatever you might as well throw an ostrich in there too I mean it's ridiculous either way <laughs> you're you know ostrich? yeah get real it does it does have an Instagram following so perhaps you know you, Dexter, did that, you want me to follow it is that why you put your hand like that out to me. Yeah, I follow Dexter. You want to follow Dexter? <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> As if lying didn't violate our personal space enough already, Virgin Atlantic now has a love suite, folks, on some of its flights. That's right. It's a love seat so you can cuddle, watch movies, or catch up on work with a colleague, I guess. Is anybody here into this? Absolutely I not. I am. You are? Yes. This is gross to me. Is it gross to you? I hate it. Go Why ahead, it though. Gross? Tell me why you like it. I, well, first of all, I like to cuddle, and if I'm going on a long, nice flight, then why not sit? You're going to lift the armrest up anyway sometimes, and if you can just have it. Have you seen what it looks like? No. Yeah, that's what I want to sit next to. First, no, a peacock on my left, and then you cuddling with someone on your right well, while well, I'm trying to sit well, there. Well, I'm not cuddling with you. I'm just saying. That's what, what I said. I, like. I said, on my right, you're cuddling, Why and on my left is peacock. Is that getting on your nerves if someone has peacock? Yes, everything gets on my nerves. PDA I don't want to see anything. Just face forward and don't talk. Well, you yeah. have nothing to do with what's going yeah. on on, on row 7 A and B. Well, oh, set first class, honey. Okay. okay. Just made it. Just made it. Yeah. All right. This project we just dropped has a new turning story coming in hot. Can we just put Jeff on? under the plane. <laughs> no one's gonna bother I'm a support there. person. <laughs> BuzzFeed just posted a third grade social studies quiz and it's trending way hot right now. I don't know, it seems kind of easy. What do you think? Check it out. Click on the largest ocean. Pacific. Correct. Mm. It's the Pacific. The Atlantic. Mm. Does that red circle mean it's wrong? Who wrote the Bill of Rights? Thomas Jefferson. Mm. Oh, Tori's gonna be so mad. Madison. Correct. Which arrow is pointing to an isthmus? I don't even know what an isthmus is. It must be on here somewhere. Isthmus. Mm. I got that wrong. Riverbank. Yeah, what's up? What kind of map is this? Political. See? I don't see anything that makes this political. Political? What in this picture is a capital resource? The road. <laughs> yeah. Roads. Cow. Mm. I got three out of seven, but still got it. I got six out of seven. I'm a star student. See, it says it right there. There's no way that I got a two out of seven. It says I'm a sleepyhead. Is there any way we can print out Sam so she can uh, post it all over the studio and make sure we all know she got a six out of seven? I got a six out of seven, Jen. Six out of seven. Star so did student. Leo behind you. Star student, star host, star Leo. Yeah, Leo. Thank you, guys. Those, that last question's total BS. What do you mean there's a difference between a physical map and a political a map? A political map would be red, red and, and blue. blue. It's that's all gray. It, it can be, but no, that's the that, you got that out. wrong. That, that's wrong. I if you play it all, right. give that's yourself a. Called. When you're in I'm, social studies, you go through all the different maps, and that one was called the political why, map. How is it political? So because why don't you see that during the they, election? They just put up I, a big gray map. I was, and then they light up the red and blue Don't get me fired up first with peacock stories, then airplane stories, now this BS question, I'm out. Now it's time.